Hello. This is What If Pirate King Luffy Went Back in Time for a New Adventure. Please like and subscribe to my channel and check out the author and the fanfiction linked in the description. Everyone was gathering at the port to see the straw hats off. The crew were loading up supplies as people were seeing them off and thanking them again for what they did. All the while this was happening, Luffy was running a few things in his mind without frying it from overuse. Especially last night's events. Flashback. Luffy and Nami were cleaning themselves up and getting dressed after their night together. See you in morning Nami. Luffy said when he got dressed and was heading for the door. He waved goodbye, but missed the door handle. They both looked to see Noji Ko standing in the doorway smiling. And Noji Ko? Nami said in confusion as Luffy had a blank look. Hi. Luffy said as Noji Ko walked in and sat at the table. Well, I'm going back to the party. Later. Hold it. Noji Ko said, stopping Luffy in his tracks. I have a request. A request. Luffy said as he turned to her, looking as confused as Nami. Noji Ko looked at Luffy before smiling again. I'd like to come with you on your journey. Huh? Eh? You heard me. Noji Ko said. I'd like to be a straw hat pirate. The EHHH, Nami shrieked. Sure. Luffy said with a blank look on his face. Luffy Nami yelled before she pushed him out of the house. Give us a minute. She said before she slammed the door. Luffy was confused but listened in from the door. What are you talking about no Jiko? Why would you want to come along? That Luffy kid interests me. She said as if it were a common fact. That, and I need to make sure my little sister's safe. Of course I'm safe. Nami said. Why wouldn't I be? You were screaming. She said. Screamy Nami said before her words died in her throat. H how did. I saw from the window. She said, making Nami sweat a bit before she hung her head. How much? I got here when he was admiring your new tattoo. She said as Nami sighed. Good thing there was a party or everyone would have heard you. Alright, I get it. Nami said in frustration. No G Ko only smiled before she stood up and went for the door. Also, she said. I want to personally see you make your dream a reality Nami. Nami smiled at her sister's concern before Noji Ko opened the door, seeing Luffy stand next to the doorway. So then Luffy, may I call you captain? She asked. Flashback ends. We're almost ready captain. Noji Ko said as she stepped out of the cabin of the going Mary. She had a holster to her hip with a single flintlock pistol and a knife in a small sheath to her left leg. Alright. Luffy said as Sanji danced around, thrilled at the idea of Noji Ko coming along. Oh yeah. Luffy. Sanji said before giving Luffy a hard kick to the back of his head. Luffy's body stayed put, but his head flew over the ship a few hundred feet before coming back with a bump. What was that for? Luffy asked in irritation. I don't know. He said before he looked out at the town. Where's Nami? He asked. She's getting ready. Noji Ko said as she gazed at her home one last time. As she did, the villagers were chatting about a few things. Why Noji Ko was leaving, why Nami left all that money to them, and other things. Big bro. Shouted Johnny and Yasaku from inside the crowd. Everyone looked to see them both with serious expressions on their faces. What's up you guys? Luffy asked as Zoro noticed that each of them had a small bag next to them. We thought it over big bro. Johnny said. What are they talking about Luffy? Jin asked. I asked them to join. Luffy said. What? Some of the crew asked. Yeah. That was our reaction as well. Yasaku said. So what's the answer? Luffy asked. Johnny and Yasaku looked at each other before smiling at Luffy. We're in. They said. Yahoo. Luffy yelled. My crew is bigger now. He began to dance around as Johnny and Yasaku grabbed their things and came aboard. Never thought you guys would join. Zoro said. I originally became a bounty hunter because one saved my village when I was a kid. Johnny said. I did it because I wanted to help others like that bounty hunter did. But after seeing you guys fight for a village you owed nothing to, I thought why not. These guys aren't bad. Yeah. And I always wanted an easy life. Yasaku said. But now that I think about it, being pirate sounds fun. Dangerous, but fun. Alright then. Zoro said as Luffy kept dancing around. Set the sail. Nami shouted from down the road. Everyone looked to see her start running towards the mall. What's she doing? Jin asked. Saying goodbye to her home her own way. Luffy said. You heard her guys. Cast off. I captain. They all said as they started unfurling the sails. Nami wait. Genzo said as he shoved his way through the crowd. You're leaving without saying goodbye Nami ignored him as she kept on running. Let's go. Luffy shouted as the sails caught the wind. Zoro pulled up the anchor and they began to pull away from the port. Nami. Genzo shouted as Nami was now weaving around everyone in town. Up, down, left, right, running past them all before making a running jump to the ship. 
She landed on the railing with all the villagers shocked that she would leave without saying goodbye. Nami just stood there before lifting her shirt a bit, letting wallets and coin purses fall around her feet. Huh? Some of the villagers said before they checked their pockets and realized that they've all been robbed. Nami pulled some money out of a wallet, kissed it, then winked at everyone. Thanks a bunch everyone. She said. You little thief. Everyone shouted at her before tons of them demanded that she return their stuff. Should we be worried? Johnny asked. Yes. Zoro and Usopp said in unison. Typical Nami. No Ko said as Luffy laughed, Sanji gave her a thumbs up, Yasaku just stared, and Jin looked ready to fall at that. You rotten thief. We'll miss you both. The townspeople shouted. Nami and no Ko waved at them all. Goodbye everyone. Nami and no Ko shouted to them all. Boy. Genzo shouted, getting Luffy's attention. Remember what we talked about. Luffy smiled before giving him a thumbs up. Hey Captain Luffy. No G Ko said as she pointed to the island. Hope you don't mind, but I convinced the villagers to put that up for you. Everyone followed her finger off to the distance. Luffy squinted before a huge grin came to his face. Flying in the distance where Arlong Park once stood was a tall pole, bearing the flag of the Straw Hat Pirates. That's so awesome. He shouted. Nami turned to them all with a smile. All right, everyone. It's time to set sail to the Grand Line. She said. Yeah. Everyone shouted. Some time earlier. This is Captain Nazumi of the 16th Marine Branch calling Marine Headquarters. Code number 00733. Nazumi shouted over the transponder snail. This is Marine Headquarters. Stop shouting already. Said the Marine on the other line. I'm calling to inform you all about a pirate named Monkey T. Luffy. He wears a straw hat, has five people on his crew, and effortlessly defeated Arlong. He is highly dangerous, so I'm formally requesting a bounty be placed upon his head. I'm sending a picture now. All right, we're receiving it now. The Marine said. Couldn't you take a better picture? Nizumi asked one of the Marines. That was all we could get. Said the Marine. Luffy's picture was the same as last time. While Nizumi complained, the Marine at HQ was looking at Luffy's picture before he remembered something. A straw hat. He thought before his eyes widened in shock. Wait a minute. He couldn't be alright. We'll inform the higher-ups. He said before hanging up. He then grabbed the picture before running through HQ, sweat forming on his face as he ran. There's no mistaking it. He matches the description perfectly. He thought before he came to a higher-ranking officer. What is the meaning of this? The officer grunted. The marine was out of breath as he handed him Luffy's picture. Sir I believe he's the one from the Goa incident. It had been a day since Luffy and his crew set off from Kokoyashi and everyone were doing their own thing. Jin was keeping an eye out for enemy ships, Johnny and Yasaku were dueling each other, Zoro was taking a nap, Usopp was making his special Tabasco star, Nami was arguing with a news coup about the price of the newspaper. Noji Ko was tending to the tangerine trees planted above the cabin, and Luffy was being himself as he tried to get a tangerine, only for Sanji to kick him away right into Usopp, who was splashed in the eyes with his Tabasco star. Can't I have one? Luffy asked as Usopp cried out in pain. No. Sanji shouted as he stood between Luffy and the trees. These are Nami's and Noji Ko's tangerine orchard. I won't let anyone lay a finger on them. He shouted before his eyes turned into hearts and he looked back and forth between both of them. Nami. Noji Ko. Can you see how well I'm protecting your trees? Yes, Sanji. We can see. Noji Ko said as Nami smiled. Thank you Sanji. Keep up the good work. Nami called, making Sanji hold his chest as he fell over in happiness. Ah, to be praised by you two is nothing short of utter joy. He said. He's whipped. Thought the other crew members. Hey, I'm happy. Luffy said before he grinned. The world today is a turbulent place. Nami said as she flipped a page in her newspaper. When she did, a small piece of paper fluttered out, getting Luffy's attention. He, Nami, and Usopp watched it flutter to the ground before yelling out. No way. Luffy yelled with a huge grin. Back at Marine Headquarters, elite officers were gathering in a small room to discuss the affairs of East Blue, by Lieutenant Commander Branu. Above Buggy the Clown. Bounty. 15 million berries. Foul Play Creek. Bounty. 17 million berries. Sawtooth Arlong. Bounty. 20 million berries. All three, which are above the average 3 million bounty for East Blue, were all defeated by the same man. The same one which also caused a major commotion on Dawn Island, in the Kingdom of Goa. Reports say that he achieved all this without taking a single scratch. Therefore, his bounty shall be a new record for East Blue. 48 million berries. Check it out guys. We're wanted criminals. Luffy shouted out as he held up his wanted poster. Usopp looked at it as Luffy laughed. Wanted. Dead or alive. 48 48 million berries. 
Usopp shouted in surprise. This is so awesome. Luffy shouted out. How can you think that's awesome? Nami yelled. Now we'll be hunted by the marines and bounty hunters. She's right about that big bro. Johnny said. If we hadn't have met you, we'd probably take a crack at turning your head in ourselves. He said as Yusaku nodded. 48 million. Jin said in an impressed tone. Well, no turning back now. No G Ko said as she went back to tending to the trees. How are you so calm? Nami asked, ready to lose her mind. What's everyone yelling about? Zoro asked as he was woken up from his nap. He was shown the reason as Johnny and Yusaku showed him Luffy's wanted poster. Oh is that all? He said. Check it out. I'm here too. Usopp shouted out, looking giddy that people around the world would see him. What? Sanji said as he looked at it. Where? Right there. Usopp said as he pointed to the back of his head in the poster. It's only the back of your head. Sanji said as he pouted on the deck. Don't worry brother cook. Just cause enough trouble and you'll eventually get your own. Yasaku said. Sanji cheered up before he started dancing around with Johnny, Yasaku, and Usopp. Alright everyone. Let's go the grand line. Aye. They shouted. Let's go to the grand line. They sang as Nami put her hand to her forehead as she felt a headache coming. She tried to drown out their antics with the paper as she sat back down to read, only for her eye to catch something truly strange. Luffy? She asked, getting his attention. Yeah? He asked. What's the Goa incident? She asked. Luffy stared at her as the others stopped dancing and looked as well. The what now? Usopp asked. We've heard of that. Yasaku said. But only rumors. What's Goa? Noji Ko asked. The Kingdom of Goa. Johnny said. It's located on Dawn Island and is said to be the most beautiful of all the places in East Blue. Sounds boring. Jin said before he looked back out to sea. Okay. Sanji said before going for another cigarette. But what's this Goa incident that you're talking about Nami? And why are you asking Luffy? Zoro asked. Because according to the paper, the world government is now saying that Luffy's the cause of it. She said as she read on. It says that a mysterious man with a straw hat invaded the kingdom of Go one year ago. She said before the next part caused her to go wide-eyed before she looked at Luffy. You attacked the royal family. No. Just scared them. Luffy said. Why would you do something like that big bro? Yusaku asked. I had my reasons. Luffy said. It doesn't sound like something you'd do. Zoro said as he was now looking at Luffy. Come on captain. No Jiko said. Why? Luffy stood still as the wind blew around them before he sighed and sat down on the deck. I wanted them to know that they weren't untouchable. He said in a low voice. If you really want to know, I'll tell you. He left out some details, but told them about what the nobles did and why. All of them were so wrapped up in the story, they didn't notice a marine ship pull up next to them. It's you again. Screamed a voice. They all looked to see full body on a marine ship rant about how he was going to capture them. He stopped when they looked at him, making his blood run cold. Each of them were glaring at him, clearly not wanting to deal with him after hearing what happened to Luffy. This off. They all said in a low voice, which was enough for full body and all the marines on board to sail away as quickly as possible. Still, I can't believe that they'd do something like that. No G. Ko said. But now that they did, I want to know what you did to them. Jin asked. Everyone was staring, also interested in what happened as well. Like I said. I scared them. Luffy said with a satisfied grin as he told them all what happened a year ago. Luffy, 16, was running away from some guards in town center, with his cheeks stretched out and stuffed with food. At back here you little thief. One of the guards yelled before they started shooting at him. Luffy merely smiled before running through an alley. He stretched up to the roof just before the guards came. Hey, where'd he go? Find him. That little bastard's gonna eat everything in this city until there's nothing left. Another guard yelled before they all went off to look for Luffy. Luffy, who was watching from the roof, merely chewed his food before swallowing and grinning. Whenever he wasn't training with Garp, he'd sneak into the kingdom and steal food from a few restaurants before hiding again. Even though Garp would kick his ass for doing so, it was worth it to see all those nobles and snobs frustrated at him. While on the roof, he saw another restaurant off in the distance. One more, then back to the forest. Luffy said before he rocketed off towards the place. He landed on the roof of the building next to it and was about to jump through a window, but stopped when he noticed that it was closed. That's weird. He said before he looked down and saw a horse-drawn cart taking food toward High Town. The thing that the king asked my restaurant to supply them with food. Came a voice. Luffy looked down to see what looked like the owner of the restaurant smiling in glee. Guess that straw hat wearing thief got to the other restaurants first. Still, thanks to him I was chosen to help cater the feast tonight. He said before walking back in and closing up shop. The feast huh? Luffy said to himself before looking at the castle. 
I know where I'm going tonight. Luffy snuck past all the security and used his hockey on those who saw him before they could alert anyone else, before making it to the Grand Hall. He was hanging off one of the chandeliers as he was looking at all the nobles, the royals, but more importantly, the food. Jackpot. He whispered to himself as some drool ran down his lip. He was about to jump down and devour everything within reach, but was stopped when the king tapped his wine glass with his spoon. Your attention everyone. He said, stopping everyone as they looked to him. He smiled as he raised his glass. As you all know, this feast is to celebrate the anniversary of our good fortune. He said, which caused everyone else to raise their glasses as well. It was six years ago when a celestial dragon blessed us with his presence, despite the slight offense on his arrival, due to that strange little nobody that sailed out to sea when they arrived. He finished in a bored tone. Sabo. Luffy thought as he watched them all have the same bored expression, as if his life meant nothing. Luffy glared at them all before he noticed a certain noble amongst the people in at the massive table. He squinted his eyes to confirm his suspicions. That's Sabo's old man. Still, all went well. The king continued. Especially since they found no other flaw in our kingdom. He said. A young man next to him chuckled a bit, gaining everyone's attention. Is something amusing son. Just thinking about those stupid pirates who started the fire years ago. He said in a cocky tone. Thanks to them, all that trash was burned away. Everyone slowly began to laugh at that as they all raised their glasses again. To our kingdom. The king said. To the kingdom. Everyone said as they all tipped their glasses up to drink. Sabo's father had his eyes closed as he drank, but opened them just in time to see someone fall down in front of him. Luffy had jumped from the chandelier and landed with a crash in front of Sabo's father, startling everyone there as they all jumped back in shock. Luffy stayed in a horse stance before slowly rising to his feet. What is the meaning of this? shouted the king. Who are you? Guards. Guards. Luffy ignored this as he slowly looked up at Sabo's father. When he saw Luffy, he turned a little blue. I am possible. He stuttered. You can't be alive. You should be dead. Luffy said nothing as he glared at him. Stop right there. Shouted a guard as they all surrounded Luffy. This is the Grand Royal Hall of he said before all the guards fell down, foaming at the mouth. Everyone was stunned as Luffy still glared at the man, who was too paralyzed with fear to move. W who are you? The king asked, trying to hide his fear. Luffy kept his hat down as he looked at the king. A survivor of the terminal fire. Luffy said in a calm voice. I heard every word you bastard said. Now a lot of them were turning blue with fear. E -e -e even if that's TT true, one of them stuttered, clearly terrified. And no one will believe on uh, nobody like why you. As I am now, no. Luffy said before he showed the smirk from under his hat. But one day, the world will know what you all did. He said before he jumped off the table, stretched his hands out, grabbed as much food as he could, and calmly walked out of the castle like he owned the place. Bye. He said as he ate the food and beat down every guard in his path, leaving all of the royals and nobles to wallow in fear and bodily fluids in some cases. How'd you go so long without getting a bounty before now? Usopp shrieked. They never saw my face. Luffy answered. Half the crew was staring at him in disbelief, the other with grins. If you ask me, they got off too easy. Zoro said. I agree. Jin said. By the way, Nami said. Who's Sabo? Luffy explained who Sabo was. Their brother. They all shouted. Yeah. He ran away from his parents because they didn't care about him if he couldn't marry someone in the royal family. Luffy said. After all that you've told us, it's now hard to believe that a noble can have a heart. Sanji said. And those celestial dragons killed him. Usopp yelled. They said they did, but they also said that a body was never recovered. Luffy said, keeping the fact that Sabo was alive to himself. So I'm not declaring him dead yet. Anyway Nami, where are we heading to? He asked. Nami quickly looked over some maps before finding their next destination. A place called Lauge Town. She said. They also call it the town of the beginning and end, since the last pirate king Gold Roger was both born and executed there. The beginning and the end huh? Luffy said as he grinned. Let's go see it. The town that bore Gold Roger. After some sailing, a quick explanation of Reverse Mountain and most of the crew wishing to throw Luffy overboard to shut him up about getting to where Gold Roger spent his last few moments, the Straw Hats, finally made it to Lauge Town. We're here. Luffy shouted out when they made port. The town where Gold Roger was both born and executed. Johnny said. I'm off guys. Luffy yelled before he jumped ship and ran into the town. Luffy? Hold on I and he's gone. Usopp said. Honestly, Nami said with a sigh. Can't he sit still for five minutes? You've traveled with him longer, so you should know. No G. Ko said in a teasing voice. Shut up. Most of the crew said, making No G. Ko laugh before everyone got ready to head into town. I'm gonna go pick up some food. 
Sanji said before he jumped from the ship. I'll go look for some supplies. Usopp said. I need some new swords, but I'm pretty broke. Zara mumbled. I lend you some money at 300% interest. Nami said with an innocent smile. Don't do it Zoro. No Jiko thought with a knowing smirk. We'll go with you big bro. Yusaku said as he and Johnny followed Zoro. I'll take a walk. Jin mumbled as he left the ship. You okay Jin? No Jiko asked while following Nami. Dust clearing my head. He said before they all walked off. What's wrong with you big bro? Johnny asked as the three of them kept walking, looking for a shop to get some new swords. Nothing. Zoro said without looking back. Moments ago, the three ran into a blue-haired woman who took out two pirates effortlessly before tripping over herself, falling, and dropping her glasses. Zoro picked up her glasses while onlookers laughed before giving them back to her, but nearly crushed them at the side of her. She looked just like her. Zoro thought before they entered a weapons shop. Greetings. Said the owner as he rubbed his hands together with a smile. We have new blades, old blades, and rare blades. What are you looking for? I have 100,000 berries. Give me two swords. Zoro said bluntly. Only that much. The owner said, his happy mood deflating at hearing how poor he is. And you too. He asked, seeing Johnny and Yasaku. Looking for better versions of these blades. Johnny said as he and Yasaku held up their blades. Over there. The owner said as he pointed at display case to the right of the store. And over there are 50,000 berry swords. He told Zoro as he pointed to some barrels to the left of the store. His face lit up in confusion and shock when he noticed Zoro's blade. Wait is that? He thought. Excuse me. He said with a bit of sweat and a forced smile on his face. Do you mind if I see that blade of yours? He asked. All three looked at him skeptically, but Zoro let him see it. He nearly pissed himself when he saw it was what he thought it was before he calmed down and tried to buy it at a low price, with Zoro naturally declining each offer. Is that what I think it is? Said the blue-haired swordswoman from before as she looked at Zoro's sword. It is. Wait oh Ichimanji. You again Zoro said as the owner got pissed at her for blowing his deal. She told them all about how his sword was very rare before the owner tossed her blade shigure to her. You never told us about that sword big bro. Yusaku said as he picked up a sword he liked. It's amazing that you have that kind of sword. Toshigi said as Zoro was now looking for some swords. But you're looking for three. That reminds me of a bounty hunter called Rurano Zoro. She said before she sighed. Why are the best blades in the hands of pirates or bounty hunters? Something wrong? Johnny asked. No. She said before holding up her blade. It's just that I made a vow to obtain these blades. Dot. Like my blade? Zoro asked. No, no. She said. Not for me. Just to keep them out of evil hands. Zoro smirked at her that she didn't know who he is before his eyes widened at the sword he grabbed. What? He said before he pulled out the blade. Toshigi stared in awe before she flipped through a book while the owner had a grim look on his face. That's Kotetsu 3, Toshigi said before talking about it and the ones that came before it. I won't sell that blade. The owner yelled. He and Toshigi talked about why not, along with Ip and Matsu's wife before Zoro interrupted them all. It's cursed. He said, gaining everyone's attention. You knew Ip and said. It is Joni and Yasaku said in unison. I can feel it. Zoro said. Ippinmatsu then told them about how everyone who carried a Kotetsu sword met a horrible death. Toshigi bowed and apologized for saying he should get it, but Zoro only smirked. I like it. I'll take it. What? They all said. Didn't you hear what he said big bro Johnny asked. I know you want good blades, but wanting a cursed blade is nuts. Yasaku yelled. By luck or its curse. Zoro said. How about we find out which is stronger? He then tossed the blade into the air before holding out his left arm. Big bro Johnny and Yasaku screamed. Look out. Toshigi yelled. That sword's sharpness is real. You'll lose your arm. Ip and Matsu yelled. Then it just means I don't have what it takes. Zoro said before he closed his eyes, blocking everything but the sword from his mind. He heard the sword spin in the air as it came down and, to everyone but Zoro's surprise, hit his arm with its back, leaving him unharmed as it sank into the wooden floor. I'll take it. He said with a smirk. Everyone fell down to their knees or backsides in awe relief as Zoro took the sword out of the floor. Hey you. Find me another sword. He told Toshigi. All right. She said before Ip and told them all to wait before running to the back room and coming back with another sword. This is Yubashiri. He said. Our shop is small, but it's the best blade I have. I can't afford it. Zoro said. Take it in the Kotetsu, free of charge. Ip and said. It's my way of apologizing for trying to cheat a real swordsman. He said. Johnny and Yasaku bought themselves some swords with their own money before leaving to follow Zoro. Who was that guy? Toshigi asked as Ippon's wife told him to take out the garbage. 
Nami and Noji Ko were walking through town with some shopping bags before Nami stopped. What's wrong Nami? Noji Ko asked as she stopped and looked at her. Would you really come along? Nami asked. They looked at each other before Noji Ko smiled. Truth be told, I don't know. She said. Something in me said to go with you guys. That's all. She said. It was true that whatever it was, she wanted to go along as well. That's it. Nami said. That's it. Noji Ko said before she started walking again. Nami followed as the wind picked up a bit. You sure there's a storm coming? Noji Ko asked as she looked up at the blue sky. Yeah. A big one too. Nami said. Jin was walking through town, just minding his own as he was lost in thought. Back to the Grand Line. He thought with a grim look. I must be crazy. One week and that Hawkeye bastard destroyed Krieg's whole fleet. And there are six more like him. He sighed as he looked to the sky. I won't deny it. I'm terrified to go back. Yet that kid sounds like going there is like having a picnic. I just hope he knows what he's doing. He kept walking, even though he noticed a group of 20 people carrying blades and guns were slowly surrounding him. He stopped when they left him with nowhere to run. Remember us? One of them asked as the others had mixed expressions from crazed to angry. Not really. Jin said in a bored tone. You should. We're all that's left from pirate crews that your captain destroyed. Another shouted. Don Krieg robbed us of our dreams of going to the Grand Line to find the One Piece. One more shouted. At the mention of Don Krieg, spectators around them began to talk in silent whispers of fear. What does that have to do with me? Jin asked. I'm not a Krieg pirate anymore. Is that so? Said a tall man with a blade in his hand. He had on grey jeans, blue shirt, orange hair that was buzzed, and black shoes. You were under his rule when you attacked us, so we'll kill you first before we find and kill Krieg. He then ran towards Jin, who didn't move from his spot. Moron. Jin mumbled before he dodged the attack and elbowed him in his ribs, crushing them before the guy fell down in pain. He then took out his tonfa before spinning one around and grinning. Who's next? At him. One of them shouted before they all ran at him. One ran ahead and attempted to lob Jin's head off, but Jin ducked before slamming his tonfa into his back. One managed to nick his face, but that only got his face smashed in. One by one, Jin took them all out before looking at them all and breathing a bit heavily. Thanks for the exercise. Jin said before he put away his tonfa and starting walking on. He kept walking even with the spectators looking at him in fear. Stop staring at me. He said, causing them all to freak out and hide. All except a few men under some cloaks. Hey you. One of them asked. Now what? Jin asked, clearly annoyed that he couldn't get a moment to think. If you're here for a fight, you'd better reconsider. Nah, we have no beef with you. Another said. We're looking for a guy with a straw hat. You seen this guy? He asked before bringing up Luffy's wanted poster. Jin looked at them with narrowed eyes. What do you want with that kid? He asked. Our captain wants him dead, so we're looking for him. Another said before they all smirked under their cloaks, unaware that Jin was going for his tonfas. After a few close calls and a few encounters with Smoker, Luffy was finally on top of the execution and was staring around. I missed this view. Luffy said as a bunch of people were looking up at Luffy. Hey you. Yelled an officer with a loudspeaker. Get down from there. Why? Luffy asked. That platform is property of the world government. Get down from there now. He yelled. Say the magic word. Luffy called back with a smile. Now. Before I arrest you. He screamed, clearly losing his patience with Luffy before being knocked out by an iron mace. Long time no see Luffy. Said the woman with the mace who was now looking up at Luffy. I've been looking for you. When Luffy looked down at her, that strange feeling hit him again, although it was tiny and very different from when he looked at Nami. Hi. Luffy said. Who are you? He thought hard trying to remember her, but was having trouble remembering. That's rude. She said. You're telling me you don't remember this face. I'm trying to remember. He said. Well, I remember you Luffy. She said. You're the first man to have ever struck me. I did. Luffy said as some of the fog was clearing in his mind. Yes. When you did, it felt good. She said as Luffy tilted his head in confusion. Listen up boys. She continued. Who is the most beautiful on these seas? You are. The crowd shouted before bowing to her. That question seemed to be the final key to jogging Luffy's memory. Alvita. Luffy asked. That's right. She said with a smile. Glad you remember. Luffy just looked stop right there. One of them shouted. You're under arrest for attacking a police captain. Drop your weapon. He said before looking up at Luffy. And you. Get off that. Who did you say you're going to arrest? Alvita asked in a sweet voice. Why you? One of them stuttered as they all blushed at her. Are you really going to arrest me? She cooed. We can't do it sir. 
they all said with hearts in their eyes. She's too beautiful. I don't care. An officer said with hearts in his eyes. Just arrest her. Before they could do anything, a cannonball blew up the fountain, sending a hunk of it at Alvita before it slid off her, leaving her unharmed as it went towards Luffy, who only caught it before dropping it. How'd she do that again? He mumbled as Alvita spoke with the headed figures who approached her. Alvita looked up to see his confused face before smiling. Surprised. She asked before removing her cloak, showing everyone her slim body. I guess I did change after eating the smooth smooth fruit. No attack can hurt me since it slides right off. She said. Though it couldn't make me any more beautiful than I was before, it did get rid of my freckles. Right. That's it. Luffy said, though his face said otherwise. So what are you here for? To make you, the only man who has ever hit me, all mine. She cooed. And these guys were looking for you as well. She said as the cloaked man revealed themselves to be Buggy and his crew. Now that I've flashily made my entrance, it's time for the real show to start. He shouted. He then went into a long rant about some of his adventures before screaming, why am I telling you a story? Don't know. Luffy said. Didn't you learn anything about the last time we fought Big Nose? You dare call me Big Nose Buggy shrieked. I, Buggy the Clown, I'm going to kill you for that you rubber bastard. Buggy the Clown? Some of the audience said before running, only to be stopped by his crew. Stay flashily right where you are. Buggy shouted, everyone's going to see how scary I am. Really? Luffy asked. By having your crew do all the work like this? Luffy said as he found himself caught in a stockade thanks to Kabaji. Hi again. Luffy said in a calm tone as if he was talking to an old friend. Hello again rubber freak. How's Zoro doing? Kabaji asked in a smug tone. Nice shot Kabaji. Buggy screamed as he announced that to his followers that he would flashily execute Monkey D. Luffy. Luffy just looked around bored, remembering how stupid Buggy is before he looked down at Alvita. Maybe she'll join if I ask. Luffy thought before being brought out of his thoughts by Buggy's yelling. Do you feel honored kid? You're about to die right where Gold Roger did years ago. He said with a smirk. Is that so? Luffy asked with a blank face. Buggy nearly fell over at his calm attitude. Of course. I'm going to kill you. What else do you think would be happening? He screamed as it started to cloud up in the sky. You couldn't kill me before. He said with a smile, which caused Alvita to grin and piss Buggy off. Quite. I now start these festivities with your death. Buggy screamed, sending his men into an uproar as they cheered. Yes this is the end. Alvita said with a sad smile. Any last words rubber boy? Buggy asked as he brought out a sword. Luffy smiled before taking a deep breath before speaking with everything he had. I am the man who will be king of the pirates. He shouted with the wind. His words left everyone in awe as if they thought he could do it, but Buggy was still laughing at his statement. If that's all you have to say, then let's get this started. He said as he raised his sword. Stop the execution. Zoro shouted from behind the crowd. He, Sanji, Johnny, Yasaku and Jin had met up and were looking for Luffy. They ran towards the square when they heard him shouting. Right now. They all shouted. Eyes. Luffy said. He was glad to see them all as everyone looked at them. None of them noticing Smoker and the marines moving into position. The moment Straw Hat dies, take all the other pirates down. He ordered. Yes sir. The marine said quietly. As they were talking, Toshigi saw the man she met before through binoculars as a marine, said that he was Zoro and a member of the Straw Hat Pirates. He's Zoro? She asked. Luffy, you moron. Zoro said with a smirk. Guess goofing around finally caught up with ya. Is this really the time to make jokes big bro? Johnny asked. Yeah. Yasaku agreed. He's got brother captain up there ready to kill him. Like he'd be killed by some sideshow freak like that. Sanji said as he puffed on his cigarette. How'd he get trapped anyway? Jin asked. Ha 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 ha. Boogie laughed. Glad you could make it Zoro. Feel free to watch your friend die. He said before raising his sword into the air. At that moment, all of them began charging towards the platform to stop that sword. Luffy watched, remembering that Zoro and Sanji took too long because of the numbers. This time, with Johnny, Yasaku and Jin, they were plowing through the pirates like they were blades of grass. They're doing great. Luffy thought before he sensed that Buggy was about to drop the sword onto his neck. He then felt the same way he did last time he was faced with death. Zoro. Sanji. Usopp. Nami. Jin. Noji Ko. Johnny. Yasaku. He said before smiling at the crowd. Sorry. I'm dead. The sword then came down towards his neck as his as the five straw hats and smoker gasped for different reasons. No. Don't say that. Big bro. Captain. He smiled. All of them thought the worst before electricity sparked around Boogie's sword. 
then, as if the heavens still said Luffy should live, a bolt came down, setting the platform ablaze as it twisted and fell. Everyone fell silent as they gapped at the scene, unable to figure out how that happened, as Luffy's hat fluttered to the ground before his feet. He picked it up as he smiled before placing it on his head and laughing. Lucky. He said before walking towards his crew. What how? Johnny stuttered as Yusaku fell on his ass in shock. Jin's tonfa fell from his hands as Sanji let his cigarette fall from his mouth. They weren't the only ones surprised as Smoker stared with wide eyes. Dust like Gold Roger, he smiled just before he was killed. Why? He thought before he ordered his men to capture them. Divine intervention. Sanji said. Stop talking nonsense. Zoro said. The marines are here. We gotta go. He's right. Yasaku said as he stood up before they started running. I'll catch up to you guys. Luffy said before turning to Alvita. Hey, you seem pretty strong. She just stared at him after coming out of her shock. Wanna join my crew? Luffy asked. Alvita just looked at him, baffled that he would ask. Did I hear you right? She said as a marine tried hitting her with a sword, only for it to slide away before she hit him with her mace. Yeah. I want crew members. Luffy said before dodging a sword and punching another marine away. How about it? Alvita just looked at him before letting out a laugh. You're crazy kid. She said before she stopped laughing. How about this? If you can manage to touch me, I'll join. Deal. Deal. Luffy said before he walked up to her and grabbed her hand, shocking her that it didn't slip away. Let's go. He said before running away, still holding on to her hand. His hand didn't slip away. How is he able to hold on to my hand? Alvita thought. She looked back at Luffy before smiling. Well, a deal's a deal. She thought before running at Luffy's pace and looking back at the fallen platform and seeing it and Buggy on the ground charred. If he can survive that, it might just be worth it to go with him. Capture them. A marine shouted as Buggy was now trying to deal with being in a sea stone net. As they ran, it began to rain hard as marines tried to stop them, only to be beaten easily by Luffy and his crew. While he did, Smoker was still stunned by what he saw. He smiled. Did he know he would survive? He thought. No. He knew he was going to die and smiled. He then heard that the rain rendered their gunpowder useless, so the squad at the Western Harbor left to resupply, and that if they left, the tailwind would help them escape. It's as if heaven itself wants that boy to live. Moments before this happened, Moji was riding Richie to the Straw Hat ship, intending to burn it down. He had a match burning with a twisted smile, only for it to be wiped off as a drop of rain fell on it, which was soon followed by a downpour. How can we start a fire now? Moji yelled before Usopp shouted at him to get away from the ship. After dealing with him, distracting Richie with an egg, and fending off some marines, Usopp, Nami, and Noji co-boarded the ship and waited for the others to return. As the others were running, they came across to Shiggy, who was angered that Zoro lied to her about who he was and that she would take his sword from him. Zoro stayed to fight her as the others kept running. After a quick duel, which to Shiggy lost, Zoro resheated his swords. No one's taking my sword from me. He said before he tried to walk away. Why are you letting me live? She asked. Is it because I'm a woman? Zoro stopped at those words as she went on about how just because she's a woman that he takes pity on her. She kept going on before Zoro snapped. It's your existence I can't stand. Not your gender. He shouted before he said that she looked and sounded like a friend he once knew. Soon, both were in a screaming match as the marines looked on with a few sweat drops on their heads. Luffy and his crew were running away before Johnny noticed they had one more with them. Who's that? He asked. Everyone looked at Alvita and Luffy. She just joined our crew. Luffy said smiling. Her name's Alvita. Alvita? Yasaku asked. Hi Lady Alvita. Sanji said as he went into love mode. We got company. Jin said as they all stopped in their tracks. So you came, Straw Hat Luffy. Smoker said. He was standing in front of them all, blocking Luffy and his crew from continuing onward. Smokey. Crap. If I show him I have hockey or know the six powers, the marines might send tougher guys. All I can do is dodge and hope to escape. Luffy thought. Go on ahead guys. I'll handle this. Not happening. Smoker said as smoke came out of his arms before turning into a sort of barrier across the street. What? Some of them screamed out. The smoke smoke fruit. Smoker said. As a captain of the marines, I vow not to let you leave this island. He said before a smoke fist came towards Luffy. Luffy dodged easily while his crew tried to take a chance and run past the smoke that vanished when he attacked at Luffy. No one's getting through. He said before his smoke caught them all. I can't move. Jin said as he tried to hit the smoke with his tonfa. And I can't slip out. Alvita shouted. While they were struggling, Smoker tried to attack Luffy again, but Luffy kept up just enough to dodge every single attack. Soon, both stopped before glaring at each other. 
Let my friends go. Luffy said in a low voice. Not a chance. Smoker said. 48 million berries is your bounty. A doesn't matter. I've never let any pirate make it through this town, and I never will. He said as he reached for his jut. There's a first for everything. Came a voice from behind Smoker as a hand reached out and grabbed the jut, keeping Smoker from using it. All of them turned to see a tall man in a green cloak step out of the shadows. You Smoker said as lightning flashed, revealing the face of Dragon for a moment. Some of the crew freaked at seeing him, while the other half didn't know who he was. Who are you? Luffy asked. Dragon merely smiled at him before looking back at Smoker. Now the government can have your head. Smoker said. The world is still waiting for our answer. Dragon said before and green light filled the area, along with a powerful gust of wind. Luffy looked at Dragon before he and his crew were blown away, leaving Dragon and Smoker where they stood. Would you help them? Smoker demanded. Why do you wish to keep a man from sailing? Dragon asked back. This storm's getting worse. Nami shouted. Hey guys. Luffy screamed as he and the others came running up to them. We're here. Dead on the boat guys. No Jiko yelled. And hurry. Usopp hollered. Everyone gathered up on the boat before they unfurled the sails and sailed away, with the wind helping them along. Who's that? Most of them asked as they looked at Alvida. Our new crewmate. Luffy said. Name's Alvida. I'll be joining you guys from here on out. She said. A moment later, Smoker and the Marines arrived at the harbor. They got away. A Marine said. I'm sailing after them. Smoker said, shocking most of the Marines. I'm not letting him get away. I'm going too. Toshigi said. I can't let that man get away with that sword. There's a light up ahead. Nami said. Everyone was staring at it with excitement or worry in Jin's case, as they all felt themselves getting closer to the Grand Line. Never thought we'd be heading for the Grand Line. Johnny said with a smile. Me either. I can't help but feel excited. Yasaku said. I'm going back to that sea again. Jin said with a grim look. Relax Jin. No Jiko said. This is going to be fun. She's right. Nami said with a smile. Let's mark this occasion with some words. Sanji said as he rolled out a big barrel. I agree. Usopp said as he let go of the mast before they all gathered around the barrel. Sanji put his foot on top of the barrel, with each of them placing a foot on afterwards. I'm going to find the all blue. Sanji said. I'm gonna be king of the pirates. Luffy said. I'm going to be the best swordsman. Zoro said. We're going to be the best swordsman duo Johnny started. The whole world has ever seen. Yasaku finished. I'm going to be a brave warrior of the sea. Usopp said after some thought. I'm going to draw a map of the world. Nami said. I'm going to help you see that dream come true sis. No Jiko said. I am going to captivate the world with my beauty. Alvita said. Everyone then stared at Jin, whose eyes were shadowed as he stared at the barrel. He then smiled before placing his own foot up there. Do never run from the Grand Line again. He said. All of them smiled as they looked at the barrel. Each feeling their resolve hardened before Luffy shouted out. And now, Luffy yelled before they raised their feet into the air, then brought them down to smash the barrel. To the Grand Line. Yeah. They all shouted as they sailed onward to the Grand Line. Oh yeah. Crocus gave us a new one. Nami said, which caused them to do a 180 and beg again. That bitch tricked me. Mr. Nine thought. They can come. Luffy said, shocking most of them. Why? Usopp asked. They're nothing but shady people. I wouldn't trust these two. Jin said. Don't sweat it. Luffy said. And as for our route, we don't like it, we'll pick another one next time. Good plan. Sanji said as he puffed on his cigarette. Once we get to the end, we'll have to find something else to do. Yeah. Luffy said. Now that me and Laboon have an understanding, I can leave without worrying about him. Who are you anyway? Vivi asked. The man who will become king of the pirates. Luffy answered with a grin. Stupid pirates. Vivi thought as she and MR.9 fought back a laugh while Crocus smiled widely at that. Soon they were all on board the Mary as they prepared to sail. It should be pointing to Whiskey Peak. Crocus said as he pointed at the log pose on Nami's wrist. Right. Nami said. I'm off Laboon. Luffy yelled. You better be ready for a fight when I get back. He said, to which Laboon made a soft sound in understanding. Next stop. Whiskey Peak. Let's go everyone. Yeah. They all shouted as they sailed away. Crocus and Laboon stared at them as Crocus spoke. They may be the pirates we've been waiting for. Crocus said. That man had a mysterious air about him. Don't you think so? Roger. The crew was sailing on in the Grand Line, even with the weather changing from sunny to snowy in a matter of seconds. Nami, Noji Ko, and Alvita were inside the cabin with Vivi and Mr. Nine, while the rest were outside in the snow. 
Sanji and Jin was shoveling the deck, Zoro was napping, Johnny was in the crow's nest on the lookout for Whiskey Peak, Yasaku was keeping an eye out for trouble in any direction, and Luffy and Usopp were playing in the snow. This weather doesn't make any sense. Nami said as she, Noji Ko, and Alvita were in winter clothing. Doesn't this ship have a heater or something? Mr. Nine asked as he and Vivi shivered in their blankets. I'm cold. Vivi said. Shut up. You're not guests. Nami shouted. Shovel some snow to warm up then. Behold. The man who came from the sky. Mr. Snowman. Luffy said after making a funny looking snowman. Nice job big bro. Johnny said from up in the crow's nest as and Yasaku clapped their hands. Ah ha ha. Usopp said. Amateur. Behold, the beauty of my soul. Snow Queen. He said after making a sculpture of a woman out of snow. All of them clapped at that before Luffy shot one of Mr. Snowman's wooden arms at her, smashing its head and pissing off Usopp. Would you do that, you jackass? He screamed as he kicked Luffy's snowman's head in. You bully. Luffy shouted. Soon they were throwing snowballs at each other while Johnny and Yasaku watched and laughed. Catch. Luffy shouted before throwing a snowball at them both, nailing them both in the face. Oh yeah. Yasaku shouted as Johnny jumped from the crow's nest before they both chucked snowballs at him. This means war. The four shouted before throwing snowballs at each other. While this was happening, the women inside were watching from the window. How can they be so energetic? Nami asked. Look on the bright side. No Jiko said. Never a dull moment. My lovely ladies, are you happy with all my shoveling? Sanji asked with hearts in his eyes. Yes. They said. Please keep shoveling Sanji. Alvita cooed, causing Sanji to start shoveling at a rapid pace. Hey, make sure that gets thrown off the ship at least. Jin shouted as he noticed Sanji was just tossing it everywhere. One of the piles hit Luffy, which caused him to throw snowballs at Sanji and Jin. You bastard. He shouted. Soon all six of them were going at it with their little snow war. Really? All the people in the cabin asked with sweat drops on their heads before lightning flashed in the sky. It didn't seem to stop the snowballers from having fun until they heard Nami screaming from inside the cabin. What's wrong big sis? Johnny asked. Turn the ship 180 degrees now. She shouted. 180 degrees. Why do you want to go back? Usopp asked. Luffy smiled, knowing that this was their first brush with the Grand Line weather. We got turned around. We're heading in the wrong direction. She shouted. I took my eyes of the pose for a second. I thought the waves were calm. You sure you're a navigator? Vivi asked in a conceited way, making both Nami and Nojiko want to slap the shit out of her. Nothing can be trusted on these seas. Winds, waves, clouds, nothing but the log pose. Everyone knows that. She said. If you know so much, then shut up and help you ass out you jackasses. Nami and Nojiko shouted as they kicked both her and Mr. Nine out the door. They began to turn before the weather changed again into a spring gale. Nami kept shouting out orders as the weather kept having mood swings on them. Sanji made food as everyone was now helping to keep the ship on track and out of harm's way. All except Zoro, who was sleeping through it all even with everyone yelling at him from time to time to wake up. After what felt like an eternity, the weather finally calmed down as everyone was getting a second wind. Luffy was smiling under his hat, not only from the rush of doing all this over again, but the fact that Mary made it through with lighter damage this time around. Jin was having violent flashbacks to when he first came to the Grand Line, while Zoro had finally woken up and stretched before looking around at everyone on the deck. Just because the weather's nice doesn't mean we should drop our guards guys. He said. And it you shithead. All but Luffy, Johnny, and Yusaku thought as Zoro turned to see their guests were still there. Why are you two here? Zoro asked. You just noticed Mr. Nine asked. We're taking them home. Luffy said. Is that so? Zoro said. So tell me, he said as he knelt sat down at eye level with them and gave them an evil grin. What were your names again? Cause you don't look like you can be trusted. And my name is Mr. Nine. Mr. Nine said nervously. I miss Wednesday. Vivi added with a bit of sweat on her forehead. Right. Zoro said with his thumb on his chin. Those names sound familiar to me and that's what's bothering me. In fact, the more I think about it, the more I think I've heard those names before. Both Vivi and Mr. Nine looked terrified at that, thinking that they'd been found out. Really big bro? Yasaku asked. Where? Well, I can't be too sure, but he said before Nami hit him in the back of the head so hard it smacked into the deck. Have a nice nap. She said with an evil glare as she appeared to glow with a dangerous aura. Next time you leave us to do all the work, your ass is fish bait. Huh? Zoro said as he glared back with an aura of his own, but that quickly faded when she hit him over the head three more times. She's crazy. Thought some of the crew as Nami stood tall. Listen up everyone. She shouted. 
We have no idea what's gonna happen next. During the terror that most of us experienced, she said before sending another evil look at Zoro. I came to an understanding why this sea is called the Grand Line. My navigation skills are useless here. Anything can happen. But mark my words, I will guide us through. Okay? How? Usopp asked as they all stared at her. Don't worry. She said. Just wait and see. Besides, we're here. Our first journey on the Grand Line ends. She said as she pointed to an island shrouded in mist. Everyone looked on with different emotions. Our first island here in the Grand Line. Jin said with a grim look. Look at those cacti. Johnny said as Yasaku nodded. Wonder what we'll find. No Jiko said. We thank, but we must go now. Mr. Nine said as he and Vivi were now standing on the railing of the ship. It's been fun while it lasted. Vivi said. Maybe our paths will cross again one day. Mr. Nine said before they both looked at everyone and smirked. Bye bye baby. They said before jumping off and swimming towards the island. That was fast. Nami said. Wonder what those weirdos were up to. Usopp said. Who cares? We're landing. Luffy said as they all looked back at the island. There's a waterway that leads to the shore. We'll use that. Nami said. You think that monsters might be on this island? Usopp stuttered. Man up already. Jin said. It's possible. We'll be more than a match for them. Luffy said. Besides, we can't leave until the log pose readapts to the magnetic field and points to the next island. Nami said. That's crazy. If monsters do get us, what's the point? Usopp asked. We stay and that's final. Nami said. Don't worry guys. Let's not think about it until we get there. Luffy said. He's right. There's no need to worry yet. Zoro said. Yeah. Let's see what's here first. Johnny said. And if there is anything here, then I'll protect the ladies. Sanji said. I've suddenly come down with don't go to the island disease. Usopp said as he acted like he was gasping for breath. Here we go everyone. Nami said as Usopp went on about his disease. And be prepared to run as well as fight. Everyone was sailing onwards even when a mass of shadowed figures appeared on the shore. Everyone got a little tense until the fog lifted and they saw what looked like the whole town cheering and welcoming them to their island. Welcome to our town pirates. They shouted. Hooray for the heroes of the sea. What? Most of the crew asked. They looked at the crowd in confusion, then with different expressions. Sanji was looking at all the girls, Usopp was blowing kisses to everyone, Jin just raised an eyebrow at the scene, Johnny and Yasaku looked puzzled, Alvida kept a straight face, Zoro looked unimpressed, Nami and Noji Ko looked skeptical, and Luffy was smiling a lot. They made port before they all walked ashore and were greeted by a tall man with very curly hair. Luffy remembered him and smiled. Greetings pirates. He said with a smile. We cough cough ma 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 a a a h dot welcome to our little town of Whiskey Peak. My name is Agarapoy. I'm the mayor here. Hi. I'm Luffy. Luffy said before pointing at his head. Nice hair. It's all curly. We thrive on making booze and music as you'll see soon enough. He said. We pride ourselves on hospitality. Smiles and liquor are abundant here, so we ask your permission to throw a party to celebrate your arrival and hear cough ma 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 a the tales of your adventures. Okay. Shouted Luffy, Usopp, Sanji, Johnny, and Yasaku as they left the rest behind. Idiots. Nami said before asking Agarapoy, her Igram, about when the log pose will set. Now now. Let's not talk about trivial things like that. He said as he placed a hand on her shoulder. Let us party now. He shouted, which caused everyone to cheer in agreement, none of them noticing the four remaining straw hats talking in whispers. Nice way to change the subject. No Jiko said. I highly doubt pirates would be welcomed into a town. Alvida agreed. This is a trap. No doubt about it. Jin said. Yeah. Zoro said without looking at them. And I think I know who they really are. He said before turning to them with a smirk. But they did say to enjoy ourselves. They all looked at each other with identical smirks before they joined everyone else. These pirates are a riot. Someone shouted as everyone was partying like there's no tomorrow. It was night and the straw hats were enjoying themselves. And so I told those sea kings come get some you bastards. Usopp said, causing everyone to be wowed by his tales. Check her out. She has all the men wrapped around her fingers. Someone shouted as Alvida had a group of men surrounding her. She smiled and winked at them all, truly enjoying being adored by everyone. This guy's wooing 20 girls at once. Another shouted as Sanji was surrounded by girls. He had hearts in his eyes and was very happy. Look at these two over here. One shouted as Luffy and Jin were eating. Luffy loved to eat, while Jin had a new appreciation for food after nearly starving. This scary guys had 10 plates, while the captains had 20. I give. Said the cook before passing out. Come. Said Igram. 
Join our little drinking contest. He said. It's tempting, but I'll pass. Nami said. Winner will receive 100,000 berries. Igram said as he pulled out a sack of money. Fill her up. Nami said before looking at Zoro. You too. Why me? He asked. No Jiko joined in the drinking as well, while Johnny and Yasaku were dancing around either with girls, chopsticks, or in circles. That's enough for me. Jin said as he fell back after 15 plates and belched. Luffy followed shortly after that. Never knew I could get this full. He said after around 30 plates. Spare us. Cried three more cooks. These three are out drinking everyone. Someone said as they saw Zoro and Nami drinking everyone under the table. He's won his tenth mug and the girls are both on their twelfth. This town is awesome. Usopp shouted. Let's never leave. Sanji said. I'm so pleased that you're all having such a wonderful time. Igram said before getting a dark look and whispering. Very pleased. While the party was going on, Vivi and Mr. Nine were submitting their report that they failed to get Whale meat but managed to draw on some pirates to steal from. I'm done. Zoro slurred before falling over after his 13th mug. No Jiko was out after 14 and Nami was still going. Is that all you got Zoro? Nami slurred. Wuss. Two drinkers left. Both women. The orange hair girl versus sister. Give it up child for your own sake. Said a woman in a nun outfit. Ha. Forget it. Nami said before laughing. Both then drunk before sister fell over. I'm done. She said. I win. Nami shouted with a laugh before falling with her eyes spinning. The money is mine. She mumbled. These two sure can dance. Someone shouted as Johnny and Yasaku finally passed out from dancing. One by one they were all asleep. Later that night, Igram aka Mr. Eight was meeting with Sister aka Miss Monday, and strong women with pink hair and tiny pigtails and tan skin, Mr. Nine, and Vivi. Why couldn't we have ambushed them at the harbor? Miss Monday asked. If we had, we wouldn't have had to feed them with what little food we had left. Good thing they didn't ask for whale meat. She said as she sent dark looks at Mr. Nine and Vivi. Hey, we tried. Mr. Nine protested. You want that meat so bad, go kill it yourself. Quiet all of you. Igram said as he pulled out Luffy's wanted poster. Take a look at this. What? 48 million berries. The trio shouted in disbelief. For those morons Mr. Nine said. Don't be stupid. Igram said as he put the poster away. Looks can be deceiving. That goes for cough mama I'm aaaaah all of you. Sorry. Miss Monday said as she rubbed the back of her head. No worries. They're trapped, which will please the boss. Igram said. For now, take all that they have from their ship. And what should we do with them? Miss Monday asked, which Mr. Nine suggested to kill them. Then the bounty will be cut by 30%. Igram said. You know how the government loves public executions. Now go and bring them here alive. Hold up. Someone said, getting their attention. Can you let them sleep a little longer? They've had a rough journey and deserve every wink. The four looked up to see six figures in the moonlight. Zoro, Johnny, Yasaku, Alvida, Jin, and Oji Ko were standing up on a rooftop looking down at them. Soon, a few of the townspeople ran out a door. Mr. Eight. Miss Monday. A few of the pirates escaped when we weren't looking. One shouted. They're up there. Vivi said. You little rats. Igram said with a scowl. You should have stayed asleep with your friends. The good swordsman never lets his guard down and never succumbs to drink. Zoro said before he stood up. Soon, all the townsfolk were gathered there with weapons and scowls. They look pissed big bro. Joni said with a chuckle. Yes that means the party's over huh? Yasaku asked with a smile. What do you mean? Jin said as he placed his tonfa over his shoulder and smirked at them all. I say it's just beginning. Looks like we were right in assuming this was all a trap. Alvida said. Seeing as how they planned on turning our captain in for his bounty, they can't be anything else but bounty hunters. No G. Ko added. Bro pirates a party, get them drunk, then steal them blind. Zoro said. It's original, I'll give you that. He said before looking around at them all. Looks like there's around 100 of you scumbags here. We'll gladly take you on. Sound good, Baroque works. How do you know who we are? Igram shouted in shock and horror. He and every bounty hunter there were now looking up at him with surprised expressions. You did mention that those codenames from before sounded familiar. Yasaku said. Simple. I used to be a bounty hunter myself. Your organization offered me a job, which I refused. Zoro said. That explains that. Alvida said as both groups stared at each other. Rules still the same? Zoro asked. Stupid codenames, no one knows who the other is, the boss man's name and location unknown to all of you. Baroque works. The criminal organization that blindly follows orders like obedient dogs. He said before he chuckled. Some secret. This is a surprise. 
Igram said in a calm voice. Since you know our secrets, we have no choice but to kill you. And the cactus rocks shall have a few more gravestones added to them tonight. He said before pointing at them. Kill them. He shouted before they all noticed that they disappeared. What? They're gone. Vivi whispered in disbelief. What are you looking at? Zoro asked as he looked up at the spot they were at just now, like he didn't know either. All of them looked at him with bulging eyes as he smirked. Zoro, along with the others, were all ready to fight them. So then shall we? Zoro was standing in the middle of a group of bounty hunters who turned their guns on him and fired, only for Zoro to disappear again and have them shoot each other. Idiots. Igram said before a blade was shoved through his hair right next to his eyes. Those gravestones you mentioned. Zoro said as he stood behind Igram holding the blade. Who are they for again? He asked as several bounty aimed their guns at him again. Wait. Stop. You'll shoot me. Igarapa. He shouted as he blew into his saxophone, which shot at the bounty hunters as Zoro disappeared again. He then looked around to see that all of the pirates were gone. What are you all standing around for? Spread out and find them. Yes Mr. Eight. They said. While they were splitting up, Zoro was watching from behind a house. What was that horn of his? He asked before he looked at his new blades. Well, I'll deal with him soon. First, I should test these two out. Jin was surrounded by a dozen of them somewhere else in town. He looked around as a few more joined in. Nowhere to run pirate. One of them said as he charged at him with his sword. He swung, only to miss as Jin had ducked under before smashing his back with his tonfa. Wasn't running. Jin said with a smirk before charging at them. Bet him. Another shouted before they all started fighting. Two with swords attacked from behind, but were blocked by Jin's tonfa before jump, kicking them both in the face. He landed on his back as he stared up into the sky to see another one jump from a rooftop towards him, blade ready to come down and pierce his body. Just before it struck, he rolled out of the way, leaving the bounty hunter to strike the ground, breaking his sword and leaving him open. Fist. Jin said before pulling out a gun and shooting him in the side. The bounty hunter fell to the ground as his accomplices rushed after Jin. Four down, more to go. He thought as he picked up his tonfa and began swinging them around again as the others charged at him once again. It's one guy. One shouted. Get him already. Soon, all were upon Jin, who only smirked before swinging both Tonfa as he spun in a circle, smashing everyone into the buildings on both sides of the building. He looked around at all the bodies before running off to help the others. Johnny and Yasaku were back to back against 20 of them, both looking a little nervous. That's a lot of them. Yasaku said. Yeah. Johnny replied. All the bounty were smirking at them both, which seemed to unnerve them both. What's wrong pirates? One of them said in a smug tone. Realizing how stupid it was to try to fight us. Both were sweating a bit until they heard clashing coming from a nearby rooftop. All of them looked to see Zoro effortlessly handling bounty hunters with his new swords. That guy might be a problem though. Still, we'll worry about him after we crush these two. Soon, all of them were ready to strike, not even noticing that both Johnny and Yasaku were lost in thought. Big bro. Both of them thought as they stared on in awe and slight shame. They then tightened their grip on their swords before facing the bounty hunters with determined looks ready to die? One of them asked. Both of them said nothing as they glared at them. Big bro was on the verge of death, yet he kept going. Johnny thought as images of his defeat at Mihik's blade and his fight at Arlung Park went through his mind. And us. Yasaku thought as he narrowed his eyes. We couldn't do anything. You're mine. One of the bounty hunters shouted as he ran at Johnny with his sword. I got this one. Another said as he ran at Yasaku. Both just stood there until Baroque work swung their blades and they ducked, causing both men to clash their blades against each other. That ends today. Both of them thought as they sliced both men, making them fall back unconscious. Ready partner? Johnny asked. Yeah. Yasaku said. One by one the bounty hunters ran at them, attacking from both sides. Duck. Johnny shouted. Both ducked to miss a sword before Johnny slashed the attacker. Roll. Yasaku yelled, making them roll to dodge a salvo of bullets. Both got to their feet before going back to back, as three hunters fell down from their bullet wounds. They looked around before noticing that they had more guns pointing at them. Run. Johnny said before they ran down an alley, splitting at a fork as the hunters split up and chased them. Johnny kept running until he spotted a few wooden barrels up ahead. Here we go. He thought as he jumped onto them to get to the roof while causing a barrel to fall off the top and knock one of them out. Crap. He's on the roof. One of them said in aggravation. Phew. Johnny said as he wiped some sweat from his forehead. That was close. Better find Yasaku. Hey Johnny. Zoro shouted from a few rooftops away. He was holding a few bounty hunters back with his swords, how you and Yasaku doing? I'm still alive big bro, but we got split up. Johnny shouted back. Look out. 
Zoro shouted as a shadow loomed over Johnny. And now you're gonna be split in two. Shouted a big man with a sword. Johnny looked up just in time to register what was happening before leaping out of the way. Leave this one to me. Help the others bring down that green-haired guy over there. He said. Right. They said before running off. Asshole. Johnny shouted, finally having enough before charging at him. The hunter just smirked before both began clashing their blades. Both were at a stalemate until they Johnny had his blade held up as the big guy pushed him along the rooftop and back against a wall. Shit. Johnny thought as the blade got closer. Give it up. The bounty hunter said with a grin. What makes you think a few pirates like you guys, he said before swatting Johnny's sword out of the way before bringing the blade down on him, leaving a bloody cut from his left shoulder to his his right ribs. Can take you us down. Johnny fumbled around trying to stay up, hand never losing his grip on his sword, before the guy kicked him hard in the stomach. Johnny landed on the other side of the roof before he lay there breathing hard. Johnny? Zoro said as he slashed a few more bounty hunters. You okay? Yeah? Johnny shouted as a trail of blood fell down his lips. Don't worry. He said as he struggled to stand. This guy's nothing. Ha 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 ha. Laughed the guy. Nothing huh? Then how come I having taken a scratch while well, you look like shit? Simple. Johnny said as he raised his sword, ready to fight again. Zoro was now watching his fight as he held his attackers off at the same time. Because I'm through playing around. Alright then. After I beat you, he's next. Said the man as he lifted his sword up to strike. Die. Those attacks hurt. Johnny thought. But I can't quit. Both men ran towards each other, ready to finish it. No matter what he thought before he dodged the blade and slashed his opponent. I will catch up to big bro. The bounty hunter just laid there as Johnny breathed heavily before dropping down to one knee and smiled. Nice job Johnny Zoro said as he was now standing over Johnny with his hand out to help him up. Thanks big, bro. Johnny said as he grabbed his hand and pulled himself up. What about the other guys that came after you? They can care of. He said with a grin as they both looked at the bleeding bodies on the other rooftop. Figures. Johnny said with a chuckle. There's two of them right here. Shouted another one from an incoming group of hunters. I got these guys. Go find Yasaku. Zoro said. Right. Johnny said before he ran off. Hope, he's alright. Had to see a wanted poster for a fat Alvita. They stared at it before Johnny reached into his jacket to pull out more wanted posters and sift through them until he found his copy of Alvita's. He then took both and ripped them to bits before letting it sail off with a wind before they both started walking away, making a mental note to never bring up her wanted poster. That bitch is fast with that knife. Said another bounty hunter as he held onto his bleeding hand. He and five others had surrounded no Ko, but were reduced to three as she waved a knife around in her right hand. Not fast enough boys. She said in a sweet voice. The three of them were glaring at her as she smiled at them all. I may not have brute strength like the other she thought. So I'll make up for it with speed and accuracy. Die. One of the female bounty hunters shouted as she ran at Noji Ko. Noji Ko just stood there until the last moment before dodging and quickly stabbing both of her hands to make her drop her blade. Just like picking tangerines. She thought. She couldn't help but remember back when Nami would come back from a voyage to drop off her latest haul of money. She and her would then drink to celebrate when she brought home a massive amount or have contests to see who could pick tangerines faster before Nami got more serious about robbing pirates to pay off Arlong. She had used these times to help her make a quick striking technique to disable the fishman if it ever came to that. Stand still. Shouted the last two bounty hunters as they both charged at her while the woman tried to aim a gun with her wrecked hands. She dodged both no G Co made two quick stabs at their necks, severing their jugulars before they both bled to death. She calmly walked over to the woman who had dropped her gun before placing her foot on it and kicking her unconscious with the other. Phew. Glad that's over with. She said before walking off. Back in the bar, Sanji and Usopp were both sleeping while Nami was searching around for any treasure they may have had. While she was looking, Luffy had woken up as well to take care of any bounty hunters in case things went south for his friends during their fight. After sensing that most were all taken care of, he went to take a piss. Earlier in the fight, Zoro was testing out his new swords Yubashiri and Kitetsu 3. Yubashiri was light and sharp, which he liked, while Kitetsu 3 slashed enemies against his will. Knock it off Kitetsu 3. You're sharp, but you only cut when I want you to. Got it. He said as an eerie purple glint was given off the blade and across Zoro's eyes. He looked around to see that no more hunters were coming his way. Looks like the others took care of the rest. The just leaves he said before he quickly ducked to avoid getting hit with a ladder. That was close. He said as Miss Monday placed some brass knuckles on her hand before pinning Zoro to the roof. Shit. Beat this. She said as she raised her fist into the air. Big bro. 
shouted Johnny and Yasaku as they and the others regrouped where it all started. Superhuman, fist. She shouted before bringing her fist down onto Zoro's skull, smashing the roof in several places. It took a while be cough my maaah, but he's finally down. Igram said. Good. Mr. Nine said. Now we can focus on these five right here. They stared at Jin, Johnny, Yasaku, Alvita, and OG Ko, who looked back at them ready to fight. Ah! Screamed Miss Monday. Everyone looked up to see her on her knees and at Zoro's mercy. Where's all that strength you were boasting about? Zoro asked as he tightened his grip on her skull until she passed out. Phew. Don't scare us like that. Johnny said. All right then. Zoro said as he glared at them with a grin and licked the blood coming down his head. Who's next? This is impossible. Vivi said. This Monday. Shouted Mr. Nine. She's never lost in a battle of strength. It seems we've made a mistake. Igram said as he looked up at Zoro as well. That swordsman must be the captain. Indeed. Though it's strange to think the marines would give a high bounty to such a weak person as that bloated kid. Vivi said. Either way, we must capture him. Igram said. Hey. Shouted a voice. You forget about us. Everyone looked to see Jin, Johnny, Yasaku, Noji Ko, and Alvita smirking at them all. HMPH. Vivi said with a grin. Don't think that we'll be easy as easy to beat as everyone else. We're number agents. Mr. Nine bragged. We're a cut above the rest of the fools you've brought down. And the smaller the number, the higher the rank and power they have. Shut up and fight already. Jin said, tired of hearing them talk too much. Igram looked annoyed as he brought his saxophone to his lips. Watch out. Zora yelled. Igarapa. Igram shouted as he blasted at them. All but Alvita moved to escape the bullets, which slid off her body. Huh? He said in confusion. Nice try. Alvita said as her cowboy hat shattered her eyes. But attacks like that can't even touch me. TCH. Igram said. We'll deal with you later. After the rest of them. He shouted. Hum Karu. Vivi shouted with a whistle. Quack. Karu said from a distance. I meant get over here. She shouted before mounting the giant duck. After them. She said, only to hit him for sitting down. Are you guys serious about fighting? Zoro asked. Shouldn't you be keeping an eye on your opponent? Mr. Nine asked from above him before backflipping down the building towards him. Get ready for my bloody bats. He shouted as he tried to hit Zoro with a metal bat. His tone changed however when Zoro kept him on his toes with only one sword. Is that all? He asked. I'm just getting started. He shouted before jumping backwards and off the building by accident. Ah. He shouted before falling and crashing into the ground. That was it. He asked. There's more. Vivi said as she appeared on the roof of the building and was standing on Karu. Hey, don't forget about us big bro. Johnny shouted as he was joined by all the others. Oh, a bigger audience huh? She said in a conceited voice. No matter. Behold, she said as she started dancing with perfume coming out of her hands. My perfume dance. Everyone watch in either boredom or confusion before they were all on their knees at the smell of the perfume. And now, Peacock Slasher. Go Karu. She shouted as she spun a blade on a string on her pinky. Hair ran toward them, then past them. You're going too far Karu. She shouted before they both fell of the building. Are they even fighting anymore? Jin asked. That was weird. No G Ko said before they all heard a horn sound and jumped out of the way of Igram's attack. Everyone jumped off the roof either through a hole in the roof or off the roof directly. They got away, but it won't save them. He said. That horn makes things worse. Zoro said as he and the others were hiding behind the same building. Any ideas big bro? Yasaku said. Jaya. Mr. Nine shouted as he popped out of the rubble he landed in and glared at them all. I've had enough of being humiliated by you pirates. You jumped off yourself. Zoro said in a bored tone. Beat this. Home run sneaky bat. He shouted before launching the tip of his metal bat towards Zoro and wrapping one of his arms in a chain. Whatcha gonna do now? He asked with a grin. Pick your ass. Zoro said. Looks like we get to sit this one out. Alvita said with a frown. Johnny and Yasaku looked at her, knowing that she was still on edge about earlier. Don't try anything. Vivi said as she held a knife at Luffy, who was sleeping away peacefully. One move out of you and he dies. All of them looked at him as she and Mr. Nine laughed. That idiot. Zoro said before he noticed Luffy open his eye at him and smile before closing it again. Big bro. Wake up. Shouted Johnny and Yasaku in unison. Luffy sat up with his eyes half opened as he looked around, then at Vivi. I wouldn't move if I were you. She said as she held the blade at him. Luffy looked at her, then at his crew before a smile came across his face. Sleepy. He said before he rolled over onto Vivi and started snoring. Aya. She screamed as her legs were now under a giant ball called Luffy. 
Get off me you bloated buffoon. She yelled as she went to stab him with her knife. Iron body. Luffy whispered as Vivi's knife broke off in her hand. Carrie just looked on and quacked in anger. Everyone just stared at the scene for a long time before Johnny and Yasaku burst into laughter. Even asleep, big bro Luffy's winning this fight. Johnny said as tears were forming at the edge of his eyes. Yasaku laughed alongside him while the rest just rubbed their foreheads. Still, none of them could fight the smiles that came to their faces. Vivi was now turning red at this humiliation before looking at her comrades. Mr. 8. Mr. 9. Do something. She shouted. After we take care of that swordsman. Igram said as several guns came out of his hair. He's the one we should must kill before we can attack the rest. Firing squad ready. Kill him Mr. 8. Mr. 9 shouted. Bigura Papa. He shouted as his hair guns fired at Zoro. More guns Zoro grunted as he pulled the chain, flinging Mr. 9 into the way of the bullets. He then swung him around like a wrecking ball before throwing him back at Mr. 8, causing him to crash into him and end the fight. Nice shot big bro. Yusaku said as Zoro walked over and sat with him. It was boring. He said. They couldn't put up a decent fight. Still, you guys look like you've had your fair share of fights. He said as he looked at Johnny and Yusaku's bleeding bodies and Alvita's bloody mace. Get off me. Vivi shouted, now sounded a little desperate. We'll help you. No G. Ko said as she walked up towards her. But you're not going anywhere. She said before they heard a faint boom in the distance. Wonder what that was. She thought. Two minutes later, Mr. 8, Mr. 9, Miss Monday, and a tied up Vivi were now surrounded by the winning straw hats, who were now wondering what to do with them. You cursed pirates. Igram said as he struggled to get up. We will not be beaten so easily. Stop yapping already. Jin said. You've lost. Hey, Luffy. Zoro said to his captain, who was still pretending to sleep. What should we do with them? Why are you asking me? He said as he sat up. You guys were the ones who beat them. You were awake. Johnny asked. Why didn't you fight? Yasaku said. And take all the fun from you guys. Luffy said with a grin before he noticed Alvita's grim expression. You okay? He asked. She just looked at him before looking back at the ground. I'm fine. She mumbled. Luffy just looked at her confused but didn't ask why when he noticed Johnny and Yasaku waving their hands and shaking their heads, clearly telling him to drop the subject. Well now, isn't this a sad sight? Someone said. Everyone looked up to see a man in a brown trench coat with a five on it, sunglasses, and his hair in dreadlocks. Hiya ha ha ha. Laughed the woman next to him. She had blonde hair, white heels, an umbrella, a yellow hat covering her hair, and green eyes. Who are you two? No G. Ko asked, but got her answer from someone else. Mr. Five. Miss Valentine's Day. Igram croaked out. Why are you here? This is perfect. Mr. Nine said. With you two here, these pirates won't stand a chance. Indeed. Vivi said. Help us show them why it's foolish to mess with Baroque works. Stop with the jokes. Mr. Five said. You really think we came all the way here to the front of the Grand Line to hold you hand? Miss Valentine's Day said. If you're not here to help, then why are you here? Igram asked. Simple. The boss sent us here on a mission. Mr. Five said. He said someone's found out my secret. And you all know that it's against our organization's code to know anything about anyone else in Baroque works. I don't know, nor do I care about the secrets that our boss has. So we decided to investigate and you'll never guess what we've lingered. Miss Valentine's Day said with a smile. All of them listened while Nami listened from the shadows. We've learned that two of Baroque Works' number agents are spies from a distant kingdom. He knows. Igram thought as Mr. Nine stated his crown was a hobby. He then jumped up and started firing at the two of them. Papa, He shouted. So long as I Igram, Captain of Alabasta's Royal Guard breathe, you will not harm the princess. Igram, Captain of Alabasta's Royal Guard. Mr. Five said as the smoke cleared with him holding a picture of Vivi. And Vivi Nefertari, Princess of the Royal Kingdom of Alabasta. By order of Mr. Zero, both of you are to die. What is that guy? Yasaku yelled. Simple. I'm a bomb man who ate the bomb bomb fruit. Mr. Five explained. So your boogers explode? Johnny asked. Any part of me can explode. And explosions don't hurt me at all. Mr. Five said with a smirk. Hiya ha ha ha. That's what he gets for playing hero. Miss Valentine's Day laughed. Everyone just stared as the smoke cleared, revealing an unharmed and smiling Luffy. What? You're okay. Johnny yelled in relief. He took those explosions like they were nothing. Thought Vivi, Igram, Mr. Nine and Miss Monday. Guess your bomb powers are as strong as you thought. Alvita said, sounding a little less angry. What kind of trick did you pull? Mr. Five asked in equal disbelief. I just used Iron Body. He said, confusing everyone around. Iron Body? Noji Ko asked. 
It's one of a few powerful techniques dubbed the six powers. Luffy said. I'll show you guys while taking these two down. Six powers. Most of them said. Yeah. Watch this. Luffy said. Shave. He said before disappearing. Before anyone knew what happened, Mr. Five and his partner were rammed into a far-off building. He knew his crew could beat them no problem, but he wanted to demonstrate how powerful he was. And he also had a hint of resentment towards them for interfering with the fight between the giants. Whoa. That's fast. Mr. Nine said. Soon after, the building erupted in multiple explosions. Through the smoke, they saw Miss Valentine's Day floating high in the air. She's flying. Jin asked. Ayahaha. Nope. I ate the kilo kilo fruit. I can change my weight from 1 to 10,000 kilograms in an instant. She bragged. Princess. Igram whispered to Vivi from where he lay. Please, you must run. If you die, the kingdom is lost. Thanks for the exercise. Luffy said as he walked out of the smoking building, dragging a beaten Mr. Five out with him. Help me digest all that food. No way. He beat Mr. Five so easily Mr. Nine said. Impossible. Miss Valentine's Day thought. He doesn't even have a scratch on him. Still, they seem distracted, so I'll use this chance to crush Miss Wednesday into dust. She thought with a smirk as she floated above her prey. Luffy was the only one who noticed and decided to scare her. Hey. He shouted, getting her attention and making everyone else look up. Going somewhere? He shouted before he started running towards her. Crap. He saw me. She thought before smiling. Whatcha gonna do? Fly up here. She said. How'd you guess? Luffy said before he started running up towards her in the sky. Moonwalk. He's really flying. Johnny and Yasaku shouted. You've gotta be kidding me. Miss Valentine's Day shouted, shocked that he was running up at her. That's something you don't see every day. Said a voice. Everyone turned to see Nami sitting up on the roof of a building. About time you joined us. No G Ko said with a grin as Nami looked down at Vivi. So you're a princess huh? She asked. Why yes. Vivi said. And right now, I have to get back home. But what about the rest of Baroque works? Alveda asked. I don't think they'll stop even when Luffy beats those two. I don't care. She said. I have to, or everything will have been for nothing. If that's the case, we'll gladly escort you home. Nami said. We just ask for a small fee for our services. One billion berries. A billion? She and Igram said in unison. Isn't that a bit much? Jin asked. What? Nami said with a smile. She's royalty. Surely you have that much, don't you? How's he doing that? Zoro said, getting everyone to look where he was. Miss Valentine's Day was now on the ground and running away from Luffy. Doing what? Yasaku asked. Tempest kick. Luffy shouted before kicking at the woman, sending what looked like a flying blade at her. She ducked just before it hit, leaving the attack to go through a building. Nothing happened at first, but the building slowly slid in half where his attack hit. What are you? She shouted, now terrified of Luffy to the point of crawling away from him. Just really strong. He said with a smile. He looked down at her as that feeling came again. This is humiliating. Mr. Five said as he struggled to stand up and glare at Luffy before charging at him. He was rolling up his sleeves with the intent of hitting Luffy with another bomb punch. He was close enough and threw a punch, only for Luffy to bend and avoid it. Paper art. Luffy said before spinning around and smashing his elbow into his face, knocking him out cold. Oh right big bro. Johnny cheered. Luffy stood there before looking down at Miss Valentine's Day. And you? He asked as he gave her a cold glare. She stared back in fear before looking at Mr. Five. She then sighed and lowered her head. I give up. After restraining Miss Valentine's Day, everyone left the battleground to sit and talk to Vivi. So you're really a princess? Mr. Nine asked. Yes. I'm Vivi Nerfatari, princess of the Kingdom of Alabasta. Vivi said, now looking like how Luffy remembered her, without a stuck-up look in her bangs in front of her forehead. So what's a princess doing working for an underground organization? Zoro asked. Bored with the life of royalty? It's not that. She said with a sad tone. She then told them about how her country was in a civil war, which was slowly leading the country into self-destruction, how she decided to do something about which led to her, and her companion Igaram infiltrated Baroque works to find out who was pulling the strings behind for the past two years. You're pretty tough for a princess. Zoro said. He remembered what Luffy told them all earlier about what the royal family from his home island did and couldn't help but respect her. So, what is it that they're planning? At first, it was an ideal nation. Igram said as they looked at him. But that was a lie. Vivi said. Its real goal is to take over Alabasta. If I don't return home and warn my people, it'll be too late. That's the real reason. Miss Valentine's Day said. Yes. Vivi replied. Whatever you've been told was probably a lie. Shit. 
she said, now looking upset at being lied to. S you wouldn't have much money with your country as it is. Nami said. So who's behind the whole thing? Alveda asked. The boss Vivi shrieked. Don't ask. So that's the secret Mr. Zero was talking about. Miss Valentine's Day thought. So you do know huh? Jin said. Yes, but you shouldn't ask. Vivi shouted. Then we'll drop it. Nami said laughing nervously. If this guy's trying to take over a whole country, then I'd rather not get on his bad side. No one would. Vivi said. No matter how strong you all are, you'd be no match for one of the seven warlords. Not against Crocodile. Everyone stared at her for a few moments as they let it sink in. Luffy wanted to laugh at Vivi's slip of the tongue. Crocodile. Luffy said, causing Vivi and Nami to turn wide as she covered her mouth. Wow you've got a big mouth. Zoro said before everyone noticed an otter and a vulture looking down at them before flying away. Nami went ballistic and began shaking Vivi by her jacket and yelling at her, while Vivi kept saying she was sorry. Hey warlord. Miss Valentine's Day, Miss Monday, and Mr. Nine said in utter horror. You've gotta be kidding me. Alveda said as she covered her eyes with her hand in frustration. A-H-H. Big bro, what's wrong? Johnny screamed while Yasaku panicked. Everyone looked to see that Jin had fallen over with a smile on his face, which was slowly turning blue. It hasn't even been a full fucking day. He said in shock. First Mihik, now another one. All of the crew looked at him, knowing that hearing that they have a warlord on their backs was bringing back some bad memories. This can't be happening. That's not good. No G Ko said as Nami kept going ape shit on Vivi before covering her eyes and crying. This can't be happening. She said. What do you know? A warlord huh? Zoro said with a grin. Sounds like fun. Luffy said. Shut up. Nami shouted before she started walking away and dragging No G Ko along. Nice knowing you guys. She shouted back. Where are you two going? Yusaku asked. They don't know what we look like, so the two of us are out of here. She said before she noticed the otter from before had come back. He then showed a drawn picture for each of them present. Hey, that's pretty good. Nami said before they both flew away and she screamed back at them. Now we can't run anywhere. That seemed to have been the last straw before she curled up into a ball on the ground and cried. I've got around 500,000 in my savings if you'd like. Vivi told her, trying to make her feel better. This is not good. Johnny said to Zoro. You and brother captain are strong, but I don't think it'll be enough to beat a warlord. Luffy smirked under his hat, knowing that he could kick Crocodile's ass all day if he wanted. This is nuts. Mr. Nine shouted. What do we do now? Baroque Works has over 2,000 people in it. We can't fight them. Calm down. Igram said as he stood up. I've got an idea. Ten minutes later, Igram and everyone were now near a ship that was ready to sail off. So your plan is to sail off dressed as the princess with all these dummies to act as a decoy? Zoro asked. Correct. Igram said as Miss Monday and Mr. Nine were beside him. And you too. Vivi asked. Like I said, you and I are friends. Miss Monday said with a smile. And you've been my partner in crime, so to speak. Mr. Nine said. The three of us will sail to Alabasta directly, while you and these pirates take the indirect island hopping route. He said. Hold it. We haven't agreed to take anyone anywhere. Nami said. And we still haven't talked about payment. We'll do it. Luffy said with a smile. Crocodile might be after us already. Nami shouted. How dangerous is this crocodile? Noji Ko asked. He's one of the seven warlords. Igram said. Before he became one though, his bounty was up to 80 million. That's four times Arlong's bounty. Nami yelled. No way. Okay. Luffy said, making Nami almost cry and the rest of the crew look at him from either blank to disbelief. We are eternally grateful. Igram said before humming some scales and talking a bit higher. Now I, Vivi, shall take my leave. Nice imitation. Luffy said. Not really. Most of them thought. Of what? Zoro asked. Now Princess Vivi, please give me the eternal pose. Igram said. Vivi looked at him with sad eyes before giving him the eternal pose. What's an eternal pose? Nami asked. You don't know? Igram asked. It's like a permanent version of a log pose. He said holding up an hergla shaped pose. The log pose points you to the next island. An eternal pose always points to the same island no matter where you are. This one is to our home county of Alabasta. And you three will head home this way? Vivi asked worriedly. Yes. Please take the indirect route home Princess Vivi. Igram said in a quiet voice. I've never gone that way, but it should only be two or three islands until Alabasta. He then looked at Luffy. Please, take care of the princess in my absence. You got it. Luffy said with a smile. All of you. Vivi said as she looked at the three who were about to sail away. I expect your journey to be a harsh one. 
Igram said with a calm voice and gentle smile. Please be careful. I will. She said as they shook hands. Take care of yourself. Miss Monday said as she patted Vivi's head like a small child. Bye bye baby. Mr. Nine said as he placed his hand on her shoulder before they started towards the boat. Hey, wait a moment. Johnny said. What about this one? Yasaku said. Everyone looked to see Miss Valentine's Day still sitting on the ground, her hands and feet tied with rope. That's a good question. Igram said. Stay here and hope Baroque Works forgets about her? Johnny asked. No. All of the ex-Baroque Work members said. They knew Crocodile would leave no loose strings. Flee on a ship. Jin said. There's 2,000 people that she'd be running from. Mr. Nine said. Well if you can't stay or flee, Luffy said. Why not come with us? Huh? All of them said. Did you forget that she was sent here to kill Vivi? Alvita said. I know that. Luffy said. But now the people who sent her here want her dead too, right? Everyone just stared, unable to argue with that logic. You'd seriously let me on your ship? She asked in equal disbelief. It's not like you've got any other options. Luffy said. She just stared at him, then looked down in thought. She remained like that for a moment before sighing. Yes I really don't have a choice then. She said with a grim look. Please can I join you guys? She said. Okay. Luffy said before they untied her and gave her umbrella back to her. Be careful. Igram said. She's not to be trusted. Don't worry. Luffy said. If she tries something I'll sit on her. Huh? She said as some of the crew tried not to laugh while Vivi glared at Luffy, clearly still angry about earlier. Right. We're off then. Igram said as they sailed away. Princess Vivi, I wish you safe travels and hope we meet again in our home country. He thought. I like those three. Luffy said. Weirdos, all of them. Nami said. But nice weirdos. No G. Ko said as they all started walking away. Boom. Everyone turned around to see that the ship that just left had exploded in a bright light and was now engulfed in flames. What just happened? Alvita shouted. Are they already here? Nami asked. Luffy picked up his hat that was blown off before turning to them all. We're leaving now. He ordered as most of them started running. Nami, how's the log pose? Zoro asked. It's ready. She said after looking. At the girl. He said. Both Nami and Noji Ko ran back to get Vivi, who didn't budge an inch. Come on Vivi. Nami shouted before they both noticed that Vivi was biting her lip as a tiny trail of blood was calming down her lip. Both of them hugged her before telling her that they had to go now or they'll be dead as well. Vivi finally ran with them as they all headed towards the ship. Luffy, get the others. Zoro said. The rest of us will get the ship ready. Got it. Luffy yelled back before running off to get his friends. While he was running, he used his hockey to check on the three in the boat, glad to sense them. While he did that, he picked up on another person in the wreckage. One that was a foe now, but would be a friend in the future. After finding Usopp and Sanji sleeping where they had their party, Luffy grabbed them and dragged them all the way to the ship. Wake up guys. We gotta go. I won't leave him. Vivi said as they all got ready to sail off. What's wrong with her? Zoro asked. She said she won't leave without her duck. No Jiko answered. You mean this duck? Jin asked as he pointed a Karu on the ship. He's already here. The three women shouted. Been here before we got here. Alvita said. As they were departing, Usopp and Sanji came to and argued about staying a bit longer. Nami explained the situation with her fists before they sailed away. Looks like the fog's lifting. Nami said. Glad we're away from those people chasing us. Came a voice. Right. Nami said. Careful of the rocks. Said the voice. I've got it handled. Nami said before she noticed something amiss. Hey did one of you say that? She asked as she pointed to the other woman on board. They all looked at her confused before the voice cleared her throat. Everyone looked up to the railing to see a woman sitting on the railing and looking down at them all with a smile. Robin. Luffy thought with a smile. It was great to see her again, even if she's their enemy at the moment. This is a nice ship. She said. Vivi and Miss Valentine's Day gasped in horror at the sight of her. Who are you? Luffy asked. And why are you on my ship? Answer him. Vivi shouted. What are you doing here Miss All Sunday? Miss All Sunday? Jin asked. Then she's in Baroque Works as well huh? That's right. Robin said. And I happen to have met a few friends of yours along the way princess. So you killed them, Vivi shouted in anger. Whose partner is she with? Alvita asked. Mr. Zero. Miss Valentine's Day answered, now looking a little blue in the face. Crocodile's Nami shouted. Yes. Vivi said. We followed her to her boss. That's how we found out who he was. Correction. I allowed you to follow me. She said before looking at Miss Valentine's Day. And who do we have here? Robin asked. 
another traitor. She said, making her squeak in fear. I know you knew. Vivi said. You told him we were there, didn't you? While they were talking, Johnny and Yasaku were looking at her like they were trying to remember something. Hey. Johnny whispered. Doesn't she seem familiar to you? Yeah. Yasaku whispered back. But from where? Both pondered for a moment before they heard Vivi scream. You killed the EM. Both of them, along with the rest of the crew besides Luffy, pointed their weapons at her. You have any idea what's going on? Usopp asked. Not a clue. Sanji said as he held a gun up to her. I'd appreciate it if you would, she said with a smile before Usopp and Sanji were thrown off the railing. Not point those at me. You mean? Zoro said. She's eaten. Nami said before she and all the rest of the crew were disarmed faster than they could blink. The devil fruit. Zoro finished. But which one? Nami asked before Sanji looked up at her with hearts in his eyes. Now that I see her, she's beautiful. He said, making her chuckle at his words. Actually, he's right. Luffy thought as he smiled before his hat was lifted from his head and was now in Robin's hand. So you're the captain? She said. I've heard so much about you monkey T. Luffy. Hey. Luffy yelled before he appeared right next to her on the railing, making her look up at him in surprise. Only my friends and crew may touch my hat. He said as he took his hat back. She smiled at him and raised her hands in defense. I apologize then. She said as Luffy jumped back down to his crew. You are not welcome here. Please leave now. Usopp shouted from behind the mast. Still, you seem to have a bit of bad luck. Robin continued, not bothering what Usopp said. To pick up a princess marked for death by Baroque works. And with only a handful of pirates to protect her no less. But the bad luck doesn't stop there. Do you happen to know where your log pose is taking you? No. Where? No G. Ko asked with a glare. The place called Little Garden. Robin answered back. It'd be foolish to let yourselves be wiped out, right princess? She said before throwing her something. Vivi caught it and saw that it was an eternal pose. If you use that, you'll bypass Little Garden and head straight to an island that none of Baroque works know about. It's also very close to Alabasta as well. Nope. Luffy said, breaking it immediately. You jerk. Nami screamed. She went out of her way to give you us an easier path. Would you do that? Because I'm the captain. He said with a blank look as he looked at Robin. I decide where we go, not you. I don't care if you're being nice. Nice. Vivi said, looking angry. After killing Igaram and the others, you think she's nice. She must be, since all three of them are alive. Luffy said. What? She said. Robin was just surprised. That hockey of yours Luffy. Zoro said knowingly. Yep. They're faint, but I can hear them. Luffy said. Hmm. Robin said with a smile. Interesting how you knew. You mean they really are alive? Vivi asked in a hopeful voice. Who knows? Robin said as she walked towards the railing on the side of the ship. They might have survived or not. Either way, if they go to Alabasta, they'll be killed anyway. She said before jumping off the side of the ship. Everyone ran to the side to see her sitting on top of a giant turtle. If you survive, let's meet again. She said before the turtle swam away. Can someone tell me what's going on? Usopp asked. They then explained the whole situation to him and Sanji, who missed everything. Looks like I missed all the fun. Sanji said. But now that I'm here, I'll protect you Vivi. I'm glad I missed the whole thing. Usopp said. Um everyone. Vivi said. Is it really alright for me to travel with you all? She said. It's a little late for that kind of thinking. Nami said as she poked her forehead with her finger. If you didn't want to cause us any trouble, you shouldn't have told us anything. Right Luffy. Don't worry about it. He said. How can he bow so calm? Most of them thought. Anyway. Sanji, make us some food. Luffy shouted. Right. He said before looking back at the two new beauties on the ship. And what would you both like? He said with hearts in his eyes. Huh? Me? Miss Valentine's Day said. I'm good. By the way, what's your name? Noji Ko asked. My name? She said. It's Valerie. Welcome aboard Valerie. Luffy said. Welcome indeed Miss Valerie. Sanji swooned. So Luffy. Zoro said. How'd you do all that crap back there anyway? The six powers. Luffy said. A lot of training. I'll teach you guys if you want. Sounds like fun. Zoro said. But I only saw five powers. Oh right. Luffy said. Last one is called the finger pistol. You want finger pistol? He said. Right. Now then, off to little garden pirates. Luffy shouted. Aye. Shouted his crew. Some time had passed after they all left Whiskey Peak. 
Johnny and Yasaku were fishing, Luffy was wanting Sanji to make food, Sanji was passing out drinks to the ladies, Vivi was looking at everyone doing whatever they wanted to do, and the rest were carefully watching Valerie to make sure she didn't pull anything. Through the ranting for food, Luffy finally noticed one was missing. Hey guys. He said. Where's Alvita? She went below deck. Usopp said as he sat down on the railing next to Johnny and Yasaku to fish with them. Great. Sanji said in love mode. I've got a drink made just for her right here. He cheered before running towards the door. Wait big bro. Johnny said, making Sanji stop before he could touch the door. I don't think it's a good idea to talk to her. He said as he stared out at sea. Huh? Sanji asked. What's wrong? Luffy asked. Well, we went to talk to her a moment ago, but we think she wishes to be left alone. Yasaku said, not looking at any of them. What makes you say that? Jin asked. Both of them looked at everyone, revealing swollen faces covered in scratches. Just a hunch. They said in unison through busted lips. Everyone just sweat dropped at the sight of them. Luffy had a blank face before he walked towards the door. I'll go talk to her. He said, going through the door faster than any of them could protest. He walked below deck and looked around for a moment before spotting Alvita sitting quietly on a box with her head down. He took a few steps towards her, but stopped just out of range as she swung her mace at him without even looking up. Go away. She said in a quiet voice. You okay? He asked. I'm fine. She said in an irritated tone. Luffy kept a blank look but didn't budge. He just sat down with his arms crossed. He stayed that way for a few moments before Alvita finally got fed up and glared at him. What do you want? I want to know what's wrong. He said. I told you captain, I'm fine. She said. Then why are your eyes red and puffy? Luffy asked. Alvita kept glaring at him as he looked back at her. She finally turned her back on him and crossed her own arms. It's nothing. She said. It was quiet, but Luffy could hear the change in her tone from angry to sad. He stood up, walked over to her, and sat on the same box next to her. If it was really nothing, you wouldn't be crying would you? He asked. She didn't say anything as they both sat there in the dark. The sound of the waves rocking the ship was all they heard for a few moments before Luffy closed his eyes sighed. Alright, I'll leave. He said as he started walking away. I thought it would end. She said. Luffy stopped walking and looked back at her. End? He said. Alvita looked back at him with a sad look inside. Remember when our paths first crossed? She asked. Yeah. He said, remembering seeing her as a giant ball of fat with legs. After you sent me flying, I landed in the ocean. She continued. It took a while, but I had managed to swim to an island. Wow. You must have been a good swimmer. Luffy said. Every pirate should be able to swim. She said in a deadpan voice. After I finally got to shore, I couldn't stop thinking of you and how you defeated me so easily. If it hadn't been for your rubber powers, I'd have killed you instantly. Not likely. Luffy said. Rubber or not, I wouldn't have been beaten so easily. Hmm. She said. Still, after I got to that island, I wandered around aimlessly while breaking everything within range of my mace. I hated you for defeating my crew, for defeating me, for she said, looking like it was difficult to keep talking. For what? Luffy asked. For insulting me. She snapped. And so Luffy said. That's a lady Kobe. He remembered as she regained herself. That really hurt you know. She said. Sorry about that. Luffy said. Alvita just shook her head. Forget it. You're not the first one to insult me about that. She said. Luffy just looked at her with a blank look again before he realized something. Hey, wait a minute. Does that mean you knew that you were well Luffy said. Did, I couldn't even see my own feet. She said. I couldn't deny it, no matter how many times I had my crew tell me otherwise I knew I was fat. Ah. Luffy said. So, what happened on that island again? Well, I kept on attacking everything that was Klossaby while cursing your name. She said. After a few hours, I finally got tired and sat down to rest. I started planning my revenge on you, but something caught my eye. It was under some shrubs, but I saw it. A mango, blue in color with swirls all over it. A devil fruit. Luffy said. Yeah. Alvita said. I thought it might be, but I wasn't sure. I'd never seen one before until that moment. I just kept staring at it, wondering if it was the real thing. At that moment however, all I could think about was you and how it was a devil fruit that helped you beat me. That was when I decided that if I ever wanted to beat you, eating that fruit was my best chance. So you ate it? Luffy knowingly asked. Right then and there. She said before she had a grim look. But the moment it hit my tongue she said before shuddering. Tastes like shit right? Luffy said, remembering the taste like he ate it just moments ago. That's an understatement. It was rancid. She said in disgust. 
nothing happened at first, but then I felt it. Never before had I felt so strange in my entire life. As fast as the feeling came, it left. I looked down at myself and nearly had a heart attack. I just couldn't believe it, but I had become slippery and beautiful. I'll say. Luffy said. She smiled at him for saying that. Wait, where did that come from? Luffy thought before he remembered why he came down here in the first place. So why are you sad? He asked. She just looked at him before standing up and picking up her mace. Those bounty hunters at Whiskey P. Creeley pushed my buttons. She said. You have buttons? He asked. Like a robot. He asked with a hint of excitement. She just stared at him before laughing at his stupidity. No, you idiot. She said. When I was fighting them, one of them asked if I had a sister named Alveda. Huh? Luffy said. But you're Alveda. I know but they didn't believe me, even when I told them I was. She said before she tightened her grip on her mace. But they just laughed before one of them brought out my wanted poster. You know what they said to me? She asked, looking a little angry. No. What? He said you're actually admitting to being this fat sack of crap. Before laughing again. She said. The person in that poster she snarled before lifting her mace into the air. Is not me anymore. She yelled. Luffy took his hat off before the mace smacked him to the other side of the room. He knew what she was gonna do thanks to his hockey, but let it happen since it lacked killing intent. She was now breathing hard and was trembling before she dropped her mace and dropped to her knees. Luffy looked up at her from where he lay to notice her eyes were starting to well up. Even though, she started as Luffy stood up and walked towards. I'm finally beautiful, nothing's change. She sat there and let the tears fall before she felt herself caught in a hug. Huh? Forget the past. Luffy said. Who you were back then was back then. They both stayed that way before Alveda slowly hugged back and buried her face in Luffy's shoulder and quietly cried. She cried while Luffy gently rubbed her back until she stopped. Feel better? Yeah. She said as she wiped her eyes. Thank you Luffy. Shishishishi. Luffy laughed as they both stood up. She smiled at him before the whole ship was rocked around, knocking them both off balance and onto the floor. Luffy? Jin shouted as he ran down to the storage room. There's a giant dolphin he shouted until he saw Luffy on his back and Alveda lying on top of him. Am I interrupting something? You saw nothing. Alveda said as stood up blushing. Luffy got up and picked up his hat before looking at Jin. What's wrong? He asked, causing Jin to shake his head. We need some help up here, that's what. He shouted. A huge dolphin came out of nowhere, and now we're trying not to sink. All right. Let's go Alveda. Luffy shouted as he ran up the stairs. Alveda just stood there looking at the doorway before a smile crept up to her face. Forget the past huh? That's what I'll do then. She said before running up and joining her crew in trying to keep the ship from capsizing. Everyone was running around and keeping the ship afloat while riding the wave the giant dolphin created. Nami shouted out orders, and everyone obeyed before an island was seen in the distance. Look everyone. Usopp shouted. I see an island. And the log pose is pointing towards it. Nami yelled. That must be Little Garden. Our second island in the Grand Line. Luffy shouted. Let's go. Yeah. Everyone shouted. I think I'll be able to see a warrior's battle again. Luffy thought with excitement before he remembered what happened. Hope I can keep three from budding in this time. A few days earlier on Holiday Island. Mr. Three. Said a young girl with pigtails. One moment. Said a man with his hair fashioned to look like a three on top of his head. Ah, Earl Grey truly is a grand tea. I'm bored. Said the girl. You're bored, yet you do nothing. Mr. Three said. You also find work boring as well. Why not enjoy your free time from your duties like me? Also, don't call me by my codename Miss Golden Week. If you do, people will discover I'm Mr. Three. Is that so? Miss Golden Week said in a bored tone. By the way, you've been staring at that paper for a few days now. What is it? He asked. Orders from the boss. She said holding up a piece of paper. Tell me these things sooner. He shouted before taking the orders. So Mr. Five was defeated huh? And Miss Valentine has been marked as a traitor and is to be eliminated as well. Ah, if only Mr. Two could have been wiped out. Then we'd be promoted. Miss Goldenweek said in the same tone. Quite. Still, nothing to be worried about if it's only Mr. Five. He was overconfident in his abilities. Without proper training of one's devil fruit, one is nothing but complete garbage. He said as he finished his tea. Only a true criminal uses his mind to carry out his orders. Let us show them what it truly means to mess with a criminal organization. Present. Everyone was looking around at the island's thick foliage as they sailed inland down a river. Looks like a freaking jungle. Jin said as some of the crew were looking around. It's all humid as well. No Ji Ko said as she fanned herself with her hand. They got the garden part right. Alveda said. But what part about this place is little? 
Who cares? Luffy said as he was jumping in place. Let's go and explore. So who's going to watch her, no G. Ko said as she looked at Valerie. And who's going to watch him? She asked as she pointed towards a grinning and very jumpy Luffy. I'm not going to do anything. Valerie pouted. I promise. See? Luffy said looking at them all. She promised, so let's go. He's way too trusting. Most of them thought. Sanji. I need a pirate's lunch. No veggies. Luffy said. Alright. Sanji said. After Sanji made lunches for everyone, they all thought about who did what. It was decided that Luffy, Vivi, Karu and Noji Ko would explore, Zoro and Sanji would get compete to get the food, and the rest would stay with the ship and watch Valerie. Why would you want to go out there Vivi? Nami said. Nothing I can do until the log pose sets and we leave, so I'm going so I can take my mind off of my home for the moment. She said. Don't worry. Karu's coming as well. Quack Karu said in a surprised fashion while Nami looked at her sister. And why are you going with them Noji Ko? Nami asked. Cause it sounds like fun. She said with a smile. What's wrong? Surely all of you can watch one person and a ship, right? She asked. Leave it to us big sis. Johnny and Yasaku shouted as they had originally volunteered to watch her. Whatever. Jin said as Alveda relaxed in the lawn chair. He don't worry. Usopp said trying to sound heroic. If anything H happens to you all, the brave warrior of the sea Usopp will come to your aid. These guys are either too relaxed or too crazy. Thought Valerie as she just stood there and watched everyone either leave or stay on the ship. A few minutes later. So that's the story behind why you're on our ship now huh? Usopp said after asking Valerie a few questions. Yes, now please stop asking. Valerie said in an annoyed tone. Yes. Stop asking. Alvita said from where she was on the ship. I'm trying to relax. Sorry. Just being careful about who's on our ship. Usopp said. Speaking of your ship, isn't it a little small to be a pirate ship? She asked. Lay off the ship. Usopp said. What's your problem? She asked. From what I heard, this ship was a gift from his girlfriend back home. Jin said. She's not my girlfriend. Usopp said with a blush, causing some of them to smirk. Hi ha ha. Valerie laughed. Now I get it. Shut up. Usopp shouted before looking at Johnny and Yasaku training. And aren't you two supposed to be watching her? We are. They said before going back to fighting each other. Mind if I ask a question? Valerie said. What's that? Nami said. Your captain what's he like? A total idiot. All of them said in unison. She just stared at them all in disbelief before Nami walked inside the ship to look for a book. After a bit of searching, a suspicion of hers was confirmed. Everyone. I found out why this place is called Little, she said before she and everyone else on the ship became aware of the giant figure staring down at them all. Garden. All of them were now staring up at a giant before some of them screamed in terror. The Baba Baba Baba. Laughed the giant. With Luffy's group. Check this out you guys. Luffy called after some walking. A shellfish squid. That looks kind of like an ammonoid. Vivi said. An ammonoid? No G. Ko asked. Aren't they supposed to be extinct? Before anyone could answer, the ground began to shake with the sound of heavy footsteps. What's that? She said. They looked around before getting their answer. Is that a... Dinosaur Vivi shouted in shock. Awesome. Luffy shouted. Back at the ship. Well? Asked the giant. I am sorry. Nami said as she, Usopp, Johnny and Yasaku looked up at him with tears ready to fall from their eyes. Alvida, Jin and Valerie stared up as well, keeping a straight face despite feeling terrified. What was the question? I asked if you all had some booze. He said. Usopp was nodding furiously while Nami said they had some. Really? You've got some then? Asked the giant with a smile. We haven't drunken much and we use it sometimes for cooking. Nami said. But if you like, you can have all we got. She said. Suddenly the giant screamed, which was soon followed by everyone on the ship, before he looked behind him to see that a T-Rex had bitten his ass. A dinosaur? Most of them asked in shock before the giant grabbed his axe and swung behind him, lobbing the dino's head clean off. Ah! They screamed. I, and I alone, am Elbeth's greatest warrior. Broji. Gabababababa. Laughed Broji. And now I've got some meat. Come, join me as my guests. He said before he noticed that Nami and Usopp had fallen over and didn't move. Johnny and Yasaku froze, Alvida stared up at him in fear, and Jin looked ready to pass out. I'll go get the booze. Valerie said, hoping not to anger the giant. She knew that giants existed, but didn't want to get on the wrong side of one. I'll help. Jin quickly said before following her. In the forest somewhere. What the heck is this? Zoro asked looking at a triceratops in a bored way. Is it edible? But Luffy's group. Luffy? Get down from there. Vivi shouted. 
Luffy had climbed up to the top of the dinosaur's head and was looking around, admiring the view. How's the view? Nojiko asked. It's great. Luffy shouted back. We should have a picnic up here. No. Vivi shouted. I'll pass. Nojiko said. She just watched as Vivi kept yelling up at Luffy while he tried to get the dinosaur to go towards a mountain. Unfortunately, he hurt the dinosaur by twisting its head in one direction, causing it to yell in pain and attract its herd towards him. After swinging around on their necks for a while, Luffy was eaten by the biggest of them all. Luffy? Both of them shouted before a sword came out of nowhere and cut off the dinosaur's head, which caused Luffy to pop out of its neck and land in the hand of a giant. Gijijiji. That was quite a show. Said the giant. Watching you jump around with those long necks is the most entertainment I've had in a while. A giant Vivi croaked out as she and Nojiko stared up at Dory in worry and slight terror, while Keru fainted. You're huge. Luffy said with a grin, happy to see a mighty warrior like Dory once again. Are you human? Human? Jijijiji. I am Elba's greatest warrior. Dory. At Broji's home. There. Broji said after placing a giant hunk of meat in front of Usopp, Nami, Valerie, Jin, Johnny, Yasaku, and Alvita. It's ready everyone. Dig in. He said with a smile. We are not hungry. Most of them said. No need to decline out of modesty. Broji said. Eat all you like. Dino meat's truly delicious. It's fine. I'm not very hungry anyway. Most of them said again. He's gonna eat us too. Usopp whispered. Only after fattening us up first. Nami whispered back. Avlita looked like her heart stopped at those words and turned a little blue in the face. Not good. Johnny and Yasaku said in unison as Valerie stayed quiet. Really? More for your friend then. Broji said. Everyone looked at him before hearing meat being ripped from the giant bone. He's right you guys. Jin said with a mouth full of food. This ain't bad. How can he be so calm? They all screamed in their heads. Baba baba baba. Broji laughed before eating some himself, clearly amused by all of their faces. Um Broji, was it? Mind if I ask a question? She said, hoping he'd be in the mood to talk. What's that? He said. How long d does it take for the log pose to finish recording on this island? She asked. Just one year. He said with a smile. Jin's eye shot open as he stopped chewing while everyone else fell off the leg they were resting on. So relax everyone. Kababa baba. That's not good. Jin said after finishing his food. At Dory's home. Ijijiji. Dory laughed as Luffy stuffed his face full of Dino meat. He had invited Luffy, Vivi, Noji Ko, and Karu to his home for a meal. This is delicious. Luffy said. And your pirate lunchbox is great too. Small though it may be. He said with a laugh. Yeah. My chef made it, so I'm glad you like it. Otherwise, I'd have to kick your ass. Luffy said, causing Dory to stop laughing. Did you just threaten me? He asked, causing Vivi, Karu, and Noji Ko to jump with worry before he started laughing again. I like you shrimp. You're funny. They're getting along so well. Vivi thought. Even Noji Ko was a little surprised at them becoming fast friends. Do you live here Dory? Luffy asked. No. Dory said. I come from a village deep in the Grand Line called Elbeth. It's a village for warriors. He said. Elbeth huh? Luffy said with a grin. Yes. Dory said. But my village has a certain law. If a fight breaks out and can't be settled, then we call on our god Elba for judgment. He blesses those in the ride and protects them. I've gotten in one such fight with another giant, and this island is our battleground. The winner will be the one who will win and survive. He said before laughing. And we still haven't settled it, even after 100 years. Jijijiji. 100 years? Noji Ko asked. It's nothing. We giants live three times longer than you squirts. Dory said before laughing. Even so, why keep fighting after 100 years? Vivi asked. Can't you resolve this another way? Do you want to kill each other that badly? She looked ready to go on until a large volcano erupted. Guess it's time. Dory said as he got up and grabbed his sword and shield. What do you mean guess it's time? Noji Ko asked. I don't remember when, but the eruption of that middle volcano signals the start of our battle. Dory said. Vivi started ranting about why they would want to kill each other again before Luffy stopped her. It's not about that anymore Vivi. Luffy said. Exactly. Dory said as Broji came into view, looking ready to fight. This battle is one of pride. He said before he and Dory rushed each other. The reason for the fight is long forgotten. All four of them were knocked onto their butts after a shockwave from their battle hit them. Vivi and Noji Ko stared at them while Luffy had a huge grin on his face. Back at Broji's home, Nami and the others were watching the duel as well. This is a good time to leave. Nami said. Right behind you. Alvita said. Come on you guys. Wow. 
Usopp said, staring up at the two giants trying to kill each other. What are you doing Usopp? Nami asked. The reason? I forgot a long time ago. Were the words going through Usopp's head at the moment? No reason, yet they fight. Usopp said. They're just being stupid. Alvita said. Cool. Usopp said. This is what a man's fight truly looks like. He said crossing his arms. Huh? Nami said. Think of it this way. Usopp said as Johnny, Yasaku, and Jin began to join him in watching the battle. Both of them have raised a metaphorical flag in their hearts. One that they value more than their own lives. They wish to keep those flags raised, no matter what. So they protect that flag by fighting each other, even after 100 years. He said. Jin was smiling while Johnny and Yasaku were on the verge of tears from understanding what he meant. This fight, Usopp went on. Is one of pride between these two great warriors. That was beautiful, big bro. Johnny said as he and Yasaku wiped their eyes. Jin only smiled while Alvita and Nami just stared at them before trying to leave, saying they weren't interested. I'm staying here to watch. Usopp said. This is what I've always dreamed of becoming one day. The giant. Nami asked as she and Alvita sat back down in defeat. No. Didn't you listen to anything just now? He demanded as the others snickered. He calmed down before resuming watching. Imagine a whole village of warriors like them. I want to see it one day. He said with a smile. Same here. Both Johnny and Yasaku said in agreement. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'd like to see it too. Jin said. Men. Nami and Alvita said with a sigh before both giants reached the end of their 73,466 fight, which ended in yet another draw. Both fell to the ground and didn't move for a few moments before they both burst into laughter. Bababa. Baba. Hey Dory. I got some booze from our guests. Broji laughed. Great. I haven't had any in a long time. Mind sharing jujujuji. Dory laughed back as they both got up. Broji handed him some barrels, but stopped Dory before he could leave. One moment. Broji said. One of the guests said they needed to speak with their captain. Said it was urgent. All right. Dory said. He waited for a few moments before Broji came back and handed him Valerie. Thanks Broji. She said. Anytime. Gababa Baba. He laughed before heading back to his home, with Dory heading back to his home as well. Hey Dory. Luffy said. Looks like it was a draw. Ijijiji. He laughed. Just like always. What are those barrels? Noji Ko asked. Booze from Broji's guests. Dory said. They wouldn't happen to be your crew, would they? He asked. Along with this woman. They all looked up at him to see Valerie standing on his shoulder. Hey, Valerie. Luffy said. Yep. They're our friends. He said before his eyes widened. Wait a minute that booze crap. He thought. Hey, Captain Luffy. She said as she floated down until she was standing next to him and sat down next to him. While well, Vivi asked Dory if it really takes a year for the log pose to set, Valerie and Luffy got to whispering about something. We've got trouble. Valerie whispered. Baroque works followed us to this island. A W Luffy stared screaming before Valerie covered his mouth. She let go of him so he could whisper, how do you know? Because back on the ship she said. Flashback. Where's the booze? Valerie asked Jin as they went below deck to find the alcohol and give it to Broji. Here they are. Jin said as he lifted two barrels up and walked up the stairs. Hurry up. I know. She shouted back as she lifted a barrel. She started walking towards the stairs but tripped over some rope and fell. She reduced her weight to avoid hurting herself, but the barrel she dropped started leaking a bit. Shit. She said as she propped it up. She looked at the small hole that appeared before he eyes widened. This rum. She said, recognizing that it had been tainted somehow. Mr. Five. She thought. What are you doing? Jin shouted down to her, snapping her out of her thoughts. Sorry. She said before putting the bad barrel aside. After giving the other barrels a quick check, she sighed in relief that none of them were tainted as well and started bringing another barrel up. Then flashback. So your old partner somehow put a bomb in there? Luffy whispered. Yeah. She said before smiling. Don't worry. None of those barrels are bad. Really? He said before sighing. That's good. He was glad that his friend wouldn't be hurt by that bomb like last time, but then remembered what Valerie said before. So, if that bomb was in that barrel, then. Yeah. She said as she looked out at the jungle. Somewhere out there Baroque Works is waiting. She had a grim look on her face before she noticed Luffy smiling at her. What? See? You promised you wouldn't do anything against us. He said with a smile. She just looked at him before a small smile tugged at her lips. Well you did let me on your ship. She said. Hey. Dory said, gaining both of their attention. What are you two whispering about? Huh? Valerie said. Oh. We were just talking about how to get off this island as soon as possible. That's so? 
Dory said before laughing. At Broji's home. The brave warrior of the seas. Broji said. What's that? Someone like you. Usopp said. I want to become like you too one day. The giant. He asked, causing all but Usopp to laugh. No. He said before thumping his chest with a smile. I want to live with honor and pride, just like the warriors of Elbeth. Abba Baba. I see. Broji said. We giants longer lifespans than humans. Because of that, we wish for nothing more than honorable deaths. After all, one's fortune or life will cease one day. To us Elbeth warriors, to die with unbroken pride is what we call an honorable death. Our pride never ceases, making it an eternal trisu that is passed on throughout our land. So your pride is your treasure. Usopp said in admiration. Amazing. Johnny and Yasaku said. I want to go there one day. Luffy said with a grin as Dory finished the last of the rum. Luffy grinned wider when he saw for himself that the rum didn't explode, which also caused whatever traces of anger he felt at Valerie to disappear. Ijijiji. Dory laughed. Is that right? Well then, Broji or I will show you around one day. If we ever finish this duel. He shouted before laughing, which was followed by Luffy. Vivi however wasn't finding any of this amusing. How am I going to stop this stupid war if I have to wait for a full year to leave? She asked herself. She just stared at the ground in anger until she felt a hand on her shoulder and looked up to see it belonged to Noji Ko. Don't worry. She said with a smile. We'll get there a time somehow. Hey Dory. Luffy shouted, gaining everyone's attention. When we reach Elbeth, let's fight. You're challenging me squirt Dory asked before laughing again. You crack me up. You really are a funny little man. He said before the volcano erupted again. Dory looked at it with a smile before grabbing his gear. You're fighting again? Vivi asked. Even though you fought not that long ago. Yes. Dory said. Even with these wounds, I will fight. If I were to run from this duel because of that, I would lose my pride. He said before walking off to battle. He's crazy. Vivi said. He's a warrior. Luffy said with a grin. Deep in another part of the jungle, there was what looked like a house made of wax with a charred dinosaur in front of it. Gotta say, only you could make a house in the middle of this place. Said Mr. Five. However, this job is still mine, so stay out of it. Is that so? Mr. Three said as he enjoyed his tea while Miss Goldenweek was sleeping against the wall. What a sad excuse from a weakling. Take that back. Mr. Five shouted. Why? Mr. Three asked in calm voice. Remember that we're professionals. To lose and let our targets live means risking our organization being known to the world. That's why our orders must be completed without fail. Still, since you're here, we'll give you 30% of our work. He said before giving Mr. Five a dark look. I suggest you take it before I make you vanish along with those pirates and that traitor Miss Valentine. He said, making Mr. Five gulp in nervousness. Calm down. Here, have some tea. He said as he handed him a cup before explaining that it's for a special occasion. On this island, we have yet another job to add to our list. Another job? Mr. Five asked. Indeed. Mr. Three said before showing him a wanted poster of Dory and Broji and explaining about how 100 years ago, both were captains of the giant pirates who wreaked havoc over a century ago and that both are still wanted by the government and that each was worth 100 million berries each, making the reward 200 million berries. 200 million MR.5 said in shock before he noticed his legs were being covered with wax. Hey, what are you doing? Simple. He said. I'm a little upset that the bomb you planted failed to go off. He said as a bit of wax came toward Mr. Five's neck before morphing into a sort of blade and stopped just inches from killing him. Hey man, it's not my fault. He said as sweat started forming on his face. I put the bomb in the rum like you asked. Indeed you did. Mr. Three said before making the wax disappear from around Mr. Five. That's why I'll be taking care of the giants now. As for you, he said before finishing his tea. Only one person could have figured out and stopped that bomb from doing its job. So Mr. Five, your new objective is to kill Miss Valentine yourself and retrieve Princess Vivi for me. He said with that same dark look. Understood. Yeah. I got it. He said, still nervous. At Broji's home. Everyone was chatting with Broggy until the volcano erupted. Time to go. Broji said as he stood up and grabbed his gear. Already? Alveda asked. But you're still wounded. Nami said. So is Dory. Broji said before leaving, laughing all the way. Go oh, Master Broji. Usopp shouted. Go. Oh. Fight. Win. Johnny and Yasaku shouted in unison. Men in their pride. Alveda sighed before she and the others all got serious looks on their faces. So, Nami started. You think what Valerie said was true? About that rum being booby trapped by that Mr. Five character? Jin asked. I don't know. She took a while to come back up with a barrel of the stuff. 
That just means she really is on our side. Yasaku said. Yeah. If she wasn't, she wouldn't have told us about it in the first place and let it blow up inside one of the giants. Johnny said before he noticed Usopp with a serious and angry look on his face. You okay big bro? Huh? Usopp said after snapping out of his thoughts. Sorry. Just the thought that someone would want to tarnish their duel makes me angry. None of the men could disagree to that as they all had equal looks of anger as well. Speaking of Mr. Five, Alvita said. If that bomb was there, that could mean he's here as well. Could be. Jin said before some trees were pushed out of the way, revealing a hungry dinosaur growling at them all. The DDD dinosaur. Usopp stuttered before it roared at them, sending them all scattering in a panic. Usopp and Nami in one direction, Johnny and Yasaku in another, and Jin and Alvita in different directions as well. Usopp. Shit. Keep running Nami. Usopp yelled as he ran through the jungle at full speed. After a full minute of running, he stopped to catch his breath. I I think we lost it Nami Nami. Usopp said before opening his eyes and looking around to see that Nami wasn't with him. Oh no she didn't get. He said with a nervous smile. Nami. Usopp. Nami yelled as Usopp had taken off and left her alone. Oh great. Usopp's gone, along with the others. She said as she looked around, wondering which way to go until she spotted a familiar figure. Luffy. She said with a smile as she approached him. There you are. Am I glad to see you. She said as Luffy still stood there with a smile. After not answering, she spoke again. Hey Luffy, what's wrong? She asked before a blob of white clouded her vision before she could scream. Zoro. Man this thing's a pain to carry. Zoro grunted as he was dragging a dead dinosaur behind him before spotting Nami leaning against a tree. Nami. Perfect timing. Which way to the ship? He asked. He pegged her again with questions after getting the silent treatment before he found himself shackled in white. What the? Jin. Stupid overgrown fossil. Jin grumbled as he was now trying to find his way back. After the initial shock wore off from the dinosaur's sudden appearance, he was now hoping to either find his way back or find that dinosaur and kill it. Whichever came first was fine with him until he spotted someone sitting in the shade. Huh? Yasaku. How'd you get here? He asked as he approached his sitting crewmate. Hey, say something. Hello. Jin said before he suddenly found himself waist deep in trouble. What? Alvita. We have got to get off of this island. Alvita said, irritation lacing her tone as she glanced around. Dinosaurs, giants, assassins. I've had it. She shouted before walking around and grumbling to herself. After a minute of walking, she sat down to rest for a moment. She looked around with a scowl until she saw a smiling figure in the shade. Oh. Hello, no G Ko. She said as she stood up. Where's Luffy? I thought you left with him, the princess, and the duck. She walked over towards no G Ko until she was within arm's length of her. No G Ko. She said before she heard a twig snap behind her. She went for her mace, only to have her arms restrained. Johnny and Yasaku. Fuck. Johnny shouted as he punched the ground. How could we run? We should have faced that stupid dinosaur. Yasaku said in equal frustration. If Big Bro saw us, he'd be ashamed. That's it. Johnny said. We're gonna find that Dino and kick its ass. You with me? Let's do this. Yasaku shouted before he noticed someone off in a clearing. Big Bro. He shouted. Johnny looked as well to see Zoro standing there with his arms crossed and a grin across his face. They both approached him with equal smiles. Still competing with Brother Cook. I bet you'll win hands down Big Bro Zoro. Johnny said. Zoro just stayed quiet, causing them both to frown in confusion. A uh, Big Bro. You okay there? Yasaku asked as he poked Zoro's head, causing him to fall backwards and land with a thud, still standing a grinning with his arms crossed. Both of them stared before they went for their swords, not realizing it was too late as a blob of wax came at them. But Luffy's group. Luffy. Usopp shouted as he ran out into the clearing and up towards his crewmates. Whoa whoa. Easy Usopp. No G Ko said as Usopp was now hunched over trying to catch his breath. What's wrong? It's it's I'm so sorry no G Ko. Usopp said as tears were running down his eyes. Nami she got eaten by a dinosaur. No G Ko just stared at him. The thought of losing her sister was something she dreaded since Nami first set out and started robbing from pirates. She just stood there before Vivi held her hands up. Hold on you guys. Vivi said. Just because she disappeared doesn't mean she was eaten. There could be many reasons why she's not here. It might have been Mr. Five. Valerie said in a quiet voice, feeling guilty that she used to be part of the people that are now hunting them. He might have captured her or worse. Luffy. No G Ko said in a quiet voice as her hands were gripped into fists and now shaking. Can you sense Nami? She asked. 
Luffy looked at her shaking form and was about to use his hockey to search the island, but stopped when he sensed two people approaching them from the jungle. She's alive for now. Came a voice. Everyone looked to see Mr. Five standing in the clearing with a beaten up Karu. Behind him was a girl who was munching away on a rice cracker. This duck wouldn't call for you. Oh well, he's useless now. He said before throwing a bloody Karu towards them. Mr. Five. Valerie said before she recognized the girl standing next to him. Miss Goldenweek. She said with a hint of dread in her voice. She's another agent. No G. Ko asked, now feeling calmer at hearing her sister was alive. Yes. Vivi said as she got out her peacock slashers. And she's partnered with Mr. Three. Mr. Three. Usopp said. Then he's stronger than this guy. Yes. Valerie said. Miss Valentine. Mr. Five said. Looks like you really have defected. Only you could have recognized my handiwork with that liker. Yeah, I stopped that bomb from being used. She said with a forced smile. Mr. Three's pissed about that. Miss Goldenweek said in a neutral tone. Mr. Three. Luffy thought as he remembered him helping him to save Ace before standing up. Where are our friends? He asked in a calm voice. Doesn't matter. Mr. Five said. You'll be joining them soon in the afterlife. The monster. Vivi shouted as she, Usopp, No G. Ko, and Luffy all got ready to fight. This golden week. Mr. Five said. Take care of Straw Hat. Right. She said as she got out her paints and paintbrush. No, you don't. Luffy shouted as he ran towards them both. He stretched out his fist as he ran. Gum, goo and pistol. He shouted as he shot his fist straight into the ground. Where are you aiming at? Usopp shouted. Look at the ground. Valerie said. Everyone looked to see a strange red symbol on the ground. Colors trap. Bullfighting red. She said. Huh? No G. Ko said. She uses pain to mess with people's emotions. Vivi said. So it's like hypnotism. Usopp said. Oh, fantastic. That simple-minded idiot can't fight against that. He was proven right as Luffy threw out more punches, only for them all to go after the red symbol on the ground. Come on Luffy. Shouted Nojiko. They're right in front of you. I'm trying. He shouted as he looked back at her before he started laughing. But I think I'll laugh a bit. He said before falling to the ground and rolling around in laughter. Huh? His friend said before they saw a yellow symbol on his back. Colors trap. Laughing yellow. Miss Goldenweek said. Having fun. Oh for the love of no G. Co. started saying before she, Valerie, Usopp were both hit with explosives, knocking all three of them out cold. You. Vivi shouted as she ran at Mr. Five, only to be tripped up by an explosive kick. Soon, she and no G. Co. were both in his arms as they started walking towards the jungle. I'll deal with you three and that duck later. He said. Right now, Mr. Three wants these two ASAP. Both agents then walked off with the two girls, leaving a smoking Usopp, a bloody Karu, a laughing Luffy, and a quiet Valerie behind. Sanji. Deep in the jungle, Sanji had come across Mr. Three's wax house and began enjoying some tea. Wait. This isn't time for tea. He shouted. My lovely ladies might be needing me. He was about to walk out of the house before he heard something ringing. After looking a bit, he found a den den mushy and answered. Hello. This is Café La Shit. You making a reservation? Stop playing games dumb shit. Came a voice on the other line. I'm still waiting on your report. My report huh? Sanji said. To whom am I talking to? It's me Mr. Zero. MR.0. Sanji thought. If I remember correctly, MR.0 is the boss. Which means that the guy on the other line is one of the seven warlords. Crocodile. Well MR.3. Said Crocodile on the Den Den Mushy. I'm waiting. Have you eliminated Vivi, Miss Valentine, and the Straw Hat Pirates or not? Yeah. Sanji answered back. All of them are dead, so further pursuit is no longer required. Good. Crocodile said. I've sent the unluckies with a package. A package? Sanji said. Yes. An eternal pose for Alabasta. Crocodile said. When they arrive, you and Miss Goldenweek are to head for Alabasta. The final stages of my plan are upon us. Alright. Sanji said as he was now staring at an otter and a vulture, both of which were glaring at him through sunglasses before they started attacking Sanji. Quit it you reject weasel. He shouted before kicking the otter into the wall. He then ran over and got the vulture's head between his feet. You too, you ugly ass chicken. He shouted before twisting its head around backwards. After they were both out, Sanji went back to talking with Crocodile, who was asking what all the noise was. Sorry about that. One of the straw hats were playing dead on me, but they're dead now. He said. Nothing could be heard on the other line for a moment. You said, Crocodile said as the glass of water and flour he was messing with started to dry up and disappear. They were all dead. Yeah. Sorry about that, but they tricked me. 
Sanji said. So you lied to me. Is that right? Crocodile asked. Technically, yeah. But all of them are dead for sure, so there's no need to keep hunting them. Sanji said. Another moment of silence was heard before Crocodile spoke again. After you get the package, return to Alabasta. Good luck MR.3. Crocodile said before hanging up the phone. Miss all Sunday. He said. Yes. Robin answered back from inside the room. Contact MR.2 and have him sail to Little Garden to intercept and assassinate Mr. 3. I have enough agents to carry out my plan. Understood. She said with a smile. Back with Sanji. Sanji had just hung up the Den Den Mushi before noticing an hergless shape pose next to the otter that read Alabasta on it. What's this? At the giant's battleground. Both giants were on their last legs in their duel before they nailed each other in head with their shields again, resulting in another draw. Both laid flat on the ground for a moment before laughing. The Baba Baba. Yet another draw. Broji laughed. Hijijiji. Laughed Ori. Yeah, looks that way. Both kept laughing before getting up or tried to get up. Huh. What? They both said as they looked down at themselves, only find that they'd been covered with wax. What is this stuff? Dory said. I can't move. Me neither. Broji said. Both giants kept struggling before they heard someone else laughing and looked to see Mr. Three. Sorry giants, he said in a smug tone. But I believe that your duel will forever remain a draw. Who are you? Dory yelled, only for Mr. Three to chuckle. My name is Mr. Three. I'm just a simple artist. He said before Mr. Five and Miss Gildenwee came out of the jungle with no G. Ko and Vivi. And these are my associates. Mr. Five, a bomb man, and Miss Gildenwee, a painter. Mr. Three. Vivi shouted as no G. Ko began to stir. Princess Vivi. He said. Glad you could make it. You and your other friends are just in time for my masterpiece. He said before looking around. I see Miss Valentine is absent. You gave me orders to kill her, so I'll do it my own way. Mr. Five said before dropping a semi-conscious no G. Ko onto the ground. Ow. She said before sitting up and looking around. What happened? Handle lock. Mr. Three shouted as he used his wax powers to bind no G. Ko and Vivi's legs in wax. Very well then Mr. Five. Bring the others here before you go then. He said before looking back at the struggling giants. Stubborn, aren't you? Be silent. Dory shouted. A little squirt like you will not stop our duel. Broji shouted before the wax around his arms began to crumble, startling Mr. Three. Before they could stand, Mr. Five had sent an axe blizz booger at both giants' heads, stunning them and giving Mr. Three time to bind them again with spikes through their hands. Never thought they could break my wax. Mr. Three said. Deal with the traitor and her friends. He said as Mr. Five brought the others one by one to him. Time for my masterpiece. But Luffy's group. Luffy was still laughing his ass off, which slowly woke the others around him. Valerie, Usopp, and Karu were a bit dazed before they remembered what happened and slowly stood up. Usopp and Karu were looking at Luffy, wondering how to help him with the laughing before Valerie walked over and smeared the paint. Luffy immediately stopped laughing and started catching his breath. Thanks Valerie. Luffy wheezed before he stood up and smashed his fists together. Yeah you're welcome. She said in a quiet voice. Luffy looked back at her as Karu and Usopp started walking towards the jungle, looking pissed for different reasons before they noticed that Luffy and Valerie weren't moving. Hey, what's wrong? Usopp asked. Valerie. Luffy said as he noticed her trembling. You okay? No I'm not. She said in a broken voice before falling to her knees with her head down. She kept trembling as Luffy looked down at her before seeing a drop fall onto her legs. Soon more drops were seen before she continued. We're all fools. Hey. Usopp shouted before Luffy raised an arm to stop him. What do you mean? Luffy asked. This ideal nation that we were all led to believe hearing it was a lie hurt. She said. All that we did was for nothing. Then would you work in Baroque works in the first place? Usopp asked. It wasn't a choice. She said. If you knew about Baroque works, you'd either been part of it or targeted by it. She said. So, work or die. Usopp said as he looked a little scared at that thought. Right. She said. At first I didn't like it, but then the thought of an ideal nation sounded like what I needed. Needed? Luffy asked. What did you need? The chance to make my dream real. She said. Your dream? Luffy said with a bit of interest. Yes. She said. But it's not just me. Lots of oven Baroque works have dreams that we wanted to come true. Even Mr. Five has one. That booger bomber guy? Usopp asked. Yes. She said as more tears fell. But if what you said was true, she said before looking at them all. Her face was flowing with tears with a little bit of snot in her nose. Then none of it matters because none of those dreams will come true. She shouted before breaking down. They looked at her as she cried her eyes out. 
Luffy removed his vest and knelt down at eye level with her before holding it out to her. Huh. Don't have a rag. Will this do? He asked with a smile. She just looked at his vest before taking it and wiping her eyes and nose. Sorry. She said. I just couldn't hold it in any longer. No worries. Luffy said as he stood up and held out a hand for her to take. So, you gonna sit there and cry, or are you gonna fight with us? She looked up at him and saw all three of them smiling down at her. I'm gonna fight. She said after taking Luffy's hand and standing up. Come on. We gotta save your friends. Wrong. Luffy said, startling them. We gotta save our friends. He said with a smile, which was followed by each of them. You guys go on ahead. I'll catch up. He said while stretching. Right. They said before they all left, leaving Luffy back in the clearing. When they were gone, he looked out at the jungle in another direction. I know you're there. He said as he stared at a figure through the trees. At Mr. Three's masterpiece. All of the captured straw hats were now standing on a giant cake made of wax-like candles with a giant on each side. Jin, Johnny, Alvida, Nami, Zoro, Vivi, Yasaku, and Noji Ko all stood side by side. I can't move my legs. Nami complained. And there's not enough room to slip out of this stuff. Alvida said. I can't believe this. Jin grumbled. Ahaha. Mr. Three laughed. Why so glum? You should all feel honored. I'm about to make you all a work of art. He said before he used his powers to form a column behind them with a giant smiling cake and lit candles on top. Everyone looked up to see the cake beginning to spin around in a circle. What's that? Yasaku asked before they saw white mist falling around them. What is this stuff? Noji Ko asked. Wax. Vivi said. Correct. Mr. Three said as Miss Goldenweek munched away on her rice crackers. The wax mist will cover your bodies. Soon, all of you will turn into my greatest work of art. Candle dolls with souls. What? Johnny and Yasaku yelled. Hey Candle Man. Zoro called in a bored tone. Where are our friends? It's a pity, but they can't join you in my art. Mr. Three said with a dark look in his eyes. They're already dead. Oh? Is that so? Zoro said with a cocky grin. And you know that for a fact huh? Of course. Mr. Three said. A kid in a straw hat, a duck, a traitor, and a man with a long nose are nothing compared to us in Baroque works. Then who are they then? Jin said as he and everyone else looked behind Mr. Three to see Usopp, Karu, and Valerie all walking towards them. Oh? Mr. Three said in a bored tone. Still alive are we? That's right. Usopp yelled. No man who tries to stop an honorable fight can take us down. He shouted as Karu quacked in anger. Please. A duel that's been going on for 100 years between a couple of giants for no reason. Mr. Three mocked. How stupid can you all get? Take that back. Johnny yelled. How dare you insult their duel in such a manner. Yasaku shouted. And what exactly can you two do stuck to cough this stupid cake? No G. Ko said before some of them started coughing from the wax mist. If this gets into our lungs cough we'll be turned into candles from the inside. Vivi gasped out. Yes. That look of fear and desperation is what I crave for my art. He said before he made some wax run down his arm. And you three will be nice additions, along with that failure Mr. Five. All three of them took defensive stances before they heard someone walking behind them. They turned, hoping to see Luffy, but gasped when they saw Mr. Five. Well, about time you showed up. Mr. Three said as Mr. Five blew his breath into a gun. Now I have everyone here for my candle sir. Explosive breath. He shouted before firing the gun six times, aiming at Mr. Three. What? He shouted in astonishment before the bomb exploded around him. Everyone looked at the smoke that was billowing out from the explosion before they looked at Mr. Five. Mr. Five? Valerie said in confusion. But why? I heard what you said. Mr. Five said. Flashback. Mr. Five was walking through the jungle looking to finish off the four he left. He was about to clear the jungle fauna and began to pick his nose. This ideal nation that we were all led to believe hearing it was a lie hurt. Valerie said. Mr. Five stopped picking his nose at those words. A lie? He thought before he got a little closer while staying hidden. He listened in as Valerie began crying and speaking about how she, her fellow agents, and others had dreams, but wouldn't come true. He waited there as they kept talking, thinking about what he just heard. I know you're there. He heard Luffy say. He looked up to see Luffy staring in his direction before walking out into the clearing. I heard. He said. Is it true? What Miss Valentine said. Yeah. Luffy said. So now that you know, you still gonna try and kill us? He asked before getting into a fighting stance. They stared at each other before Mr. Five sighed. Nah. No point now. He said. If what you guys said is true, then I'm doing all this for nothing as well. Ah. Luffy said before standing up straight. So what will you do now? 
seeing as how I've been lied to and how I've failed in killing you all, I guess Baroque works will come after me as well. Mr. Five said. I hate to ask, but I don't have a lot of options you guys need an extra hand. Flashback ends. So you're helping us? Just until you guys stop Baroque works. Then I'm gone. Mr. Five said. Well if you are on our side, Alvita said. Then how about doing something about this wax? He can't break it. Came Mr. Three's voice. Everyone looked at the smoke to see it clear up and reveal a wall made of wax before it too disappeared, showing a calm but very angry Mr. Three in a battle suit made of wax. Very foolish Mr. Five. Didn't you hear what we just said? Usopp yelled. I heard. Mr. Three stated. Even if it's true, I have no intention of being targeted for failing to kill you all. Shit. Mr. Five said. This is bad guys. Valerie said. He took down a pirate worth 42 million berries. Then don't worry about it. Usopp said. Our captain is worth 48 million berries. Is that so? Mr. Three said with a smirk. Then it looks like my reputation will increase after killing him if he bothers to show up that is. He laughed before telling Miss Gildenweek to paint his candle champion a cool color. Can I take a nap afterwards? She asked in a bored tone. Whatever. He shouted. It's not like you need to help anyway since I'm already strong enough to beat him. I am invisible. He shouted as she finished painting it. Now then, where is that captain of yours? He said he'd be here in a minute. Usopp said before looking at Mr. Five. Didn't you say you spoke with Luffy? I did. I don't know why Mr. Five said before the ground shook lightly. Huh? What was that? Valerie asked as another rumble was felt under their feet. Off in the distance, they could hear birds and other animals making sounds as the rumbles got louder and more violent. Feels like a giant's walking nearby. Impossible. There are only these two giants here. Mr. Three shouted. Then what's that? Jin shouted as he pointed out towards the jungle. Everyone looked to see a giant shadow, about as tall as Dory and Broji, moving through the jungle towards them. Was there another giant here after all Vivi shouted. No one had an answer as the figure soon appeared before them all. Everyone was stunned silent as they stared up in shock and or horror. Shisha shishi. Laughed the giant. Big bro Johnny and Yasaku said in shocked unison. That's your captain Mr. Three shouted. I think it is. No Jiko said. Everyone was gaping at Luffy's giant form before Jin asked a million berry question. How did you turn into a giant? He shouted. Shisha shishi. Luffy laughed. Fight now, talk later. He said before eyeing the spinning cake. Oh h h h h. Cake. This is not the time for food. They all shouted as Luffy went to grab the spinning cake, only for the it to splatter into a waxy mess all over his hand. Oh yeah. This is wax. Luffy said in a disappointed tone. You bastard. You've ruined my candle service set. Mr. Three bellowed out. Who cares? Luffy said before looking at his crew. You guys okay? Well, we can't move. Alvita said. And up till now, we were starting to turn into candles. Nami said. Thanks for stopping that cake. No sweat. Luffy said before he looked at his wax-covered hand. He then looked down at Mr. Three before reaching down and picking him up with his other hand. Hey Three guy, get rid of this wax and release my friends. FF fool. Mr. Three shouted before shooting more wax out at Luffy, covering his arm with more wax. If anything, I'll add you to my masterpiece. I asked nicely. He said before he looked at Mr. Three closely before his eyes starting shining like stars. You know, you look like an action figure. He said, causing everyone else to sweat drop. Hey you're not. Mr. Three said as his face turned blue before Luffy starting swinging him around in the air. Hey ah ha 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 ha. He screamed as Luffy waved him roughly around in the air like a flying robot, causing Mr. Five, Valerie, Karu, and Usopp to fall over. Will you quit messing around already? The three shouted while Karu quacked angrily. Okay. Luffy laughed before bringing Mr. Three to a stop and up to Luffy's head. Give up. The gabble blade will be. Mr. Three managed to say while his eyes spun before he passed out. Oops. Luffy said before putting him down. He looked back at his crew before his cheeks puffed up. Sorry guys. I'm at my limit. He said before a strong gust of wind blew out of his mouth as he began shrinking. He kept shrinking, freeing his hand from the wax, until he was normal sized once more before falling onto his butt. Eh. I've never gone that big before. Well now that you've had your fun, can you get us out of this? Jin said. Sure. He said before he threw a few punches at the wax they were covered in. It slowly started to break as Luffy threw his fist back again, only to find that he couldn't throw it out. Huh. Enough of your tricks. Mr. Three said from behind him. Luffy looked back to see that Mr. Three encased his stretched out arm in wax. I'll kill you, then remake my service set. Hey guys. Luffy said to Usopp, Valerie, Mr. Five, and Karu. Free the others. 
I'm gonna take this guy down. He said before adding some strength and busting his arm free from the wax. Got it. Usopp said before they turned to the cake. Oh no you don't. Mr. Three said as he jumped out and punched the ground around them, causing them to scatter. Hang on guys. Master Broji. We'll get you guys out in no time. Usopp shouted. We leave our fate in your hands. Broji said with a grin. Are we really okay? Vivi asked Zoro. Don't worry. Zoro said in a calm tone. We'll be fine. Get back here. Luffy shouted as he grabbed Mr. Three by his wax leg and pulled him close for a punch. Mr. Three brought his fist down to take the blow as he swung with his other wax fist. Both kept exchanging blows before Mr. Three noticed his wax gloves were starting to crack. Impossible. He can't be stronger. My wax is harder than steel. Mr. Three thought until he got an idea. Miss Gildenweek. He shouted. Miss Gildenweek starting mixing up some paints. After this, I'm going back to the wax house for a nap. She thought as she was about to use her colors trap on Luffy. However, before she could get the first brush stroke out, her paintbrush and palette were not taken from her from behind. Hiya ha ha ha. No, you don't. Said Valerie. Miss Gildenweek turned to see Mr. Five and Valerie holding her art supplies in their hands. She looked at them both before she started to sweat. Nice job guys. Usopp said before looking back at the wax cake. Now how do I deal with this? Hey, Usopp. No Jiko shouted. It's wax. Use fire to melt it. Oh yeah. It is just wax. He said before reaching into his bag of tricks and pulling out a rope. Karu, take this and run around the cake. Quickly. Quack. Karu said before taking the rope and running around the wax figure. What are you making Karu do? Vivi asked. Trust me. Usopp said. Hey Luffy. He shouted. Luffy looked back at him while Mr. Three looked in horror at his now broken candle champion. Use Mr. Three's flame. The rope's coated in oil. Hey, that'll work. Johnny said with a smile. And cook you as alive. Nami shouted. You got any better ideas? Zoro asked. On it. Luffy shouted before grabbing Mr. Three's hair and dragging him to the cake. Ow. Wait. Stop. No. He shouted before the whole thing went up in flames. Everyone was now struggling to move their legs before they finally got free and ran away from the cake. Nami's shirt was burned off while the others made it out with slight burns. You ruined everything. Mr. Three shouted before running into the jungle. While everyone was looking, Miss Gildenweek snatched her stuff before running after him. Get back here you jerk. Usopp shouted. I got this. Luffy said before disappearing after them. Everyone else just glared at the direction Mr. Three and his partner ran until they heard groaning from behind them. They looked to see both giants now sitting up and free from wax. With Luffy. Luffy ran after them alone through the jungle until he came across the same sight he did last time. Welcome to my candle garden. Mr. Three's voice rang out as dozens of Mr. Three's were everywhere. Which one is the real me? A man who relies on instinct will never defeat me. Go ahead, wander on through. And when your back is to me I'll stab your heart. Thumb gum stamp. Luffy shouted as he threw his leg out into a direction, nailing the real Mr. Three in the face and into a tree. How did you know? He said before falling down unconscious. Instinct. He said before looking around and seeing Miss Gildenweek moving through the woods. Hold it you. He shouted. She looked at him with a freaked out expression before running for it. Hey. He shouted before chasing her. Ah crap. She thought as she ran away, desperate to get away from him. While they ran, she slipped off her luggage and left it to lighten her load and run faster. She ran aimlessly through the jungle as the occasional branch scratched her. One caught her cloud print shirt before she slipped it off and kept running, leaving her arms to get scratched a bit more. I said stop. Luffy shouted before disappearing and reappearing in front of her, causing her to run into him and be pushed back onto the ground. She stared up at him before shielding her face with her arms, bracing herself for the beating she felt was coming. She stayed like that for a moment before slowly opening one eye to see a hand held out in front of her. Huh? She said before opening both eyes and looking up to see Luffy smiling down at her. Finally gonna stop running. He asked. She just looked at him confused before looking at his hand. Come on. I'll help you up. He said. She hesitated, but slowly took his hand before he lifted her to her feet. You're not gonna hurt me? She asked. No. Just wanted to know something. He said. What? She said. You heard what Mr. Five and Valerie said right? Luffy asked. I heard. She said as she looked down. If that's true, then it sucks. So, what will you do now? Luffy asked. I don't know. She said. They stayed quiet until Luffy bent down to eye level. Valerie said that a lot of you guys had dreams for this ideal nation. He said. Do you have one? Me? She said as she looked up at him. Yeah you. He said. 
Well, she said. My dream is to be a world famous artist. She finally said. World famous artist? Luffy asked in an interested tone. That's right. I love painting, but I'm not good enough to be known everywhere. She said. It's been my dream to have my name known throughout the world as a master painter. Is that so? Luffy said as he stood up and folded his arms with a smile. Sounds like a great dream. He said. She just looked up at him in awe. Do you think so? She said. Yeah. He said. Hey, if you're gonna fight for your dream, why not do it on my ship? He asked. Your ship? She asked. Wait are you asking me to join your crew? Yeah. Luffy said. Everyone on my crew has a dream they're fighting for. Since you've got a dream that big, you'd fit right in. But I helped Mr. Three capture them. She said. That was when you didn't know you were being tricked. Luffy said. Don't worry. They'll be okay. She just looked at him before looking down. They stayed like that for the moment before she looked up at him with a small smile. Well, I guess I have no choice. She said. It's either join you or stay stuck on this island. She said before sticking her hand out. I'm in. And my name's Grace by the way. I'm Luffy. He said as he shook her hand. Nice to meet you. Now let's go join the others. He said before he started walking off. He stopped before turning back to her with a serious look. W what? She said with a nervous voice. One more thing when we get thing. He said. Back with the others. Everyone was gathered around and were talking before the giants went from laughing to a pointless argument, causing some of them to laugh or rub their foreheads. Hey guys. Luffy called from the jungle. Everyone looked to see him walking towards them with a big grin. Luffy. Most of them shouted before Luffy stopped and looked behind him before running back towards a tree. Come on. Luffy said with his arms folded across his chest. Everyone was looking at him confused until Grace peered out from behind the tree looking nervous. Soon both of them walked back towards the group until they were a few feet away. What's she doing here? Jin asked. Go on. Luffy said. Grace just looked at everyone before she bowed, causing confusion to them all. I'm sorry for helping Mr. Three capture you all and for nearly ruining the giant's duel. She said. Everyone stared at Grace, who didn't stand up from her bow. Well guys. Luffy said. Everyone was quiet until Noji Ko smiled. Well, she did say sorry. She said. Plus, no one died, so I'm okay. Same here. Johnny said. Me too. Yasaku agreed. Soon everyone was letting bygones be bygones. I'm sorry as well. Mr. Five said. That settles that. Let's party. Luffy shouted, followed by a few others. They started eating rice crackers, causing Grace to argue that those belonged to her. Really Luffy? Nami asked before she winced. Ow. What's wrong Nami? No Jiko asked before looking at her bare belly. Looks like a bug bit you. Everyone then began to wonder how they could get off the island, since the log pose took a year to get to the next island, before Sanji came running towards them. Nami vivialvidavalerie, no gkoh Sanji called out in love mode before adding an abort tone. And you shitheads. He looked at everyone before seeing the giants. Whoa. Are you Mr. Three? Wait, how do you know Mr. Three? Vivi asked. I was chatting with Mr. Zero a moment ago on a den den mushy. He said before he noticed Nami in a bra. Wow. You spoke with Mr. Zero? Most of them shouted. Yeah. He thought I was some clown named Mr. Three. Sanji said before giving his jacket to Nami to cover up with. Since that was the case, I went and told him you all were dead. So then he won't come after us anymore. Vivi gasped. Good. Alvita said. Yeah good. Usopp said sarcastically. We're no longer hunted just as we learn we can't get off this island. What are you all talking about? Sanji asked as he pulled out an eternal pose to Alabasta. Can't we leave with this? He said. Everyone was stunned at that before Vivi hugged Sanji, thanking him as well. No P-R-O-B-L-E-M. Now we can leave. Jin said as the others cheered while Sanji and Zoro argued about their hunting contest. Hunting contest. Dory and Bragi thought. Well Mr. Giants, looks like it's time for us to leave. Luffy yelled out. Take care. Hey wait a minute. Sanji said after finally noticing the extra two walking with them. Who are you two? Oh yeah. Johnny said. They're joining us. The little girl's Grace. Yasaku said. I'm not little. Grace pouted. I'm nearly 14. Anyway, she's Grace, Usopp said. And that's a... Uh, Greg. Mr. Five said. Okay. That's Greg. Usopp said. Soon, all of them were at the ship before stocking up all the meat from the dinosaurs they could load, before they started sailing off toward Alabasta. They sailed off the west of the island, where the giants stood on each side of the river facing the sea. Hey, the giants came to see us off. 
Luffy said, now remembering what was gonna happen and grinned out at the sea. The great danger lies ahead of you all. Broji said. One that has always been here to try and prevent all who sail this way. Dory said. What? Where? Nami cried out as some of them were looking around nervously. Fear not. Dory said with a grin. You all fought like true warriors to protect the pride of our duel. And because you all are willing to do that no matter what enemy you face. Broji said. We will never let them destroy your pride. Dory shouted, his voice echoing around. Trust in what we say. Broji said. Go straight. No matter what happens, keep going straight. Understand. Right. Go straight. Luffy yelled back as they sailed past them. This is farewell. Broji said. Let's meet again. Dory said as they both bro out their weapons. What's that? Nami shouted in terror as an enormous goldfish surfaced in front of them with its mouth wide open. Everyone was now looking at it in horror as some of them started screaming. Hello Island Eater. Dory said. Upon the name of Elbeth, you will let them pass. Broji said. That thing's huge. Nami shouted. Look. A goldfish. Luffy shouted. A G goldfish. Usopp stuttered. W where have I heard of that before? Turn the helm before it eats us. Nami yelled. And no. Usopp said. We keep going straight. Ah right Luffy. Right. He said. This isn't like with Laboon. Nami yelled. Calm down. Luffy said. Here, have the last rice cracker. He said before throwing it to her. I don't want it. She said as she caught it. Turn the ship already. Give it up Nami. Zoro said as he leaned against the cabin of the ship while Kara ran inside. She bit down on the cracker with tears in her eyes while leaning against Nojiko. Johnny and Yasaku tried to keep calm like Zoro, though they were sweating and turning blue, as the rest of them were hoping to get out of this alive, while Luffy grinned from his seat on the Mary's head. Soon they entered its mouth as it closed around them with both Luffy and Usopp yelling for them to go straight ahead. Well we're in its mouth. Now what? Noji Ko yelled. Wait for it. Luffy thought. Suddenly, they were flying out of a giant hole in the fish as it was ripped apart. The Koku. Both giants yelled as their weapons broke with that final attack. Go friends. And good luck. They shouted as the ship flew through the air. We're flying. Luffy shouted in amazement, still in awe at how strong the giants were. They split the sea itself. Usopp said with a smile as tears flowed down his face. The strength of Elbeth warriors is amazing. Awesome. Johnny and Yasaku shouted. Now that is impressive. Greg said. While they were all talking, Dory and Broji were chatting about a hunting contest of their own until the volcano erupted, signaling their battle to begin. Shortly afterwards with the crew, Luffy, Usopp, and even Jin were dancing on the rails about going to Elbaf while Kara ran in circles, Zoro, Johnny, and Yusaku were each training to get stronger, Sanji and Valerie were in the kitchen, Nami, Noji Ko, and Vivi were near the mast looking at the eternal pose, and Alvita was showing Greg and Grace around the ship. Nami was leaning against the mast looking a little red in the face as she watched the trio dance. Ha! Hey, he used to be so serious. She thought as she looked at Jin. She then looked at Luffy before smiling. He's been hanging around Luffy too much. She thought before Sanji came out with a plate full of snacks. Are you ladies hungry? He asked in a suave voice. They look nice Sanji. Vivi said. Well, I must confess, Sanji said as Luffy, Usopp, and Jin were eyeing the plate. Only half of them were made by me. He said before glaring at them. Your food is inside. He said. Thanks. They said before racing up and into the cabin. Hi ha ha. Valerie laughed as she turned to them all. She was wearing an apron over her usual outfit that had chocolate spots on it. The food's on the table over there. She said as the boys started eating. These chocolates taste great. Usopp said with a mouthful of food. I'm glad you like them. Valerie said. You made these? Luffy asked. That's right. Sanji said as he walked in the door. The lovely Valerie here made all the chocolates you idiots are shoving down your craw. Not bad. Jin said. I'm glad. She said with a sigh. If they were terrible, I'd have no hope for my dream. Your dream? Luffy said after swallowing his food. Yes. I dream of being a chocolatier. She said. Sanji started saying how she could sense she's lovely while Luffy smiled at her. By the way Luffy, Usopp asked. How'd you turn into a giant anyway? Luffy was about to answer but was interrupted by Vivi. Everyone come quick. Vivi shouted in a panic-stricken voice. Oh no. Luffy thought as he remembered what happened here. They all raced out the door and looked down at her. What are you yelling about? Jin asked. Nami has a horrible fever. She shouted as Nami lay on the deck covered in sweat and breathing hard as Noji Ko knelt down next to her in equal panic. What? Sanji shouted as he kicked the men out of the doorway. Nami's sick. She's not the only one. Came another voice. 
everyone looked to see Alvita come out from below deck with Greg carrying Grace in his arms, looking just as bad as Nami. The kid sick as well. Hey down. In my desk there's a newspaper. Nami said. After some quick searching, they found it and gave it to Vivi to read. This this can't be. Vivi gasped. Something about Alabasta Vivi. Sanji asked. 300,000 royal soldiers have defected and joined the rebels. She said in horror before telling them all that now the war shifted into the rebels' favor before Nami dropped a bigger bomb onto her. That newspaper is three days old. She wheezed out. I'm sorry for not showing you. I didn't want you to worry any further since we're sailing as fast as we can. Understand Luffy. Things are getting worse. Luffy said with his arms folded across his chest. Right. Nami said. Glad you understand. But we need to get you to a doctor. Usopp stated. She's right big esser Nami. Yasaku agreed. I'm okay. That thermometer's broken. Nami argued as she got up out of bed before blaming it on heatstroke. No one can get that sick. I'll be fine, so we don't need to see a doctor. Nami, stay in that bed. Demanded no Ko as she tried to keep her from leaving the bed. I told you guys, I'm fine. She said. It's Grace who needs help, not me. We'll head to Alabasta as planned but thanks for worrying about me. She said as she looked back at them all before heading up the stairs to the deck. She is so stubborn. No G Ko said with a sigh before following her. Nami. Luffy said before Vivi started speaking again. At this rate, a lot of needless bloodshed will happen. She said as she stared at the newspaper. If I can't stop this, then it's all over for Alabasta. Crocodile will take over. She said before crumpling up the newspaper. Getting home safely isn't good enough. If I don't get home soon, a million of my people will kill each other for no good reason. A million Johnny and Yasaku shouted in panic. That's a lot of people. And a huge burden. Sanji said before they heard a soft voice stirring. Hey. Mumbled Grace as she looked at them all from the bed. Why are you all yelling? Oh Grace. Sanji said before forcing a smile. Sorry for waking you up. It's okay. She said. But can you all please yell somewhere else? I'm tired. Okay. Sanji said before glaring at the rest of boys. You heard the little lady. Everyone out. He said as he kicked them towards the stairs, leaving Vivi and Grace alone. Are they always like this? Grace asked. Huh? Vivi said after looking at her, not realizing what she said. Are they always like this? She asked again. Loud and stupid. Something like that. Vivi said with a forced smile. Up on deck a moment ago. What were you looking at? Nami yelled at Zoro, who was put in charge of guiding the ship. What? We're going straight. He said in a bored tone as he pointed forward. We gotta follow the needle moron. Nami yelled. I know where we're going since I've been following that big cloud. Zoro said. Clouds change direction. Nami yelled. Stop shouting Nami and get back to bed. No G Ko yelled. I'm alright. She yelled back. Just let me handle this already. Zoro grunted. How can you do that when you can't tell one direction from another? Nami said as she complained her head was hurting from yelling before looking out at the sea. The air it's different. Nami said as the others were soon kicked out onto deck by Sanji. Great timing guys. She said. Turn the helm south, now. Lower the sails and catch wind port side. Why? Jin asked. What about Alabasta? Do what Nami says. Sanji barked. Got it. Usopp, Johnny, and Yasaku said before running off to follow Nami's orders. Nami? No G Ko asked as Nami looked out at sea. I've got a feeling a strong wind is coming from ahead. She said. Okay, change direction to Nami's liking. Luffy yelled out. Aye. Everyone yelled as they began to turn the ship around. And Nami, get back to bed. Luffy said. Captain's orders. For the last time, I'm Fiyu. She yelled as No G Ko finally grabbed her by her ear and glared at her. Bed. She yelled as she started dragging her back downstairs, finally losing her patience with her sister's stubbornness. You heard Captain Luffy. Ugh. Fine. She said as she crawled back into bed next to Grace. But make sure they turn south. I will. No G Ko said as she left again to tell everyone Nami's directions. What's going on? Vivi asked. Everyone's telling me to get some rest when I don't need it. Nami said as she covered herself. Vivi just looked at her like she was crazy before walking out out and above deck. Everyone. Vivi said. I've got a favor to ask of you all. I'm only a passenger so it's not my place to ask, but I have no choice, but I must get home as quickly as possible. The longer I'm away, the more homeland and people are in danger of killing themselves. We need to get to Alabasta immediately. No G Ko was walking out on deck and looked ready to have a few words with Vivi, but stopped when Vivi said with a smile, so let's please find a doctor for Nami and Grace as quickly as possible. 
It's only when Nami is at her best can this ship move at its full speed. Exactly. Luffy said with a grin as Noji Ko looked on with a smile. No one can move this ship like Nami can. What about your home and all its people? Usopp asked. I need to get there, but we'll only get there quicker after Nami's okay. And I also wish to help Grace as well. Vivi said, which was approved of by everyone else. So we're hunting doctors now huh? Greg asked. Looks like it. Alveda said before everyone noticed the weather getting a little choppy. Holy crap Johnny and Yasaku shouted. Everyone looked in their direction to see a massive cyclone. Where'd that come from? Usopp shouted. Weren't we heading in that direction just a moment ago, Valery shouted. Yes. Jin hollered. Man, that was a close call. And it's all thanks to Nami Swan. Sanji yelled. What? Vivi shouted. Nami said that the wind changed. No Jiko yelled over the storm. That's why she told us to change direction. No way. Vivi thought. Grand line weather of this magnitude is almost impossible to predict yet their navigator sensed it by the slightest change. All right everyone. Luffy yelled. It's time to find a doctor to heal our ill crewmates, so keeping heading south. You with me? Yeah. They all shouted. The next day. Nami and Grace's condition slowly worsened as they everyone kept looking for an island with a doctor on it as the weather became cold and snowy. Hey guys. Zoro called from the crow's nest. Do you think it's possible for people to stand on top of the ocean? What are you talking about big bro? Johnny asked as he and most of the boys were outside either playing in the snow, training, or bored. Sanji was with Vivi, Karu, and Oji Ko taking care of Nami and Grace, while the rest of the girls were trying to get warm in the cabin. Look out there. He said as he looked in his binoculars. They all looked to and saw what looked like a jester standing on the ocean. Luffy looked on and thought as the rest of them rubbed their eyes as their ship sailed closer to the strange man. Cold today, isn't it? He asked. All of them started agreeing before they looked at him again with sweat drops on their heads. That guy. Luffy thought before rumbling beneath the ocean was heard before a massive dome rose up from under chess. Hey? Sanji shouted from inside as he kept Nami and Grace's bed from receiving any shock. Watch it up there. If they get sicker, you'll answer to me. Is that a ship Zoro asked as the dome opened to reveal a massive ship. Mahahaha. <laughs> Came a laugh. Luffy's eyes narrowed as he remembered this guy. His anger at this fraud of a pirate resurfacing as Wapple was bragging about his ship. What are you all doing? Sanji shouted when he ran outside to check things. He looked around before calmly lighting up a smoke. So what's happening? We're being invaded by other pirates. Jin said as their ship was now holding tons of men in similar uniforms who were pointing guns at everyone. So that's what caused the shaking huh? Sanji asked as Alvida and Valerie joined them out on deck. They didn't get hurt down there, did they brother Cook? Yasaku asked. Nah, they're good thankfully. He answered as a fat man enjoying a slab of meat on a knife came onto their ship. Let's see. He mumbled through his chewing. 4-7 I count 10 of you. He said. Seems like a decent amount for a ship this size. He said before biting down on the blade before chewing it as well. Ah, who cares? I got something to ask you all. Did he just eat a knife? Jin asked in bafflement as a few crewmembers grabbed their mouths in pain from watching. We seek drum kingdom. Wapple said before eating the handle of the knife. You wouldn't happen to have an eternal pose or log pose would you? No. Sanji said. Never heard of drum kingdom anyway. Greg said. Who are you? Me? Wapple said before grinning. My name is Wapple. If you're done asking Wapple, then leave. Luffy said. Zoro eyed him, not missing the hidden anger in his tone. Now now, no need to get so angry. Wapple said in a calm manner. If you don't have either, I'll just take your treasure and sh. Now. Luffy shouted. Faster than any of them could blink, Luffy appeared in front of Wapple before kicking him far away with a hockey-infused foot. Wapple kept flying until he was a star in the sky. Lord Wapple. His entire crew shouted before retreating to their ship and sailing off after Wapple. Well they did, Chess and another man named Karamarimo were shouting that they'd get their revenge and for them to please remember them. After a few moments, everyone went back to what they were doing as Luffy stormed off to the men's quarters. No one bother me. Luffy grunted before slamming the door. All of them looked at each other in confusion at that statement but left it alone except for one. Luffy. Zoro said as he opened the door to the men's quarters. He saw Luffy lying in his hammock with his straw hat covering his eyes. I ask not to be bothered. Luffy said in low tone. I know, but this is important. Zoro said as he walked over and sat in his hammock. Both said nothing for a few moments as the ship sailed on. One had questions, and the other had the answers hopefully. You sounded angrier than usual. Zoro finally said after a good five minutes. Usually, you don't react like that. You wait until they do something before you decide to be their friend or kick their ass. 
what gives. Luffy tilted his head to the side to look at Zoro from under his hat before looking back at the ceiling. If I tell you, then you have to promise me that no matter what happens, you will not tell anyone else. Luffy said in a rare, serious tone. Understood. Zoro looked at him for a moment before closing his eyes. Understood. He said as he looked back at Luffy. Luffy jumped off his hammock and sat in the hammock next to Zoro's. I will warn you though. Luffy stated. What I'm gonna tell you isn't going to be good. Hey down. In my desk there's a newspaper. Nami said. After some quick searching, they found it and gave it to Vivi to read. This this can't be. Vivi gasped. Something about Alabasta Vivi. Sanji asked. 300,000 royal soldiers have defected and joined the rebels. She said in horror before telling them all that now the war shifted into the rebels' favor before Nami dropped a bigger bomb onto her. That newspaper is three days old. She wheezed out. I'm sorry for not showing you. I didn't want you to worry any further since we're sailing as fast as we can. Understand Luffy? Things are getting worse. Luffy said with his arms folded across his chest. Right. Nami said. Glad you understand. But we need to get you to a doctor. Usopp stated. She's right big s -er, Nami. Yasaku agreed. I'm okay. That thermometer's broken. Nami argued as she got up out of bed before blaming it on heatstroke. No one can get that sick. I'll be fine, so we don't need to see a doctor. Nami, stay in that bed. Demanded no Ko as she tried to keep her from leaving the bed. I told you guys, I'm fine. She said. It's Grace who needs help, not me. We'll head to Alabasta as planned but thanks for worrying about me. She said as she looked back at them all before heading up the stairs to the deck. She is so stubborn. No Ko said with a sigh before following her. Nami. Luffy said before Vivi started speaking again. At this rate, a lot of needless bloodshed will happen. She said as she stared at the newspaper. If I can't stop this, then it's all over for Alabasta. Crocodile will take over. She said before crumpling up the newspaper. Getting home safely isn't good enough. If I don't get home soon, a million of my people will kill each other for no good reason. A million Johnny and Yasaku shouted in panic. That's a lot of people. And a huge burden. Sanji said before they heard a soft voice stirring. Hey. Mumbled Grace as she looked at them all from the bed. Why are you all yelling? Oh Grace. Sanji said before forcing a smile. Sorry for waking you up. It's okay. She said. But can you all please yell somewhere else? I'm tired. Okay. Sanji said before glaring at the rest of boys. You heard the little lady. Everyone out. He said as he kicked them towards the stairs, leaving Vivi and Grace alone. Are they always like this? Grace asked. Huh? Vivi said after looking at her, not realizing what she said. Are they always like this? She asked again. Loud and stupid. Something like that. Vivi said with a forced smile. Up on deck a moment ago. What were you looking at? Nami yelled at Zoro, who was put in charge of guiding the ship. What? We're going straight. He said in a bored tone as he pointed forward. We gotta follow the needle moron. Nami yelled. I know where we're going since I've been following that big cloud. Zoro said. Clouds change direction. Nami yelled. Stop shouting Nami and get back to bed. No Ko yelled. I'm alright. She yelled back. Just let me handle this already. Zoro grunted. How can you do that when you can't tell one direction from another? Nami said as she complained her head was hurting from yelling before looking out at the sea. The air it's different. Nami said as the others were soon kicked out onto deck by Sanji. Great timing guys. She said. Turn the helm south, now. Lower the sails and catch wind port side. Why? Jin asked. What about Alabasta? Do what Nami says. Sanji barked. Got it. Usopp, Johnny, and Yusaku said before running off to follow Nami's orders. Nami? No Ko asked as Nami looked out at sea. I've got a feeling a strong wind is coming from ahead. She said. Okay, change direction to Nami's liking. Luffy yelled out. I. Everyone yelled as they began to turn the ship around. And Nami, get back to bed. Luffy said. Captain's orders. For the last time, I'm Fiyu. She yelled as no Ko finally grabbed her by her ear and glared at her. Bed. She yelled as she started dragging her back downstairs, finally losing her patience with her sister's stubbornness. You heard Captain Luffy. Ugh. Fine. She said as she crawled back into bed next to Grace. But make sure they turn south. I will. No G Ko said as she left again to tell everyone Nami's directions. What's going on? Vivi asked. Everyone's telling me to get some rest when I don't need it. Nami said as she covered herself. Vivi just looked at her like she was crazy before walking out out and above deck. Everyone. Vivi said. I've got a favor to ask of you all. 
I'm only a passenger so it's not my place to ask, but I have no choice, but I must get home as quickly as possible. The longer I'm away, the more homeland and people are in danger of killing themselves. We need to get to Alabasta immediately. Noji Ko was walking out on deck and looked ready to have a few words with Vivi, but stopped when Vivi said with a smile, so let's please find a doctor for Nami and Grace as quickly as possible. It's only when Nami is at her best can this ship move at its full speed. Exactly. Luffy said with a grin as Noji Ko looked on with a smile. No one can move this ship like Nami can. What about your home and all its people? Usopp asked. I need to get there, but we'll only get there quicker after Nami's okay. And I also wish to help Grace as well. Vivi said, which was approved of by everyone else. So we're hunting doctors now huh? Greg asked. Looks like it. Alveda said before everyone noticed the weather getting a little choppy. Holy crap Johnny and Yasaku shouted. Everyone looked in their direction to see a massive cyclone. Where'd that come from? Usopp shouted. Weren't we heading in that direction just a moment ago, Valerie shouted. Yes. Jin hollered. Man, that was a close call. And it's all thanks to Nami Swan. Sanji yelled. What? Vivi shouted. Nami said that the wind changed. Noji Ko yelled over the storm. That's why she told us to change direction. No way. Vivi thought. Grand line weather of this magnitude is almost impossible to predict yet their navigator sensed it by the slightest change. Alright everyone. Luffy yelled. It's time to find a doctor to heal our ill crewmates, so keeping heading south. You with me? Yeah. They all shouted. The next day. Nami and Grace's condition slowly worsened as they everyone kept looking for an island with a doctor on it as the weather became cold and snowy. Hey guys. Zoro called from the crow's nest. Do you think it's possible for people to stand on top of the ocean? What are you talking about big bro? Johnny asked as he and most of the boys were outside either playing in the snow, training, or bored. Sanji was with Vivi, Karu, and Oji Ko taking care of Nami and Grace while the rest of the girls were trying to get warm in the cabin. Look out there. He said as he looked in his binoculars. They all looked to and saw what looked like a jester standing on the ocean. Luffy looked on in thought as the rest of them rubbed their eyes as their ship sailed closer to the strange man. Cold today, isn't it? He asked. All of them started agreeing before they looked at him again with sweat drops on their heads. That guy. Luffy thought before rumbling beneath the ocean was heard before a massive dome rose up from under chess. Hey? Sanji shouted from inside as he kept Nami and Grace's bed from receiving any shock. Watch it up there. If they get sicker, you'll answer to me. Is that a ship Zoro asked as the dome opened to reveal a massive ship. Mahahaha. <laughs> Came a laugh. Luffy's eyes narrowed as he remembered this guy. His anger at this fraud of a pirate resurfacing as Wapple was bragging about his ship. What are you all doing? Sanji shouted when he ran outside to check things. He looked around before calmly lighting up a smoke. So what's happening? We're being invaded by other pirates. Jin said as their ship was now holding tons of men in similar uniforms who were pointing guns at everyone. So that's what caused the shaking huh? Sanji asked as Alveda and Valerie joined them out on deck. They didn't get hurt down there, did they brother Cook? Yasaku asked. Nah, they're good thankfully. He answered as a fat man enjoying a slab of meat on a knife came onto their ship. Let's see. He mumbled through his chewing. 4-7 I count 10 of you. He said. Seems like a decent amount for a ship this size. He said before biting down on the blade before chewing it as well. Ah, who cares? I got something to ask you all. Did he just eat a knife? Jin asked in bafflement as a few crewmembers grabbed their mouths in pain from watching. We seek drum kingdom. Wapple said before eating the handle of the knife. You wouldn't happen to have an eternal pose or log pose would you? No. Sanji said. Never heard of drum kingdom anyway. Greg said. Who are you? Me? Wapple said before grinning. My name is Wapple. If you're done asking Wapple, then leave. Luffy said. Zoro eyed him, not missing the hidden anger in his tone. Now now, no need to get so angry. Wapple said in a calm manner. If you don't have either, I'll just take your treasure and sh. Now. Luffy shouted. Faster than any of them could blink, Luffy appeared in front of Wapple before kicking him far away with a hockey-infused foot. Wapple kept flying until he was a star in the sky. Lord Wapple. His entire crew shouted before retreating to their ship and sailing off after Wapple. While they did, Chess and another man named Karamarimo were shouting that they'd get their revenge and for them to please remember them. After a few moments, everyone went back to what they were doing as Luffy stormed off to the men's quarters. No one bother me. Luffy grunted before slamming the door. All of them looked at each other in confusion at that statement but left it alone except for one. Luffy. Zoro said as he opened the door to the men's quarters. He saw Luffy lying in his hammock with his straw hat covering his eyes. I ask not to be bothered. 
Luffy said in low tone. I know, but this is important. Zoro said as he walked over and sat in his hammock. Both said nothing for a few moments as the ship sailed on. One had questions, and the other had the answers hopefully. You sounded angrier than usual. Zoro finally said after a good five minutes. Usually, you don't react like that. You wait until they do something before you decide to be their friend or kick their ass. What gives? Luffy tilted his head to the side to look at Zoro from under his hat before looking back at the ceiling. If I tell you, then you have to promise me that no matter what happens, you will not tell anyone else. Luffy said in a rare, serious tone. Understood. Zoro looked at him for a moment before closing his eyes. Understood. He said as he looked back at Luffy. Luffy jumped off his hammock and sat in the hammock next to Zoro's. I will warn you though. Luffy stated. What I'm gonna tell you isn't going to be good. It was late at night that same day that Luffy told Zoro the truth. Sanji was keeping watch as he shivered in his blanket in the crow's nest. Geez, it's cold. He mumbled. It looks like a full moon's out. Inside the ship. Nami slowly opened her eyes as she sat up in the bed and groaned a bit before looking around. What she saw made her smile before she heard Grace whimpering next to her. She looked to see Grace crying in her sleep, her face sweaty and red. Grace. Nami whispered as she placed her hand on Grace's head. Grace. Wake up. She said. No sooner did she say that did Grace's eyes shoot open. Her eyes darted around for a moment until they saw Nami looking down at her. And Nami. Grace said. Be okay Grace. You look like you were having a bad dream. She said. I was. Grace said as she stared at the ceiling. I'm I'm scared. She said. I know. I'm scared too. Nami said before smiling. But don't worry. We'll get better soon. These guys will make sure of it. She said as she looked around the room. Grace sat up and looked around too to see almost all of the crew scattered about, sleeping inside the room. See? Yeah. Grace said before they both laid back down and quickly fell asleep. Minus third day of Grace and Nami getting sick. Both ill girls laid in bed as their sickness got worse. No Jiko, Zoro, and Luffy stayed with them, while the rest were wearing warm and clothing and keeping an eye out for an island, as Vivi explained about the various islands on the Grand Line. How each island had its own season from spring, summer, fall, and winter, and that the stabilized snowing weather meant an island was close. She's right. I see an island straight ahead. Sanji yelled from the crow's nest. An island. Luffy said in excitement. Hey Nami, Grace. You two hear that. An island. Now you two can get better. He said as he tapped his foot while repeating island. Oh look if you want to. Zoro said before Luffy ran off. He's more of a child than any other person I've met. No Jiko said. You just figured that out now. Zoro said with a smirk. Up on deck. Luffy ran and sat up on the Mary's head as he gazed at the island in front of him. Chopper. He thought as the ship sailed closer. It's an island full of snow. It's amazing. He cried out. We're here to find a doctor for Nami Swan and Little Grace. Sanji said. Not for an adventure. Snow is beautiful. Luffy said, ignoring Sanji. Everyone was staring around at the island, especially at the giant mountains that looked like drums. Aren't you cold in just that? Usopp asked Luffy. Huh? Luffy said. It's minus 10 degrees. Vivi said. Bears get ready to hibernate at this temperature. Luffy just stared at them before grinning. Don't feel that cold to me. He said. Truth was, this all felt like a cool breeze to him. After being thrown into Impel Down, word got out to the Celestial Dragons that the man who struck one of them was down there. Wanting to increase his misery, they ordered him to be moved to a different level every week until the day he dies. He shivered as the memories of going through the constant change between blood-covered blade trees, giant monsters, famine, extreme heat, freezing cold, and isolation, slowly drifted back to him. He even wondered how he managed to go through all that and still be alive. Liar. Most of them shouted after seeing Luffy shiver. While Luffy got himself a coat, the ship slowly sailed down the river to a good spot to dock. Alright, Zoro said after coming up onto the deck. Who's looking for the doctor? Matter of fact, who'll see if there are people on this island? There are people here alright. Luffy said. And they're not happy that we're here. Huh? Jin asked before Luffy was proven right. Stop right there pirates. Someone shouted. Everyone looked to see many people on both sides of the river with guns, glaring at them all. Told ya. Luffy said. I've gotta learn that hockey stuff. Most of them thought as a big man with a spade on his back stepped forward. Turn around and leave. He said. You pirates are not welcome on our island. Hold on. We need a doctor. Luffy said. We've got sick people on board. Vivi pleaded. Liar. One of them said. This is our country. Now get lost or else. Harsh way to greet people. Sanji said as he blew out some smoke. Shut up. 
Another shouted before firing, narrowly missing Sanji's foot. Hey. Sanji shouted. They fired on us. Usopp shouted as some of them looked ready to go for their weapons. Big mistake. Sanji said as he glared at them, but was stopped by Vivi. Sanji wait. She said as she stepped in front of Sanji until another shot was fired and Vivi fell to the deck. Vivi. Most of the crew shouted before getting pissed. Bastard. Sanji shouted. Prepare to fire. Shouted Dalton. Enough. Luffy roared as he released a low-level wave of hockey to shut them all up. Everyone looked at him as he walked over to Vivi. Vivi. You okay? Yeah. She said as she stood up and grabbed her arm. It's just a graze. Alright. Luffy said before glaring at the people. They all felt their spirits freeze at his gaze before he dropped to his knees and bowed his head onto the deck. Please help us. He screamed. Everyone stared as his words echoed around them all. Please. Shouted Vivi as she joined Luffy on the deck. No Ko joined them before most of them bowed their heads and asked for help. All of the villagers just were now stunned and left in awe before Dalton spoke up. We'll show you all to our town, Dalton said. Follow me. Nice job Captain Luffy. Vivi said, truly impressed with Luffy's behavior. I learned it from you. Luffy said with a grin. Vivi just looked puzzled while Zoro smirked before the crew all split up. Luffy, Usopp, Vivi, Sanji, Alvida, Jin, Valerie, Greg, and Oji Ko carried a sick Nami and Grace to the village, while Zoro, Johnny, Yasaku, and Karu stayed to guard the ship. I must warn you though, Dalton said. There's only one doctor in our entire country and she's a witch. Huh? Most of them said. I believe it. Luffy thought, remembering meeting her before she went berserk and tried to kill him and Sanji. A while later. Zoro, Johnny, and Yasaku were guarding the ship before Zoro stripped down to his pants. What are you doing big bro? Johnny said as Zoro breathed out and placed his hands together. I'm going to meditate while swimming in the cold river. He said. Huh? Quack. Care to join me? He asked. Uh, no thanks. They said. We're not up to your level big bro. Alright. He said before diving in. They both stared at the water where he dove and sighed. Man, big bro's awesome. Yasaku said with a grin. Swimming in that freezing water. Johnny said in admiration. No wonder he's strong. Both stared at the water again before the smiles slowly fade from their faces. There's no bubbles. Soon, both of them and Karu turned blue with worry. Big bro. Quack. Karu said as all three of them dove into the water ride as Zoro resurfaced with a smile. There's ton of fish down there. He said before diving again. In the village. Welcome to our town of Bighorn. Dalton said. Everyone stared around at the snow-covered village as various people and animals wandered around. Look at this place. Luffy said, still as excited as the last time he was here. This indefinitely a snow country. Usopp said. Cold as one too. Greg grumbled before sneezing. Not a fan of cold weather. Alvita said with a smirk. Finally. Sanji said. Now Nami Swan and Little Grace can get well. Dalton went around and putting everyone at ease before telling them to go about their lives. Vivi asked where the soldiers were, to which Dalton replied that there weren't any. After some walking and bowing to people, they entered Dalton's home before he introduced himself. While they got Nami and Grace into bed, Dalton asked if he and Vivi had ever met before, which she quickly denied before asking about the witch. After some talking, Dalton learned of Nami and Grace's critical condition, before telling them to look out the window towards the mountains. What about them? Sanji asked before they saw a huge snowman looking inside. Mr. Snowman's big brother. Luffy called out as he and Usopp were playing in the snow. It's not match for Snowzilla. Usopp called out in laughter. Get in here before we kill you. Most of them shouted. After Luffy and Usopp joined them all, Dalton asked them to look out towards the mountains out the window. Those are called the Drum Rockies. He said. Do you see the castle on top of the tallest one in the middle? Hey, he's right. Valerie said as some of them looked out the window to see a castle was indeed on the top of them tallest mountain. Why is that castle important? No G. Ko asked as she placed a cool cloth on Nami and Grace's heads. Dr. Kariha, the only doctor on this island, lives up there in that castle. Dalton said. Seriously Jin asked in disbelief. Of all the places to live. Sanji said. Well hurry and call her down here. It's an emergency. Sadly, we have no way to contact her. Dalton said sadly. Say what? Greg said in annoyance. And she's your only doctor? Sanji asked. She's an exceptional doctor, but very strange. Dalton said. She's 140 years old. 140? Sanji yelled while most of them stared in shock. Is she even alive? Yes. And she also likes plums. Dalton said. Then what do the people do if they're sick or injured? Vivi asked. 
She comes down every so often, seeks out patients, treats them, then takes whatever she wants from them. Dalton explained. She sounds like one mean old hag. Usopp said through his drink. More like a pirate. Luffy said, still believing that to be true. How does she even get down the mountain? Vivi asked. It's only rumors, but people say that they've seen her riding in a sleigh that's pulled by some creature down the mountain on moonlit nights. Dalton said. Which is why they call her a witch. Dalton finished before Usopp started panicking about witches and snow monsters finding him. She may be the only doctor we have, but I prefer to stay far away from her. Still, the only thing we can do is wait for her to come down here. That's just great. Alveda huffed. How will we know when the next time she comes down is? Nami. Grace. Wake up you two. Luffy said as he gently slapped their faces. Stop that you moron. All of them shouted before Nami and Grace opened their eyes and looked at him. Hey you two, the only doctor in the county's on top of a mountain, so we're hiking up there. Luffy said in blank tone. Nami's eyes widened a bit while the others just stared at him in disbelief. Whoa there Luffy. Jin said. They're in no shape to climb. I'll carry them. Luffy said. They'll get sicker. Vivi shouted. It soon turned into a screaming match before Nami's voice calmed everyone down. Nami. Sanji said as Nami moved a hand up through the blanket. I leave it all up to you captain. She said with a smile as she held her hand out. Luffy grinned and gave her a high five before Nami felt another hand under the blanket holding hers. Is it really okay to do that? Grace asked. Nami looked at her to see her eyes full of fear looking back. It's okay. Nami said with another smile. Luffy will get us through it. If you say it's okay then okay. Grace said before looking at Luffy with a smile of her own. Take care of us then captain. No problem. Luffy said with the same grin. Luffy's idiocy has spread to them both. Usopp shouted in disbelief as Luffy asked for meat for the journey. Outside the house. Everyone had gathered outside the house as Vivi tied Nami to Luffy's back. Sanji and Greg would go with them with Greg carrying Grace on his back. I thought you said you hated cold weather. Alveda said with a smirk. Shut up. Greg said as Noji Ko tied Grace to his back. The rest of us will stay here. Noji Ko said. We'll only slow you all down. Okay, Nami. Hold on tight. Luffy said. Okay. She said quietly. I can't stop you, but you should climb up the other side. Dalton said. The route to the top from here is full of lapins. They're giant violent, man-eating rabbits. If a pack attacks you, you're finished. Don't worry. We'll be safe. Luffy said. Yeah, I'll take care of them. Sanji said. Luffy? No G. Ko suddenly said before walking in front of Luffy with serious look. If anything happens to them, she started to say as her eyes betrayed her attitude. Luffy could see the fear in her eyes at the thought of losing Nami before she blinked. Make sure nothing happens to them. Got it. She said. Luffy looked at her before smiling. Got it. He said. Good. No G. Ko said before walking out of the way. Now get going. Let's go guys. Luffy said before he and the others going with him too off running. I wonder if they'll be okay. Dalton asked after a moment of silence. Those three will be fine. Usopp said. The question is whether Nami and Grace can hold out long enough. Vivi said. They will. No G. Ko said. I know my sister. She won't be beaten by some stupid illness. Everyone looked at her as she gazed at Luffy's group. Come inside. Dalton said. It's cold out here. I'm staying. No G. Ko said firmly. I'll stay too. Vivi said. Me too. Usopp said. Soon all of them stood outside in the cold with determined expressions, despite some of them shivering a bit. Dalton looked at them all before a small smile crossed his lips. Then I'll join you all. He said before sitting next to them all. Everyone was silent as they looked on as their friends were nearly out of sight. Things were different. Huh? Vivi asked. The doctors? Dalton said. There's a reason only one exists in this country. His eyes shifted to the ground before continuing. A few months ago, this country was destroyed by pirates. Pirates destroyed a whole country Jin asked. So that's why you wanted us to leave. Vivi said. Yes. Just the word pirate sends everyone here into a panic. Dalton said. The crew consisted of only five people. Their captain, a man calling himself Blackbeard, completely destroyed our country with ease. Only five people. Most of them said. Blackbeard? Usopp asked. Never heard of him. Alveda said, still in shock that five pirates could do that much damage. Still, most of us see it as a good thing. Dalton said. What's so good about one's country being destroyed? Vivi asked in astonishment. Yeah. That's crazy. Why is it good? Usopp asked. Because Dalton said. Before they came, this country was ruled by a tyrannical king who brought much pain to us all. Our country's name was Drum Kingdom. 
and our king was a cruel and spoiled man named Wapple. Wapple Vivi said as an image of Wapple flashed through their minds. Wait. You all know Wapple? Dalton asked. Yeah. Usopp said. He's just some jerk pirate that attacked us. Though, I drove him off. Usopp said which got him a fist to his foot, courtesy of Jin who was sitting down in the snow. Yeo. Don't take credit for things you didn't do. Jin said as Usopp hopped on one foot. Especially since it was the captain who did the deed. He did say something about wanting to get to Drum Kingdom. Alveda said. If it's Wapple, then it must be the man I met when I was little and went with my father to the Council of Kings. Vivi said. Council of Kings. Who are you? Dalton asked. Um anyway, I didn't see him, but I heard everyone call him Wapple. We ran into him yesterday on our way here. Dalton looked shocked at that bit of news. Are you serious? He asked. It doesn't make any sense. Vivi said. If your country is destroyed, why is your king alive and being a pirate? That's only a ruse. Dalton said. He's probably just sailing around these waters, waiting for the chance to return. So Wapple and his men were chased out and forced into piracy because they lost to the Blackbeard pirates. Vivi asked. Lost to them? TCH. Dalton said in disgust. When the pirates attacked, they didn't even try to fight. What do you mean? Vivi asked. The moment Wapple realized how strong they were, he fled his country faster than anyone else, leaving the rest of us at the hands of those pirates. Dalton said as his face twisted in anger at the memory. All the citizens despised him for his cowardice. What kind of king would abandon his country? Vivi shouted in outrage. All of the Strawats looked at her in shock. To just abandon everyone like that is unimaginable. I couldn't agree more. Dalton said. But because of this, Wapple's reign has finally ended. Now this island belongs to the people who remained. The towns, and our hope for a better country, are slowly coming back to us. That's why we fear Wapple's return. We cannot let that happen, no matter what. We must make this a better country. Everyone stared at him as some smiled at his statement. But Luffy's group. Luffy's group was steadily hiking up the mountains as the wind kept getting stronger. Geez. Stupid blizzard. Greg grumbled. You got that right. Sanji said. How can you walk around in just sandals and shorts Luffy? Sanji asked. It's my polymer. Luffy said. You mean policy? Sanji corrected. Yeah. Luffy said as they kept going, even with a baby lap and trying to attack them. They kept on walking and dodging while talking about why people in snow countries don't sleep and why women have white smooth skin. You two are a bunch of weirdos. Greg said after listening to them. He's the one saying stupid stuff about snow women. Luffy said. And your snow people never sleeping is any better. Sanji said before kicking the lapin away. Get out of here already. If that was supposed to be a lapin, I'm not impressed. Greg said before they kept going while sniffling a lot. Back in Big Horn. Vivi and the others were chatting before a big woman appeared and, to their horror, told them that Dr. Kariha had come down to a neighboring village. After hearing that, Dalton, Vivi, and Usopp went towards Coco Weed Village in an attempt to meet Dr. Kariha. While heading there, Dalton apologized for thinking she wouldn't come down so soon and for the lack of doctors. It's not your fault about the lack of doctors, Dalton. Vivi said. She's right. Usopp said. Now let's get going to Coco Weed. Near the Straw Hat ship. Mahahaha. <laughs> Laughed Wapple as his men took out the guard patrol. Ah. Drum Kingdom. As beautiful as it was when I left. Chess, how does my castle look? It looks to be okay. Chess said as he looked through some binoculars towards Drum Castle. Excellent. Wapple said with a grin. Time to return to my life as a king. He said before ordering his men towards Drum Castle, then yelling at his pet white Walky Robson for not moving. Wapple. One of his men shouted as he ran towards him. What is it? Wapple asked, still a bit agitated at Robson. Those pirates from yesterday are here. He said as he pointed at the straw hat ship. Their ship is right there. What? Wapple said. Those little bastards are here, even though they claim to not have heard of this island kill them all. It's empty. The soldier said. No one's on board or around it. Judging by the footprints, they went to Big Horn Your Majesty. Karamaremo said as Chess had his hand under his chin and thought as Wapple ordered them to go to Big Horn. Chess. Wapple yelled. What are you doing? Apologies my king. Chess said. That pirate with a straw hat from yesterday seems familiar somehow. You knew that guy and you didn't tell me Wapple bellowed. Not in person. Chess said. I think he might have been in the newspaper a while ago. Hey. Forget it. Wapple said before ordering everyone to continue on to Big Horn, none of them noticing an injured guard hurriedly limping away. But Luffy's group. Luffy and his group kept walking until they came across an entire herd of lapins the size of polar bears. Are these lapins? Sanji asked. This don't look good. 
Greg said as Luffy stared at the Lappins before looking at Sanji. Take Nami for a moment Sanji. Luffy said as he untied Nami from his waist and left her in Sanji's arms bridal style. Huh? What are you doing Luffy? Sanji asked. Luffy didn't answer as he walked toward the Lappins. One of the Lappins with a scar near his left eye lunged at Luffy, only to hit snow as Luffy dodged it. Don't tell me you're gonna fight them. Greg yelled as the Lappin raised its paw into the air while Luffy raised his own hand. Just before the paw hit Luffy, it stopped when Luffy glared at it and released a low-level wave of hockey. The Lappin glared at him before lowering its paw as they stared at each other. Move. Luffy said in a tone that said he meant business. The Lappin stared at Luffy before they all slowly moved on. What the fuck Greg asked in bafflement as he shivered. What did he do? Something called hockey. Sanji said as he tied Nami to Luffy's back. Let's go. Luffy said with a smile before they started walking. Greg just stared in shock while the Lappins from earlier kept following, but at a distance. In coca weed. She left. Usopp said. We just missed her. I'm afraid so. One of the villagers said. Do you happen to know where she went? Vivi asked. We heard it was Jayasta next. Another man said. Diasta? Dalton asked. Where's that? Usopp asked. On the other side of Bighorn. He said. We gotta go back. Usopp shouted. Dalton? Came a shout from the doorway as an injured man came stumbling in before collapsing. Dalton quickly ran over and caught him to keep him from hitting the floor. Aren't you with the patrol? Dalton asked. I'm all that's left of the patrol. The man wheezed out. A ship came out of nowhere and attacked us. Who did this? Dalton asked. It's it's Wapple. The man shouted. Wapples returned. Everyone in the building were now looking shocked and horrified at this before Dalton mounted a horse and rode off. Mr. Dalton. Wait. Vivi shouted. Dalton kept going before slowly changing into a bison and charged off to confront Wapple. Somewhere on the island. Ah man it's freezing. Zoro said. I followed those fish too far. Where am I? He asked himself before spotting a sleigh in front of him with a reindeer pulling it and an old woman sitting in it. Hey. I'm saved. Zoro said before walking towards them. Hey granny, mind giving me a lift? He asked before seeing her outfit. Why aren't you cold? He asked before Dr. Kariha motioned him to come closer with her finger. You should watch what you say. She said before punching him far away. I'm still in my youthful 130s. She said before leaving Zoro in the snow. In Big Horn. Wapples returned. Shouted a villager. Wapple? Jin asked. He and the rest of the straw hats that stayed in Bighorn were chatting in Dalton's house. You mean the king that everyone hates? Valerie asked. Judging by how the town's panicking, I'd say that it's the same guy. Alvita said before they all heard some gunfire. They all walked towards the windows and peeked out to see what was happening. They looked around until they saw a man standing on what looked like a white-furred hippo and laughing a lot. That's him. No G. Ko said as Wapple walked toward a building and did something that none of them saw coming. They watched as Wapple's mouth grew huge before biting down on the building, chewed it, and swallowed. What the did he just eat a house? Jin asked as Wapple finished the building before laughing. First a knife, then a house. Valerie said. What next? I'll devour that hag along with those straw hats. They heard Wapple bellow. Us apparently. No G. Ko said before Wapple started screaming in pain. Dalton. Some of the villagers yelled out. This ends here Wapple. Dalton said. Everyone stared at him as he, Chess, and Karamarimo spoke before Karamarimo ordered Wapple's personal doctors to heal him. Hey, I feel better. Wapple said after his quick surgery. Leave this island at once Wapple. Dalton demanded. This island doesn't need nor want people like us. That's King Wapple to you Dalton. Wapple stated before some of the villagers told him that Dalton cared for them, unlike he did. While they were talking, the straw hats walked outside and joined the crowd as Dalton spoke. Only outsiders wouldn't know of your decision to take the 20 best doctors this island had for yourself and either banish or kill the rest. Dalton said in disgust. That's the law. Wapple said like it wasn't a big deal. That's insanity. Dalton yelled. With you keeping all the doctors to yourself in your castle, everyone on this island had to grovel and pledge loyalty to you for medical attention. A law like that is nothing but a crime. Said enough. Wapple asked. Men. Kill the former captain of the guards. I owed a debt to your father, the former king, and had hoped you'd realize how horrible your actions were, but I see that you're a hopeless cause. Dalton said as he transformed into his a half-man a half-beast form. Watch it. It's the bison model of the ox-ox fruit. One of the guards yelled before they started firing at Dalton. Dalton effortlessly dodged them before taking out. He's good. Valerie whispered. Leave Wapple. Dalton demanded. A kingdom that would abandon its people at the first hint of danger is better off gone. 
Such nonsense. Chess said. The two of us and you used to be the three heads of staff. Don't you know it's useless to try and defeat us? Karamarimo said with a grin. Besides, I know you Dalton. Chess said as he pulled out his bow and pulled back three arrows on the bowstring. I know your weaknesses as well. What? Dalton said, now seeing that Chess was aiming at a crowd of citizens who came to fight with Dalton. No. He screamed in his head. Just before he could move, a gunshot rang out as Chess dropped his weapon before grabbing his arm. Ah! He screamed as blood trickled down his arm. The gunshot. Where did that come from? Which one of you did that? Wapple shouted. Over here. Came a voice in the crowd. Wapple and his men looked as the crowd parted to show Jin holding a smoking gun in his hand. That's one of the straw hats. Karamarimo shouted as the other straw hats joined him. So, you punks decided to show yourselves huh? Wapple said before grinning. Good. Now I have less of you to hunt down. Take aim men. Soon, all of Wapple's men were aiming at the four before a low rumbling could be heard. Everyone stared at the mountains where the sound was coming from before they saw the snow start coming down. An avalanche. Someone shouted before everyone ran for cover. Wapple, Chess, and Karamarimo got onto Robson before trying to flee from the avalanche, leaving everyone else behind. As everyone fled toward safety, Dalton noticed no G Ko staring at the avalanche with nothing but horror filling her eyes. Miss. What are you doing? Dalton shouted. That caught the attention of her friends, who looked back before running to retrieve her. Hama no G Ko. Alvita shouted as she grabbed her arm. What's wrong with you? Valerie shouted. That's the direction that the others took towards the doctor. No G Ko said. The other three's eyes widened at that, now knowing what was on her mind as they dragged her to safety. Nami please be okay. No G Ko thought. But Luffy's group moments earlier. Luffy and friends kept hiking up the mountain, while Greg kept sniffling his nose. I hate winter. He grumbled before he felt a sneeze coming. Guys get away. He shouted before sneezing, which exploded right in front of him. What happened? Sanji asked after jumping away. Everything about me is a bomb. Greg said. Even my breath. He said before feeling another one coming. Achoo. He sneezed, causing another explosion. Sanji walked up behind him and grabbed Grace to keep her out of harm's way as Greg kept sneezing. Ah. I hate the cold. It makes me sneeze too much. He said before going into a sneezing fit, sending explosions out with each sneeze. Hold it in already. Sanji yelled. You're gonna he said before hearing the low rumbling and going pale. Cause an avalanche. Luffy's group began racing down the mountain in an attempt to escape from the avalanche, which was thundering down the mountain after them. You dumb shit. Sanji yelled. Would you have to cause an avalanche? Shut up. I didn't do it on purpose. Greg yelled back. Run you guys. Luffy yelled as they kept on running. Over there. Sanji yelled as he looked to see a small cliff above where the snow was. They raced towards it and managed to get onto it, only to have the snow climb higher than the man pushed them off. Luffy managed to grab Sanji and Greg in midair, before jumping onto a tree as they were now snowboarding down the mountain, along with a bunch of lapins. Are they gonna try and kill us again, Greg yelled. If they do, I'll kill them. Sanji yelled before they all noticed another cliff right in front of them with broken trees on it. Shit. If the women hit that, they're dead. Any ideas Greg yelled. Just one. Luffy yelled before grabbing Sanji and Greg by the back of their coats, before jumping off the tree and kept on jumping. Moonwalk. Greg and Sanji, who hadn't seen this before, were now staring at the ground as Luffy was now jumping in place as the avalanche moved under them. How are you fucking doing this? They both shouted at Luffy, who only grinned back. It took a while, but the avalanche finally stopped before Luffy jumped down to the snow and set Sanji and Greg down. Come on guys. Luffy said with a smile before walking back up the mountain. How'd he do that? Greg asked. No idea. Sanji said before lighting a cigarette to calm himself down. But he's right. We gotta get moving. He said before they both went after Luffy. Back in Big Horn. The avalanche had covered the whole village to the point where only the tips of the houses could be seen. It was silent until a giant mouth burst up through the snow. Bleh. Wapple said before spitting Chess, Karamarimo, and Robson out. You guys taste awful. He went on how it must have been the rest of the straw hats who went up the mountain earlier, who must have done this before scowling as he said he would show them how to fight in the snow country. After Wapple and his two lackeys mounted Robson, Wapple found a few of his men and ordered them to spread the word to the rest of his men that they were to find and capture the straw hat still in Bighorn for him to devour later before heading off towards Drum Castle. Somewhere in the mountains. The baby Lappin from earlier was desperately digging at the snow where a giant paw was sticking out from. His little paws were red with pain, yet he kept digging before hearing the snow crunch behind him. He turned to see Luffy's group walking towards him before growling at them. 
they stopped in front of him as they stared down at him for a moment before Luffy reached for him. The baby Lappin covered his head and closed his eyes, only to open them a moment later and see Luffy pulling the adult Lappin out of the snow. Luffy let the Lappin go as the baby hugged it while Luffy's group kept on walking. Would you help that Lappin? Greg asked. If I hadn't, the baby would have been all alone. Luffy said. Being alone is painful. Neither Greg nor Sanji said anything about that as they kept walking. And you? Came a voice behind them. They looked behind to see Wapple and his men approaching before stopping in front of them. Now I've got you bastards. Wapple yelled before going on about how he would chew them to pieces until Luffy and his friends walked right past him. Hey. Sorry man, but we're busy. Greg said. These ladies need a doctor so by. Sanji said. Wapple looked infuriated at them before looking at Jess. Jess. New law. Anyone who ignores the king dies. He yelled. Kill those ladies since they've been ignoring me the most. What? Sanji and Greg said before glaring at them. Yes Lord Wapple. Said his men before they started attacking. Luffy and Greg ran while Sanji did his best to fight back before running with them. This is their turf. Sanji growled as they kept running. I can't fight them. I'd fight, but I might start another avalanche. Greg yelled. Keep going. Luffy ordered before Wapple jumped out of the snow next to them. Watch out. He yelled before all three jumped, only to see Wapple's men jump out of the snow and ready to kill. Sanji and Greg looked on horror while Luffy grinned under his hat as he sensed the Lappin's approach before swatting Chess and Karamarimo away. Lappin Wapple yelled. Did they just protect them? Karamarimo asked as he got back up. No way. Lappins never help humans. They're wild animals. Chess argued. Luffy, Greg, and Sanji looked back and stared at the Lappin with a scar near its left eye with the baby on its shoulder. Is that? Sanji said before both Lappins raised and pumped their arms. Thanks giant rabbits. Luffy shouted before they took off running, leaving the Lappins to deal with Wapple and his men. They kept on going for what seemed like hours as the wind blew against them until they finally came to the base of the giant mountain. We made it to the mountain. Sanji said as he looked up with a grim look as a thought crossed his mind. Now how are we gonna get up there? No way we can climb this. Greg said. I can. Luffy said after kicking off his sandals. Are you crazy? Sanji asked. There's nothing to grab onto to climb up. Yes there is. Luffy said after finding some tiny ridges on the mountain before climbing up effortlessly a few feet before looking back at them. Grab on. Grab on. Greg asked. To what? My feet. Luffy said while his fingers turned black. You've gotta be joking. Greg yelled. No he's not joking. Sanji said, knowing the serious look in Luffy's eyes. Hurry up you two. Said Luffy as he looked up the mountain. We gotta get Nami and Grace to the doctor. Sanji just looked at his captain before sighing and grabbing his left leg. If you fall, I'm gonna kill you before we hit the bottom. Sanji said. You're crazy. Greg said, now thinking the- See? Luffy said with a grin. We'll get there, no problem. Minus three hours later. Luffy was still climbing while the other two hung on for dear life. Nami was still tied to Luffy's back, Grace was tied to Greg's back, and Sanji and Greg held onto Luffy's legs and were talking to keep their minds off how high they were. So you wanna be be a five fireman? Sanji stuttered as the cold was getting to him and Greg. Yeah. Greg said. It's be been my dream since I w was younger. He stuttered. That's wh why I volunteered to j joined you guys up the mountain. I can see the top. Luffy said. All three of them looked to see the top just a little further away. Luffy kept on climbing until he managed to pull them to the top before Sanji and Greg let go of his legs. Nice castle. Sanji said. All three men were chilled to the bone as they slowly started walking towards the castle. They got halfway there before Sanji and Greg's strength gave out and fell to their knees. So close. Greg said before he passed out. Gotta get the ladies to the doctor. Sanji said, fighting to stay awake. Hang on guys. Luffy said before picking them up in each arm. We're almost there. He started walking before he saw two figures approaching and smiled. Looks like we've got some patience chopper. Said Dr. Kariha as she looked at Luffy. Climbing up three miles of mountain in only that. You must be crazy kid. It's nothing. Luffy said as he wobbled a bit, now starting to feel his strength go as well. Please help my friends. He said, causing Chopper to look at him. Don't worry boy. She said. You and your friends will be okay. Luffy smiled before setting his friends down and falling down in the snow. Let's get to work Chopper. She said. Somewhere on the island. Hum on Usopp. Vivi grunted as she pulled Usopp out of the snow. She and Usopp went chasing after Dalton, only to get lost before the avalanche came. Vivi, stop shouting. Usopp said with a strange smile on his face. I'm having a wonderful dream. 
I see a world full of beautiful flowers unlike any I've ever seen. That's heaven. Vivi shouted as she started slapping him. Wake up. A-H-H. -H. Usopp shouted before falling back asleep. It's another great adventure of the Usopp pirates. He mumbled. No Mr. Usopp. Don't die. Vivi yelled in panic before slapping him until he finally woke up. Thanks for helping me Vivi. Usopp said as he reached up to his swollen face. But why does my face hurt a lot? Nothing. She said. I'm just glad you're alive. It's only frostbite. Anyway, let's find the others. She said before seeing something jump up from under the snow. What now? Usopp shrieked before they saw it was Zoro. Snow. Where'd all those flowers go? Zoro mumbled before seeing Vivi there. Oh. Hey Vivi and he said as he stared at Usopp's swollen face, recognizing him because of his nose. Hey, Usopp. Why are you here? That's our line. They yelled. Soon, all three were now walking and arguing about Zoro swimming in the river and getting lost before he begged them for some of their clothing. Look. Vivi shouted. Those houses we're back at Bighorn. She said. They kept walking until they heard screaming and started running and joined the villagers who were hiding from the chaos. What's going on? Alton and those pirates from before are fighting against Wapple's men. One of them said before seeing Zoro in only pants. You do realize it's freezing outside, don't you? Let's help them. Zoro said as he started walking through the crowd and saw everything. Dalton was back in his half and half form and slashing at some of Wapple's men, Jin was smashing another in the ribs with his tonfa, and Alveda was calming walking towards another as he shot at her, only to have the bullet slip away from her. Looks like they're doing fine. Usopp said before they heard some villagers yelling. Alright. Throw down your weapons, or we'll open fire. One of the soldiers yelled as he and four other soldiers were now aiming at some of the villagers. HMPH. Can't stop us, so you're aiming at the weak. Jin asked in annoyance. Shut up. He yelled before grinning. It's your fault for not surrendering when we told you to earlier. Anyone want to play hero now, step up. He shouted. Faster than anyone could blink, Zoro came out of nowhere and smashed the guy's jaw with his fist, knocking him out. Mr. Bushido. Vivi shouted. Zoro. Alvita said in confusion. Are you mad? They'll shoot the villagers. One of them shouted. Ah. These clothes are warm. Zoro said, now wearing the soldier's uniform and laughing. You stole his clothes. Many of them shouted while Zoro took the soldier's sword. Who's first? Zoro asked. We warned you. Shouted one of the soldiers as they prepared to fire at the villagers. Special attack. Exploding star. Shouted Usopp before the four other soldiers were hit with explosions. With the villagers safe, the straw hats began to whip the soldiers' asses. In the castle. Nami and Grace were lying in bed with ice bags on their heads. Nami slowly began to wake up and look around too until she saw a strange creature walking around. Who are you? She asked, causing the creature to jump back away from her and crash into some furniture before running and hiding. Nami just looked at him while he looked back at her while shaking and poorly hiding. You're doing it wrong. She said, making him gasp and correct himself. Too late. I know you're there. Be quite human. Chopper shouted. And how are you feeling? He asked before Dr. Kari had yelled at him and he fled. Awake now, are we? Dr. Kariha asked with a smile and a laugh. Feeling better. Who are you? Nami asked as Kariha felt her forehead with a finger while drinking. Looks like your fever's gone down. Good. She said. I'm Dr. Kariha. Call me Doctorine. Doctor? Then we're. You wish to know about my youth? Kariha asked. I didn't ask about that. Nami said. You two are in the castle atop the mountain. Kariha said. Do. Grace. Nami said before looking around and seeing Grace resting comfortably next to her and sighing in relief. She's okay too. Where are the other three guys who were with us? Sleeping in the next room. Kariha said. Such loud snores too. You two aren't any quieter. Grace said from under the covers. Heh. Sorry for talking too loud. Nami said as Grace sat up and looked around. Feeling better? Yeah. Grace said before Kariha came over and lifted Nami's shirt and Grace's right sleeve. Here's the problem. Kariha said. What is it? Nami asked. The both of you were bitten by an insect called Kestia. When it bites someone, it'll spread a bacteria into that person's body. For five days, said person suffers from a high fever as the poison spreads throughout your body. Judging from these wounds, you both were bitten three days ago. If left untreated, you'd be resting peacefully in the afterlife. Kariha explained, causing Nami and Grace to gulp in fear. It was known as the five days fever, but Kestia was supposed to have gone extinct 100 years ago. I kept the antibiotic just in case. Where'd you two come from, some ancient jungle? I I I I I. What the heck? 
Kariha asked as all three were now staring at the door to the next room. That voice. Nami thought. Luffy. No. You bastard. Get away from my friends. Shouted Luffy from the next room. Octarine. Help. This guy's going crazy. Came Chopper's voice. Luffy. Nami yelled as she tried to get Ufa bed. Stay there. Kariha said as she pushed her back into bed. You're still sick. I look. She said before going into the next room. What's going on here? This guy won't stop thrashing around. Chopper said as he, along with Greg and Sanji, were now trying to calm Luffy down. He's not even awake. Chopper said as Kariha walked over. Calm down Luffy. Sanji shouted as Greg was threatening to bomb him to shut him up. Let him go. She said in a calm voice before jumping towards them. All three jumped out of the way before Kariha kicked Luffy through the wall into the next room. Shut up already. She shouted as Luffy flew into the next room before hitting the wall and falling to the floor. He didn't move for a moment before sitting up and looking around, his eyes full of nothing but fear as he tried to catch his breath. Noisy one. Kariha said. Wah? Luffy said before seeing Kariha, Chopper, Greg, and Sanji look through the wall at him. He sighed in relief before falling back to the floor. Just a nightmare. Luffy said. Luffy? Nami asked as she and Grace walked into the room with a blanket covering them. Nami? Grace? Sanji said, glad to see the girls okay. How are you feeling? Better. Nami said and Grace gave a small smile. Didn't I tell you two to stay in bed? Kariha said. You still need to rest for three days. We can't wait here for three days. Nami said. We have to she said before Kariha jumped her and pinned her to the floor with a scalpel at her throat. My patients leave either when they're cured or dead. Take your pick. Kariha said. Back down at Big Horn. The Straw Hats and Dalton had finished fighting Wapple's men before they started looking for anyone who got buried under the snow. Hey, where's Valerie and Noji Ko? Usopp asked. Noji Ko took off after Luffy's group after they dug her out of the snow, and Valerie chased after her. Jin said. What? Vivi shouted. Why would Noji Ko go after them? Probably to see if Nami's okay. Zoro said. They are sisters after all. Where are you going Dalton? One of the villagers asked. To fight Wapple. Dalton said as he started walking towards the mountain. If Wapple isn't stopped now, we'll never be free from his tyranny. He's right. Another villager shouted. Soon, others had grabbed some weapons from the soldiers, ready to fight alongside Dalton to be rid of Wapple for good. If we're going up there, we can take the lift. Another man said. The lift? Dalton asked. Yes. We recently found a ropeway tied to Dr. Kariha's old house near Jayasta. He said. Then let's be off to Jayasta. Dalton said, earning a roar from the villagers. You do that. We're gonna go find our friends. Usopp said as he and the other straw hat started walking off towards the mountains. Some of you go with them. Dalton said. When they find their friends, lead them to Jayasta. Right. Some of them said before prepping a sleigh and following them. With no G Ko and Valerie. Will you stop no G Ko? Valerie shouted. No G Ko didn't answer her as she kept running towards the mountain, determined to find Nami. They kept running until a gust of wind blew Noji Ko back a bit, giving Valerie a chance to tackle her to the ground. Get off me. She shouted as she tried to get up. No. Valerie said, increasing her weight so that they sank into the snow and pinned Noji Ko to the ground. You're gonna get killed either by the Lapins or this freezing cold. I don't care. Noji Ko shouted as she struggled. Let me go. Let me Noji Ko said before she stopped struggling. She stared up at Valerie as her eyes welled up before she started crying. Nami. She shouted as Valerie looked down at her. She watched as Noji Ko cried out Nami's name in worry before pulling her into a hug. She's with Luffy. Valerie said as Noji Ko hugged her back and cried. I haven't been on your crew very long, but something tells me that Luffy will get her to the doctor safely. Noji Ko calmed down a little as she buried her head into Valerie's shoulder. They both stayed like that until they heard something coming towards them. Hey. Shouted Usopp from the sleigh. He and the other straw hats were racing towards them until the stop next to them. Jump in. They found a ropeway up the mountain. All right. Valerie said before looking at Noji Ko. Come on. We'll go see your sister. Right. Noji Ko said as they stood up and got in the sleigh before they started off towards Jayasta. Hey Valerie. Yeah. She said. Thanks. Noji Ko said with a smile, which Valerie smiled right back. What were you thinking? Alvida asked. Going off into a blizzard like that. I went because I worried about my sister okay. Noji Ko said. Every day that Nami was out getting money to pay off Arlong, I always kept worrying that she'd get in over her head, and she said, unable to finish. So with her getting sick, plus that avalanche earlier, Zoro said. You couldn't sit back anymore huh? Right. Noji Ko said. 
If I were to lose Nami I just can't think stomach the thought. Don't worry. You'll see her when we get to the castle up there. Usopp said. No G. Ko looked to see all of them smiling at her. Yeah. She said as she rubbed her eyes and smiled. You're right. Pass the door and after them. Now I'm really scared. Gray said, looking a little blue in the face. Moments later. It took a while, but the trio had finally managed to get away from Dr. Kariha. That that hag is crazy. Greg wheezed. Is she really a doctor? Sanji asked before the two shivered and saw that the whole castle was cold and full of snow. Who left the door open? Sanji demanded. Let's close it. I'm freezing. Greg said as he walked over towards it. Stay away from that door. Someone screamed. All three of them looked up to see Chopper looking down at them. Get away. These want the door open. Sanji said. Forget it. Greg said as he walked closer. Don't close it. Luffy said as he looked up at the top of the door. You'll hurt them. Both of them followed his line of sight until they spotted a nest full of baby snowbirds chirping. Oh, so that's why they leave it open. Sanji said. Fine. I won't touch the door. Greg said before the wind blew and they both ran back inside shivering. Let's go join Nami and Grace. Sanji said. Okay Luffy dot 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 Luffy. Sanji said looking around. Now where'd he go? Who cares? Greg said as he rubbed his arms. Let's get out this cold. Back with Nami and Grace. Sanji and Greg had rejoined the women before Kari had joined in. Both Sanji and Greg looked ready to run before they saw that she was unarmed. That friend of yours with the straw hat is an energetic one. She said as they heard Luffy and Chopper yelling and running around the castle. Also, what's with you trying to take him with you? We need your permission. Nami said with a smile. Hee hee. Kariha laughed. Take him with you. I don't care. But it won't be easy. She said. Everyone looked at her as she went on. Inside his heart is a wound that even a doctor can't heal. She then began to explain Chopper's past. But Chopper and Luffy. Why won't you leave me alone? Chopper yelled as Luffy found him hiding in a room. Cause you're a really cool guy and I like you. Luffy said with a grin. Come on Chopper. Join my crew. It'll be fun. You like me? Chopper asked as he stared at Luffy. Yep. You'd make a great pirate, so join us. Luffy said. Chopper frowned before running away again. I don't want to be a pirate or your friend. Chopper shouted. Luffy only smiled before chasing him again. He kept chasing him around the castle before he spotted his weakness. Food. Alright. I'm starving. Luffy said as he sat down and ate. While he ate, Chopper looked out from behind a crate. Are you really a pirate? He asked. Yep. Sure am. Luffy said after downing the food. Luffy then began to tell Chopper about all the amazing things that a pirate can do. Wow. Chopper said softly as he stared at Luffy. And there's still so much more than that out there. Luffy said with a grin. So come Cho Luffy stopped talking and sat there quietly with his hat shadowing his eyes. Huh? Chopper said. What's wrong? We've got company. Luffy said as he stood up and started walking. Company? Chopper asked before his eyes widened and his fur stood on end. That scent. He thought before running off in his walk point. Back with Nami's group. Everyone had listened to Kariha's story about Chopper's past as she finished. All of them were quiet as they let all of that sink in. Now that you know, do you think you can heal the wound in his heart? Kariha asked before Chopper burst through the door. Doctorine. Chopper yelled. Wapples back. Is that so? Kariha said. Where's Luffy? Nami asked. Huh? Chopper said. He was walking towards the entrance. Outside the castle. Luffy was outside waiting as Wapple and his men appeared on top of the mountain and in front of the castle. Mahahaha. <laughs> Drum castle. As amazing as it was when I left. Wapple laughed. Time to retake my throne. He said Chess noticed something on top of the castle. Lord Wapple. Up on top of the castle. Chess said. Wapa looked up to see a pirate flag with cherry blossoms on it waving in the wind on top of the castle. What? Where's Drum Kingdom's flag? Wapa demanded. I've already burned that rag. Kariha said as she walked outside the castle with Chopper next to her. Sanji and Greg joined as well with bored looks on their faces. Oh, these losers again. Sanji said before spotting Luffy leaning against the wall. Dr. Kariha. Wapa shouted. The last doctor in my doctor hunt. Now I can finally be rid of you. Drum Kingdom's dead. Kariha said as she grinned at Wapple. There's been too much suffering and misery under your rule. Now leave. Drum Kingdom dead Wapple said before laughing. Mahaha. Don't make me laugh. The only death around here would be yours. And that goes for those annoying straw hats next to you. You know this guy. Kariha asked as she lifted her glasses and looked at Luffy's group. Something like that. Sanji said as he lit up a cigarette. 
he was some stupid pirate that ambushed us out at sea. Didn't do much since our captain sent him flying almost immediately. Don't ignore us. Chess shouted. Now, to reclaim my throne. Wapple said before laughing as he stared up at his castle, not noticing Luffy had appeared in front of him and punched him in the face. Wapple sama Chess and Karamurimo shouted as they dove after Wapple and grabbed his legs before he fell off the mountain. That was close. Wapple said as the others stared at what happened. I didn't even see him move. Kuri has said in actual surprise as Chopper captured Luffy. About time someone shut that moron up. Greg said. How dare you? Karamurimo shouted. Have you the slightest idea of who it is you just attacked? This isn't just some commoner. Chess shouted. This man is Wapple. The king of Drum Island. Shame on you for striking him, you straw hat bastard. He shouted before mumbling under his breath. Wait. That sounds familiar. Who cares? Luffy said in a calm tone. People like him make me sick. Now I remember. Chess shouted just as Wapple shouted and got back up. Remember what Chess? Wapple seed as he glared at Luffy. I told you before Wapple Sama that I read about him from somewhere. Now I remember why. Chess yelled as he pointed a finger at Luffy. That kid was the one who attacked the Goa Kingdom of Dawn Island. This got everyone's attention except for Sanji, who'd already of this before. You're right. Karamurimo said. In fact, the recent newspapers identified him as the culprit. So that's it huh, Wapple asked with a grin. You like going around and attacking royalty huh? I didn't even touch them. Luffy said. I broke in, stole their food, and broke out. The only that got attacked were the guards that tried to stop me. Then why would the paper say you attacked them? Chess shouted, thinking that Luffy was lying. Luffy grinned under his hat before looking at them. Because I told them that they can't hide behind the world government forever. He said. After I become the Pirate King, I'm gonna tear the world government apart. Silence filled the area the wind blew before Wapple started laughing. Mahahaha. <laughs> it's so funny I can't stop laughing. He said before Luffy kicked him in the gut, sending him flying back and slamming into Robson, who went flying off until he was a star in the sky. Wonder if it flew another farther than last time. Luffy thought as he looked out into the sky. Why you little Karamurimo said as he lunged at Luffy with spikes sticking out of the afros on his hands, while Chess shot a flaming arrow at him. Their attacks hit him dead on as they smiled while the others shouted out in worry, only for them all to stare in wonder, or horror, that Luffy was fine while the arrow and spikes broke. What are you doing? Luffy asked as they backed away. That's it. Wapple said as he got up. Now I'm pissed. Wapple sama The two henchmen said as Wapple stood up and spat out some blood. Now I'm gonna show you the true power of my munch munch fruit. In the lift heading for Drum Castle. The rest of the straw hats, along with Dalton and some villagers, were slowly ascending up the mountain. I really hope that Nami and Grace got to the doctor in time. Vivi said in worry. Me too. No G. Ko said as she sat down with her knees to her chest. Don't worry. Usopp said. I bet that by the time we get up there, they'll be healthier than they were before they became ill. Vivi just looked at him before he continued. We just gotta trust Luffy. He said with a smile. Vivi looked at them all as the straw hats, even no G. Ko, all smiled back at her. He's right. She thought. I'm worrying too much. Thank you Usopp. Now come on. Pedal faster. Usopp said. There's too many people on this lift. The villager grumbled. Back at Drum Castle. Jess. Wapple said. Read back what I ate for breakfast this morning. He ordered. Chess then pulled out a book and read back and read what Wapple had eaten. Two cannons, cannonballs and gunpowder, and a house. What kind of breakfast is that? Sanji asked. I'll believe he eats knives, Greg said after seeing it happen before. But no way can he eat all that. Think again. Wapple said with a grin. I've eaten the munch munch fruit. Observe. Munch munch shock. He cried out as he began to transform. Everything I eat becomes a part of me. He said as he transformed into a giant house with windows, a door, a chimney coming out of his head, and a cannon for each of his arms. Wapple house. He turned into a house. Sanji asked in disbelief as Greg's glasses slipped down his face, revealing a wide-eyed expression full of disbelief. The show's not over yet. Wapple declared as he eyed Chess and Karamurimo. Munch, munch. He cried out before chomping down on them both and starting chewing. Now he's eating his own men. Sanji cried out as Greg's glasses slipped off completely and fell into the snow. That's just mean. Luffy said as Wapple danced around while steam came out of his chimney and arms. The door in his stomach then opened as a pair of voices came out. Behold. The strongest warrior of Drum Kingdom. Cried out the voices as the two men came out as one person. Chesmarimo. Are you sitting on his shoulders? Sanji asked, not at all impressed. Greg just fascipimed after Luffy commented how that was awesome. Careful. Kuri has said, getting their attention. 
it's because of them that no one in this kingdom could fight back. Article 1 of Drum Kingdom. Those who defy the king are punished with death. Wapple said. After you're all dead, nothing will stop me from re-establishing Drum Kingdom. And I'll start with that quack's flag. He said as he pointed his cannon arm to the sky. Just before he launched a cannonball however, he felt his spirit freeze up before he found himself down on one knee alongside Chesmaremo. W what? He thought as he felt like he blacked out for a moment. Don't even think about it. Luffy growled as he glared at Wapple. Everyone was now staring at Luffy as a few of them rubbed their arms. Kariha stared at Luffy while Chopper backed up a step away from Luffy. What just happened? Greg asked as felt colder than before. Something called Conqueror's Hockey. Sanji said as he puffed on his cigarette to calm his nerves. He still wasn't used to that. You guys are nothing but a bunch of fake pirates. Luffy said. This flag is a symbol of faith. It's one that you pledge your life to. That stupid pirate decoration. Wapa laughed. What kind of nonsense are you talking about? It's only nonsense to you because you're a moron. Luffy yelled. HMPH. I'm a king. I don't have to listen to you prattle on about some stupid flag. Wapa yelled as he raised his arm again. If I say that flag comes down, it comes down. He shouted before firing a cannonball at the flag. Chopper watched in horror as the cannonball sped towards his father's flag before an explosion engulfed it. Wapa laughed as they all looked, only to see Luffy up there in front of the flag with a smoking hand out. Huh. How'd he get up there so fast? Chesmaremo said as Luffy glared down at them. Chopper just stared up and awed Luffy along with the others. I don't know whose flag this is, and I don't care. Luffy yelled. This flag is a promise to risk your life. It's not a mere decoration you fly as a joke. He said. Someone like you who doesn't understand that can never harm this flag. Luffy roared with a mixture of rage and hockey that caused both Wapple and Chismarimer to shake where they stood. That's a pirate. Chopper thought. He's amazing. Hey Chopper. Luffy called out with a grin. I'm gonna kick their asses. You in? Me? Chopper asked. Moron. Wapple yelled. I'll blow both you and that flag to pieces. He shouted. Hey fatso. Sanji yelled. Wapa looked to see Greg jumping as Sanji spun a leg around. Everyone watched as Greg was now standing on Sanji's leg. Hope your aim's good. Greg said. Don't worry. Sanji said with a grin. Bombardier shot. Sanji cried out as he sent Greg flying towards Wapa with a kick before using a full body explosion. Smoke filled the area as Greg walked out of it as if nothing had happened. Nice kick. Greg said. Sanji grinned before Luffy started shouting. Look out. Luffy yelled, but it came too late. Out of the smoke came to flaming arrows, each hitting both Greg and Sanji. Both fell to the ground in pain as Luffy jumped down and looked at them in panic. The snow put out the flames, but they were still bleeding. You guys okay? The wounds aren't fatal. Kariha said as she walked over and looked at them. Greg got an arrow through his shoulder while Sanji got on in his thigh. They'll need some surgery though. Thought that it was gonna be that easy huh? Said a voice from the smoke. Everyone watched as the smoke cleared and showed both Wapal and Chesmarimo standing. Both were hurt from the blast, but not enough to be knocked out. Shit. Greg grumbled. Mahahaha. Wapal laughed. That explosion was nothing. The one that quack Dr. Herlick used to kill himself was better. That was the last straw for Chopper. That's enough. Don't you dare make fun of my father. He roared as he went to strike Wapal, but was blocked by Chesmarimo. Hands the off the king freak. Chesmarimo said. You must be that yet that the villagers shot at huh? Trying to fit in with humans won't work for you. No one's gonna wanna be friends with you. Wrong. Luffy said. He's already got friends. Me and my crew. Chopper looked back at him, as if he couldn't believe he would say that. Hey Chopper, I'm gonna take down Big Mouth. Think you can handle that weirdo? He asked. Piece of cake. Chopper said. Eh, bring it on Freak. Chesmarimo said. My name is Tony Tony Chopper. Not Freak. Chopper yelled. It's the name the greatest doctor in the world gave me. He may have forgiven you for trying to destroy his flag, but I won't. He shouted as he pulled out a rumble ball. I'll finish you in three minutes he said before chomping down on the little yellow ball. Eh, just try and defeat me. Chesmarimo shouted. I know all of your transformations. Everyone was now watching the fight as Chopper used his three normal transformations, plus his four others with the rumble ball, to battle Chesmarimo. What's wrong with him? Kariha asked as Luffy was watching Chopper with stars in his eyes. Even though he'd seen it all before, Chopper's transformations were still cool, none of them noticing Wapple slip away. At the end of the three minutes, Chopper finally ended the fight by attacking Chesmarimo's weak spot and knocking him out. Nice job reindeer. Greg said with a bored look. Awesome Chopper. Luffy yelled out. Chopper looked at him before smiling. Hey, where's Big Mouth? Sanji asked. 
Everyone looked to see Wapple had disappeared. His pet's gone, so he couldn't climb down the mountain. Curry has said. He must have slipped into the castle. Sanji said. The ladies are in there. He shouted before crawling, declaring threats to Wapple if he hurt them as Greg and Luffy ran in as well. They're gonna hurt themselves if they keep moving like that. Curry has said. Doctorine. Chopper said. Kariha looked at him as his eyes were hidden under his hat. That guy said I was his friend. In the castle. What happened to my castle? Wapple yelled as he looked around at all the snow inside his castle. They'll pay for this. He growled before seeing Nami and Gray slowly walk out of a door. We gotta get out of here. Nami whispered. We can't stay here for three days. But if that doctor finds us, she'll kill us. Grace whispered back. Hold it. Wapple yelled. They both looked down at him as he grinned at them. You two must be friends of the Straw Hats. Nope. Never heard of them. Nami quickly said, feeling that this guy wasn't a nice one. We're just a traveling navigator and artist. Is that so? Wapple said. Yes. Nice meeting you. Nami said as she and Grace started walking away. Bye then. Wapple said before climbing a pillar and chasing them. Liar. He shouted as he chased them to a staircase before getting stuck. Crap. I'm stuck. He said. Let's get out of here. Gray said. Munch munch. Wapple cried before his lower jaw flipped up as his body began to disappear inside his jaw. A little bone and muscle shifting. He said before popping out a thin man. Wapple slim. He said before pouncing on the girls and licking his lips. Now, which one of you do I eat first? He asked. How about you eat this? Luffy shouted as Luffy kicked him away with his foot. How'd he get thin? He asked, never understanding that part. Thanks Luffy. Gray said as Luffy helped them both up. Nami Swan. Little Grace. Sanji called out as he crawled into the giant room. Are you both alright? We're fine Sanji. Nami said. Not for long. Wapple shouted as he stood in front of a giant door. This is the weapons room. After I devour all these weapons, they'll become part of me. Now I'll finish you off. He shouted before reaching for his key, only to discover in horror that it was gone. They all stared at him as he started back with a blank look before running again. Will you stop running and fight? Luffy yelled as he chased after him. Wapple kept running until he got into a room where a tarp was covering something. Luffy shortly ran in after him, knowing what was coming and smiled. Time to kick your ass. Luffy said. That's what you think. Wapple said. Die. He shouted as he pulled the lever to a giant cannon that was aimed at Luffy. The weapon started up, but then let Ufa hiss as it died down. Wapple just stared at it as he threw the switch a few more times, before his eyes bugged out and he had a strange smile on his face, as if he couldn't believe his luck. He kept throwing it before some birds started chirping from inside the cannon, and he got the same expression before a family of snowbirds flew out. Snowbirds. Wapple said as his jaw dropped. Luffy looked on before he started laughing, finding it funny all over again, as Wapple yelled at him to shut up before trying to eat the bird, only for Luffy to close his mouth with his hand. Doesn't matter if you're a king, a god, or some random person. Luffy said. Because I'm a pirate. Fool. Wapple said. Don't you know that Drum Kingdom is part of the world government, if you attack me, you'll be he didn't finish the rest before Luffy squeezed his mouth so hard he felt that his jaw was gonna get crushed. That's what I hate most about people like you. Luffy said with a serious expression. Assholes like you running to the government hoping that they'll take care of something that you can't. Now I'm gonna finish this fight. He said. Seeing as how Luffy wasn't bothered by this, Wapple tried to eat him, only to find his mouth being kept away by Luffy's stretching fingers. Not gonna work. Luffy said. No. But this will. Munch munch tongue cannon. Wapple cried out as his tongue changed into a cannon and he fired. The smoke cleared as Wapple laughed, thinking that victory was his. Mahahaha. He got blown away. Wapple laughed. Missed me. Luffy said from behind him. Wapple gasped as he looked behind him as Luffy grabbed onto him and spun himself around. Gum goo and bogun. He shouted as he launched Wapple into the ceiling. Wapple was stuck in a daze until he looked and saw Hirolik's flag waving in the wind before he saw Luffy climbing up towards him. Doctorine. Chopper said as he looked up at the castle. Yes. Curry has said. This country was defeated by the skull and crossbones. This is for messing with that flag. Time to say goodbye. He said before stretching his arms far back. Gum gum. He said as Wapple pleaded to him to stop as he offered him status and power. Luffy didn't listen as he brought his arms forward. Bazakaya. He cried out as his attack sent Wapple flying into the sky until he couldn't be seen. The lift slowly made its way up the mountain before finally arriving. I'll go make sure it's safe. Usopp said before shoving Zoro in front of him. Stop it. Zoro said. Just supporting you Zoro. 
Usopp said as his legs shook before he was pushed out of the way by Noji Ko, who was practically sprinting towards the castle. Seems we've got more guests. Kariha said as she saw everyone coming before something hit the snow and caused it to fly around and cover some of them. Hey guys. Luffy called as he got up. What's wrong Noji Ko? Where's Nami? She demanded. The girls are inside. Kariha said as she pointed towards the castle with her thumb. Their fevers are gone and they'll be just fine. Really? No G. Ko said, looking ready to cry. You okay? Kariha said. That's because Nami's her sister. Luffy said. Where's Wapple? Dalton demanded as he and the other villagers all looked ready for a fight. Gone. Luffy said with a grin. I just sent him flying. You mean that thing we saw flying away just now was Wapple? Dalton asked. Yep. Luffy said. And his henchman? Dalton asked. Beaten. Luffy said before looking at his crew. Guess what guys? We got a new crewmate. Really? Valerie asked. Where? Over there. Luffy said as he pointed at the tree chopper was behind. They all looked at chopper before Dalton seemed to remember him from before. That reindeer. He thought his memories of stopping him from getting himself killed came to his mind before he bowed. Thank you. Now Drum Kingdom can finally be reborn. He said as he started to cry. What is that thing? One of villagers shouted before they started panicking. Hold your fire. Dalton shouted. H -h 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 -h. A monster. Shooted. Usopp cried out, causing Chopper to run away. That was the new crewmate I was talking about. Luffy shouted before knocking Usopp into the snow and running after Chopper. While he was chasing after Chopper, Kariha ordered everyone to get the injured inside before kicking a wall of the castle, which was hiding Greg, Sanji, Nami, and Grace. I said all the injured. That means you brats too. She shouted. Inside the castle. Nami and Grace were back in bed, with Noji Ko hugging her sister in joy, as Kariha tended to the wound Sanji and Greg got from the fight. Those two will be fine. She said. But you all still need some rest. Dalton, you wouldn't happen to know where the key to the weapons room is, would ya? She asked. Why would you need something like that? He asked as he helped the other injured into their beds. That's my business. She said. Wapal always had it on him, so it's probably wherever he is now. Dalton said. Shame. Kariha said. Hey Dr. Kariha. Nami said. How about just letting us go? We're in a hurry. Didn't you hear me before? You're not leaving until I clear you. And I'm taking all the treasure on your ship as payment. Kariha said as she drank some booze. She's right Nami. You and Grace need to recover. No G. Ko said. We'll head out to Alabasta in three days. Vivi said. Don't worry you too. Grace and I are okay. Nami said before swinging a key around on its ring. So then, I'll just take this key with me. The weapons room key. Kariha said. How do you get that? Doesn't matter. You wanted this key right. She said with a smile. HMPH. You cheeky little girl. Kariha said as she took the key. Fine. This will cover the medical expenses, but you're still stuck here until I give the okay. What? Give me that key back then. Nami demanded. Listen up. Kariha said. I'm leaving this door open and no one will be in this room. I've got some spare jackets in that closet over there. The two boys are okay as well, so don't even think about leaving. Now all of you, she said as she looked at the villagers. Follow me. Yes ma'am. They said as they left the room. Everyone who stayed stared at the door after they all left. So grab a jacket, get the boys, and get out. Grace said. Is that what she said? That's what I heard. Nami said as no Ko and Vivi nodded. Back outside the castle. It was night now as a majority of straw hats were outside. Usopp was making a snowman, Zoro was doing push-ups with Valerie sitting on his back and acting as a weight, Jin was near the edge of the mountain looking down, Alvita was looking up at the falling snow with a smile, and Luffy was calling out Chopper's name. Come on Chopper. Join my pirate crew. He shouted. Give it up Luffy. Usopp said. It's obvious he doesn't want to be a pirate. Zoro said. Not true. Luffy said. I want him to be a pirate. That doesn't mean it'll happen. Zoro yelled as he accidentally flipped Valerie off his back. Luffy ignored him as he went back to yelling for Chopper, who was staring down at them from atop the castle. He's still looking for me. Chopper thought as he looked down to see Luffy still calling him, while Valerie sat back on Zoro and nearly crushed him with more weight than he can handle with an angry look on her face. I want to go he thought before shaking his head. But I can't. I'm not one of them. Chopper. Luffy called. He knew that he could use hockey and find him, but Chopper would just keep running away. He stopped calling when he felt Chopper was close by and turned. Chopper. Hey, you decided to join my crew. I can't. Chopper said in a quiet voice with his hat covering his eyes. Sure you can. It'll be fun. 
Luffy said. Think of a better argument. Usopp shouted as Vivi, Nami, Grace, and Oji Ko helped an injured Sanji and Greg outside. Tony. Nami said as she looked at Chopper. They all looked at Chopper as he finally looked up at them all. I can't I'm a reindeer. I'm not a human. I've got hooves and antlers and and a blue nose. He cried out. Now that you know, do you think you can heal the wound in his heart? Kariha's words played back to the ones who knew Chopper's past. I mean I do want to be a pirate. Chopper said before shouting. But I can't ever be with you guys. I'm nothing but a monster, so I can never be your friend or pirate on your ship. He panted for breath before muttering, I just came here to say thank you. I'm glad you asked me to join you. That was nice of you guys, so thanks. Chopper said. They all looked at him as Chopper stood there with his hat covering his eyes. Luffy just stood there with a blank expression as he knew what was coming next. I'm gonna stay here for now, he said before looking up at them all with a forced smile. But if you guys wanted to you could visit any time. Shut up. Let's go. Luffy shouted. That was all Chopper needed as his eyes started welling up as the rest of Luffy's crew smiled. When was shut up an invitation? Zoro asked himself as Chopper screamed out as well. Some time later. Topper had gone back into the castle to say goodbye to Kariha while the others were outside waiting for him. Hey Luffy. Jin said with a serious look. Huh? What's wrong Jin? Luffy asked. Everyone looked at them both as Jin continued. How'd you guys get up this mountain anyway? He asked. I climbed. Luffy said as if it wasn't anything special. What? Usopp said in disbelief. No way. There's no way you could have climbed up here. It's true. Sanji said as he blew out some smoke. He really climbed up here while we hung on to his legs. What? Most of them shrieked. No way. Nami said. Do you have any idea how tall this mountain is? Valerie yelled. From what I heard that crazy hag say, about three miles. Sanji said as some of them looked over the ledge. Three miles. Vivi croaked out as they all stared at Luffy, who grinned back. No biggie. Luffy said, causing some of them to fall over. What do you mean no biggie? This mountain's so tall, you can't see the bottom from here. Usopp roared. So? If I had to, I'd have carried you all up here. Luffy said. That left them all speechless as the wind blew around them all. Some had thought that he was just saying that, but the look in Luffy's eyes said that he meant every word. Some of the more sensitive members felt their eyes well up at his statement. I knew he cared for his friends Vivi thought. But to go so far. Luffy's amazing. The silence was soon broken as screams could be heard from the castle. Everyone looked to see Chopper racing out of the castle in his walk point while dragging a sleigh as Kariha chased him with a giant spiked ball, swinging over her shoulder and looking crazy. Dead on the sleigh. Chopper shouted as the rest of them screamed in terror. Everyone jumped in and held on tight as Chopper pulled the sleigh down the ropeway. Running off to be a pirate Kariha yelled. You're as foolish as that quack doctor. She stood at the ledge as Chopper and them were soon out of sight. They're gone. Dalton said as he walked up next to her. Couldn't you have done that a bit better though? Nah. He's just some pet that I was asked to take care of. She said as her eyes started welling up. Besides, I hate sad goodbyes. Now shut up and follow me. She ordered as she dragged him into the castle. Back with the straw hats. Topper, Luffy, and the rest were quickly making their way back towards the ship before the sound of distant cannon fire could be heard coming from the mountain. Is she firing at us, Avlita shouted before the whole sky lit up. Chopper stopped and stared as the whole sky went from white to a brilliant shade of pink. Chopper walked towards the mountain a few steps as the tallest mountain on Drum Island soon turned into the world's biggest cherry blossom tree. Whoa. Luffy cried out as Jin whistled. It's so pretty. Gray said as they all stared up at it with a smile, while Chopper's eyes soon filled with tears that quickly ran down his face. Dr. Dr. Reen. He thought as his father's smiling face came to mind before he broke down completely and sobbed his heart out. It was here that he knew that there nothing was impossible. Kariha smiled from atop the mountain as tears fell down her face while Hiralik's flag waved in the wind. Farewell, my stupid son. Thank you for watching this fanfic, please have a good day and comment if you hear this.